Oh yeah, so this will be a guide for Eureka Orthos. By the way, if you're gonna watch this on YouTube later, uh, the way this is gonna be structured, I'm going to time timestamp each set, and then before each set, there's gonna be like an explanation block. During the explanation block, I'll go over like the problematic monsters, but I'll, I'll also go over a VOD of the boss. Uh, and you know, like explain things while I'm not uh, busy fighting for my life. So uh, if you want to like learn a boss specifically, it's probably better for you to check before, like the explanation block before the set, and then check the actual boss fight at the end of the set, which will also be timestamped. Uh, and also another thing, uh, in the comments of the video, because I'm going to be you know timestamping like specific floor sets and bosses. But if you think something's worth a timestamp, like for example, I explained something about a, I don't know, a landmine, and you think this would be worth a specific timestamp, then I recommend uh, you timestamp in the comments. Because if there's like a lot of good ones, I'll I'll uh, I'll add them then uh, add them in. And also, last thing, uh, this guide is like we're not even a week uh, since the release, so this guide will have a lot of suboptimal strats. But I'm, I'm going to try really hard to not give false information, right? Like, I'm going... I think at this point, I should be able to say, like, what kills you. But, like, maybe the, the details, I don't know. But I should be able to, you know, it should be, like, a fairly uh, good guide to follow. And the, this, this the dungeon is mostly difficulty, is mostly in learning the mechanics. Uh, so I'm still going to go over, like, you know, deep dungeon mechanics. But it's mostly going to be, like, a monster showcase. Am I going to play 130 normal for guide or go insane? So 130 is interesting because I heard that if you solo the 130, it's it can actually get a little spicy for time. So I'm probably going to be doing like baby AoE pulls, uh, which should be very easy for anyone. So anyway, first set, uh, let's go over the first set. So I'll just open my browser. And the way I'll show, there's not really that much information yet for like set uh, things. So the way I'll be showing the sets is I'll show Meiji's handbook for each floor. Then I'll show a very quick VOD of the boss. And uh, that's going to be it pretty much. Uh, oh yeah, before I actually start doing this, uh, I want to say why I'm going Warrior. I don't believe Warrior is like the easiest job to clear. But I believe it's the easiest job to learn. Because on Warrior, the big advantage is you don't have... You do not have any... Uh, reason to care about your HP, right? Like, you never have to look at your HP, plus the rotation is extremely simple. And that, that combination of these two things lets you basically spend, like, your entire brain power on learning the monsters. Uh, you can still clear on Warrior, but I'd say if you play Warrior a few times, and, you know, like, and, like, you start knowing what everything does, then the next best thing is to switch to a DPS job that you play very well. Uh, but to start off, I say warrior is like a pretty safe pick for almost everyone. So anyway, first set. What's what's going on in the first set? Not very much, honestly. Pretty much all the monsters just do very simple telegraph that you're going to be avoiding. Uh, there's a few problematic ones. The grenade is going to do like an, a telegraph like the others, but it's it's like a telegraph that only shows up late in the cast. So you need to know he's about to do it or it will kill you. And this, this one shots you. Uh, Behemoth will do uh, some kind of enrage when he's low. He's gonna like charge up a meteor, uh, and it's very likely you can't kill it in time. So the way you're gonna avoid that is by hiding behind a wall. So when, whenever there's a wall behind you and an enemy, its abilities tend to miss you, and that's like the first instance of this. Uh, and the only other monster worth mentioning is the boot, which puts. Uh, disease on you which is like 20 seconds slow that is very annoying uh so that that this set is pretty easy on the monsters though unfortunately they are very tanky now for the boss of this set i will just go over my vod real quick it's pretty simple uh all he's gonna do he's going to do like something uh, let me give you the name of the ability but he's gonna do a long cast called authoritative shriek Whenever he does it, the 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 lightning, the balls near you are gonna light up, lit up, and you want to just uh, go out of them. And he's gonna do this, I believe, twice. Yeah, so he's doing it again there. So you're gonna see the ones near me lit, light up. We just move away. Nothing complicated. And then after he do, he's done it twice, he's gonna do like a proximity marker, 
which doesn't do that much damage, but you know, still do a fair distance to be safe. Once this goes off, the middle column is going to be ones, and then the two sides are going to be two or threes, but you don't really care which one is two or which one is three, because you're just going to know near the ones, and when they blow up, you will move in. And that's the whole fight. There's, this boss is a very easy introduction. There shouldn't be much to say about it. But I think we can start the first set right away. By the way, uh, when you go into Deep Dungeon, it's recommended to use food. Because food actually will provide stats. and It's like the only thing you can do outside that will provide stats inside. So, uh, just use uh, the raid food that you use. I would recommend you do that. So, first set. Don't, uh, don't get discouraged when you enter the first set. Because things are very tanky. Thank you for the sub, and yeah, we're going uh, to show off all the cleaves. And uh, we're starting this off with a very good thing that I can show off. So this this monster, you're going to see some monsters that have like a very uh, menacing dread aura, like gloom, kind of red-ish aura. Uh, you never want to pull these. And, and if you do, you're probably dead. So like, if you ever pull that, I would honestly like involve and like try to survive for a few seconds because this will almost one shot you so you never want to pull these the only way you the only time you would kill it would be with a specific commander which i would show like when we have it uh so by the way the monsters in deep dungeons and including eo they work in three ways to like spot you some of them will, like, they see you in a crown radius. Some of them will see you as soon as you're, like, within a certain circle of them. And some of them, you can, they only see you if you're running by them. So you can actually, like, pop you off past them. So for example, this guy, he only sees in front of him. So even though he's very dangerous, I can actually, like, hug his butt like that. Because he only sees in front of him. So there, there's a, the majority of the monsters are like that. Uh, good habit you can pick up from uh, doing deep dungeon is you should hug the walls whenever possible. In each room, there's going to be zero or one traps, excluding the room you spawn in, which will have zero traps. So you know, right now I'm in a, 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 an hallway. An hallway. There's no traps in there. Traps can only be inside of rooms. So right now I'm safe. I can just kind of do whatever I want. But as soon as you go into a room, it's highly recommended that you hug the walls because there tends to be less traps on the wall. You can still hit a trap. Uh, they happen, but they're rare on the walls. So as long as you hug the walls, it's not going to be an issue. And I will show what the traps do when uh, I have commanders to uh, kill the traps. Because commanders are your resources in there. Commanders are like the things you're going to pick up the whole time. And you're supposed to use them to help you clear this place. Because if you don't use your commanders, then you will not be able to clear. It's like it's like your potions in Skyrim or like your 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 stones of lightnings or whatever. But even more important. Uh, so the reason I'm not really saying what the monsters do on this set is because most of them don't do anything. No worry. They'll do like a telegraph, and you just step out of it. Like they don't have like complicated mechanics at all. So this is a really good set to just family, uh, familiarize yourself with, uh, you know, mechanics of how this place, this place works. Now, I don't know, personally, I don't know what each monster's, like, uh, side type is. Like, I don't, because, you know, I explained the crone, and I, I told you some monsters they see around them. Some of them are sound. Personally, I don't even know all of them. I tend to just kill all the monsters from point A to point B, because it's safer this way anyway. Uh, but it's definitely important to keep in mind for something like the Drip Beast. Uh, so as I said, don't get discouraged on the first uh, few sets, because the monsters will die very slow. In fact, on a something like Warrior, they might die so slow that you get kind of bored. What you can do on this job, you can do some AoE pulls if you want. On the first set, all you're going to have to do is dodge AoEs when you're doing that. So, you know, it's just like a dungeon uh, wall to wall. 
Now would be very careful not to be greedy with the telegraphs though, because they tend to one shot you. Not quite on tank, but they, they'll get there in the in the future. So it, there's no reason to start being greedy already. So yeah, that's a great way to speed up the first uh, the first set and even maybe the second set. Just do a little bit of AE pulling like that. And as I said, the big advantage of playing Warrior is that your rotation is super simple. And you just kind of press right intuition every 25 seconds to heal yourself back to full. Uh, so it makes it very simple to pay attention to like the telegraphs and you know, instead of actually paying attention to your job. The other, the other tanks are very similar to Warrior by the way, but I would still say Warrior is probably better than them. Just for that, that very light big safety. Plus, it let this safety, the run cushion, lets you not have to use potions. So in there, there's something called the Orthos potions. But it's kind of a catch, because to get these, you need to farm them before, but you need to farm them inside of there. So it's very likely that once you start trying to get players uh, while you're solo, you won't have any of them. So Warrior is kind of a nice first choice as well to prod, because like in addition to being easy, you don't need potions for it, ever. Uh, which is very convenient. And also, I didn't really touch on that, but this is pretty well known. There's a, like something called an eater pool system inside of there, which is basically like, like uh, it's like your gear. It's like your, your gear outside of the game now when you're raiding, but it's inside, inside uh, instead. And it's just a number that goes up whenever you're opening silver chest and killing bosses uh, beyond floor 30. So if, you, if your Aether Pool is not uh, at the maximum yet, all you want to do is open all the silvers you see and uh, it will slowly build itself back up. You can also farm this when in a group, which is pretty recommended actually. It's better if you're going as a group first. Get, uh, let's say, about 60. And then once you have 60, you can start a real run. By the way, on the first 30 floors, as you could see there, uh, monsters will respawn every minute on the floor. And the respawn... Sorry, the respawn does not care where you are. So it can be anywhere on the floor, including right in front of you. And you might have wondered why this monster pulled on me, even though he wasn't facing me. Uh, that's very simple. It's, it's because of what I explained earlier. So this guy is a proximity monster. So instead of seeing in a crown in front of him, he sees around him. So if I go on his side, he's still gonna see me. So for him, it's like a huge circle around him. These are usually the most uh, annoying monsters. So anyway, let's get out of this first floor. Like I said, on the first three sets, so a set is, by the way, from like a floor. It's like from the first floor to the tenth floor. And every multiple of 10, so like this set right now is 110, the next set is 1120, the third set is 2130, etc. And you got one hour to get through each set. So like right now we're on the clock already, we have one hour to make it to the 10th floor and kill the boss. And if we don't, we lose a run. And when we lose a run, you gotta start all the way back to, one, to floor 1. So that's the key. Key just opens as you kill monsters. Uh, you're going to see on the minimap, there's a key uh, icon. Right there. When this is blue, then you can leave. And this opens with kill counts. It's it's a random amount of kills, you, you cannot know in advance. So I know I'm picking up commanders right now. I'll explain them when I have more of them. Because right now, we still don't really need to explain them. But as I said, you can, can do a little bit of AoE pulling to speed up the first floor. It's not that dangerous, so... You just make sure they're all stacked up together, and then you just use your abilities. By the way, you may have noticed that I somehow I'm not max level in there, and even though I was max level outside, it's because inside of there, the, the level are not your actual level. When you enter there, you start at 81, and then you're gonna slowly level up as you kill monsters, uh, until you reach level 90. And you should reach this level during the second set. So during this one, we're going to still be below like the whole time. If 
you ever have questions, by the way, in the chat, feel free to ask them. Uh, during the entire run. So anyway, there's a silver right there. So gold chests, there's three types of chests. They're gonna be bronze, silver, and gold. Bronze are the least important. They give you basically potions and uh, potsherds, which you can use to buy potions. Uh, which, by the way, I keep calling them potsherds. They're not actually called potsherds inside there. That's a, a bad habit from QTD and LI, my bad. They're called Autos Article Fragment. For each one of these you have, you can get 20 regen potions. Which is not that useful on water, but if you ever want to do like other jobs, they're going to be very handy. So that's the bronze. The silver is what will give you, uh, you know, your either pull arms and armor stats so that's very important to open up on top of your cap and they will also give you like a special kind of uh, commander called demi clone you, you can see like in my uh, inventory right there on the top left which by the way is the same keybind as to open your like character screen when you're like outside this place uh there's something called at the bottom demi clone generator this is like a special kind of commander it's like resource uh, but it's its own thing. And there's a chance you're gonna find these inside silver. So you still want to open silvers even if you have like all of your edible. No, we cannot uh, walk on traps in all ways. So like I said earlier, traps can only be in rooms. In excluding the room you spawn in. So like this room could have zero or one trap anywhere. Though it tends to not be on the walls. This room could have zero or one trap anywhere, and as again, it close to be not. It tends to be not close to the wall. This room cannot have a trap because this is a, the room I spawned in, and you know it is because on the mini map there's a little flag. The little flag is the room you appeared in. So this one I know doesn't have a trap. Alright, so that's the first, uh, honestly, that's the first, I mean, the whole deep dungeon that uh, you have to be wary of. I'll kill one alone to show you. I highly recommend you don't pull multiple of these. Uh, he's gonna do something called Bait Burst, but it's a telegraph. But it only shows you at the very end. So you, you have to know it's coming, and also it will one-shot you, unless you're in the room. So, I highly recommend you just kill these guys 1v1. Thanks, Terra. Good morning to you, too. So air is doing it again, move away, move back in. And you can also stun them if you want, but I, I always recommend for deep dungeon, it's better to not rely on stuns and interrupt whenever possible. Because it's... It, at some point, if you rely on them too much, at some point they will be on cooldown and you will die. Uh, but then, you know, like the dying isn't going to cost you 5 minutes to restart the raid, it's going to cost you like 7 hours. Go back. So, enter the follow Lazarus. So why am I like kind of moving around there on the map instead of fighting? It's because I want to see where the key is. Uh, on the minimap, you can see the key symbol. Same as uh, the other one above. That's the thing I am going to like have to go to to leave the floor. So generally, as soon as you find it, uh, you just kind of want to kill everything around it. And then once you're let out, you can go. That's exactly what we're going to do there. Now you may be wondering, isn't it better to go in the other rooms to, you know, check for more chests? Not really. We don't really need to do that. It's it's usually more time efficient to just find a key and move. To it and then kill everything around it. So there you may have noticed I was fighting two monsters even though it wasn't my intention. If you're fighting two monsters, you always... I, do, I don't recommend you AoE. I recommend you focus down on the most threatening one. So in that case, it was the bomb. So it's the one I killed first. As a reminder, traps tend to not be on the walls. 
Now, as a warrior, you have another thing that's really nice for you. Uh, as a tank, I should say. It's the fact that if you hit a trap while while you're fighting something, you're not really in danger. Because it's there's no traps that would kill you if you're fighting something like from full HP. So that's kind of why I'm not really sweating doing two rooms while I'm fighting something. Well, you don't need to do that. You can just stay in the wall in the other way where you're fighting. So, you know, for example, if I'm going to fight the Dahak next, uh, I don't have to, like, you know, walk up to it. I can just bring him to me in the other way that has no traps in it. This is definitely the safer option. You just have to make sure that uh, there's no patrols behind you. Because I didn't really thought about patrols, but there's two types of monsters there. There's the, the monster that just spawn in rooms like that, and they just, you know, stay in rooms. And that's their entire life. All they do is stay in one room. And what they do is he just did it, but I'll show you like what he does it after. When they're in the room, every 20 seconds, like every 20 to 30 seconds, they'll move like in the opposite direction. So this guy, he's not, you know, he's not going outside the room, but he's going to move soon. So he's facing this way right now. And he's going to like move back at some point. So monsters, they do that. When they're in rooms, they like face a direction. 20 to 30 seconds goes by and then they turn around and they do it and they, they, they keep doing this until they're dead. Uh, patrols are the second type, of uh, second type of monster and I believe there's no more on this floor so I will show you on the next one. There should be some. How much does Aetherpool affect uh, your damage and defense? I don't know the exact values. But if you have like 1-1, one, one, you are, you're going to have a bad time. I would say you need at least 60-60 to get a run going. And it's better to farm it as a group, of course. So here's a patrol. There was one. So the two type of monster, the one I explained uh, on the last floor. And this one, this is the second type. Patrols, all they do is they go from one room to another room. And they basically choose random directions whenever they reach an intersection. So like this patrol, when it went, when it was there, it walked to B. And then it, it took a random decision of if it was going to go to C or D. And it basically does that for every single room until it reaches a dead end with no more paths, with, in which case it turns around. So like we can see with this one. So this one is going to reach like this room and then it's going to decide to randomly go this way or my way. It's random. 50-50. So this one decided to go my way. And that's just luck. And again, these guys uh, have a side crown, so we can kind of like sneak past them like that. And then I'll show you, in case you didn't catch it, when this guy reaches this room, which is a dead end, Uh, what he's gonna do is he's going to like go a little bit in, into the room and then he's gonna like do a one, 180 and turn back and he does the same thing once he turns back he's going to like make this way to this room then he'll take like a 50 50 of if he goes right or he's going forward and he'll do that for every single room so there it is so he reaches the room with no more uh intersections he goes he goes in like a distance he's gonna stop then he's gonna turn around and uh start doing the same thing that's patrols For this reason, it's usually better to kill patrols, like as quickly as you can. Because you know, if, if there's a monster that's gonna catch you off guard, it's these guys. Yeah, for EO right now, tanks are really good to learn, but DPS jobs are all very good. As long as you know their rotation well. By the way, on this floor, we've got something called blind. You can see like above my minimap there. Uh, I've got something called floor effect blindness. Accuracy of all party members is reduced. There is a system in there where must, uh, where floors will have random debuffs or buffs. So on this specific floor, I currently am missing some of my attacks. That's just like you would have to deal with uh, these debuffs the whole time. So again, this guy is actually fairly dangerous. You want to make sure you're paying attention, and when he does big bursts, you move away. So see my felt they've missed there.
Have I ever run into time issues on tank? Uh, a little bit on my Gunbreaker run yesterday, but it was because I went really hard on the scoring. Alright, so still, same thing with the grenade. I guess it's time to talk a little bit about the commanders. So as I said, they're resource that you're going to pick up and they're going to help you. Uh, let's go over the first uh, row. So starting from the top left, uh, up like the row, all the way to the right. So the first one is going to be safety. This will remove all traps currently on the floor. So remember how I said there's going to be a 0 to 1 trap on each floor? Uh, if you use this, it's going to be 0 on the entire floor. So the, if I use this, there will be no more traps in this entire floor. Uh, second pomander is similar but better. This will reveal all the traps on the floor and also show you the minimap. So the, the whole minimap is going to light up and show you like all the squares. And every single trap that would be hidden will, will instead be uh, shown to you. That's generally better because there's some traps that you can use that will be helpful. Thank you for the raid kit. So that's what Sight does. Uh, third one, this train. One of, one of the most important commanders. This will make you do more damage and healing uh, for 8 minutes. So 30% increase for 8 minutes. And in fact, uh, I would say your commanders, by the way, is you're going to be very tempted to just kind of keep all of them and never use them. Uh, I recommend you just get used to using them whenever you feel like it. So right now, I'll use a strike because maybe I want to do more damage. And when you use a commander, it's going to incur like a small animation lock. So watch out for that. Don't use one if there's a, a telegraph about black under you because it could kill you very easily. So fourth one. Steel. Steel is basically strength but defense. So steel is going to give you 8 minutes of 40% damage reduction. Uh, on water, that is not that useful, but it still can be nice on like tanks or like if you do like a pull that's really bad. Like you accidentally pull multiple monsters. Uh, fifth one on this on this row, affluence. Uh, this is very simple. It will make it so the next floor has more chest. In it. So, because uh, there's a certain amount of chests that spawn on each floor, and if you use this, it will be uh, more. And the last one is a flight. Uh, flight makes it so that your next floor is going to have 50% less monster, and also 50% less monsters required to open the key. So that's the first row, and I'll talk about the other rows when uh, we need to. So that guy is a, a, the second monster I need to talk about on this set. That's Behemoth. That's the first time you're going to get introduced to line of sight mechanics, which are important. So even if you can kill this guy before the meteor falls, I think it's important to show it off. So line of sight is the act, is the act of a wall being behind you and a monster. So like, for example, if I'm standing there, it's line of sight because like there's something behind us. And that's useful for certain mechanics. So let's push, uh, let's pull this guy. Uh, this is just something that nuts you back. When he's low, about 40%, he's gonna do something called uh, Ecliptic Meteor. When he does this, he's about to do it. This is uh, this will kill you if you don't do not line of sight. So what you can do is you can just go beyond a wall that you should uh, preferably like have been close to. Then when it falls, well you will survive. And you need to get used to this because even though it's not mandatory mandatory yet, it will become mandatory in the future course. Also, I recommend whenever you're doing line of sight things. I would recommend you do not trust geometry inside the rooms. I recommend you, you only trust it always. Because room geometry uh, sometimes lies, but always don't really lie. So. So remember, silvers you want to open them because you can find a demi clone, but they also increase your aid pool.
So respect the big burst. Yes, yeah, people in the chat are saying uh, when you do line of sight things, it's way it's just better to trust the always but not trust the rooms because like there's certain things that just don't work. Like for example, this pillar, even though it's solid, and even though I myself can't attack uh, through it, it's possible the monsters they don't respect that rule. So, but the always are always safe. Like if there's something there, and I'm there, I'm a hundred percent confident that the line of sight will be broken. So. So what is the time? So there's a time, right? I said there's a time for sure. What is the kind of time you should be looking for? For this dungeon, I'd say you want to spend no more than six minutes for a floor if possible. And if you feel that you're kind of falling behind that time, then it's it's when it's a good time to use your commanders. Uh, so right now we're like perfectly fine on that front. So we got there another debuff called no ability. This is one of the nastier ones. This one makes it so you can no longer use abilities, which is basically like OGCDs. Uh, so in the case of war, that makes me lose access to, you know, inner release, which is pretty bad. This is a regular guide, not a scoring guide. This is the same structure as my Evan Eye and Beauty guys that I have uh, on my channel. What food would I recommend for EO? I recommend whatever rate food you use. Uh, there's no, there's not really any reason to go crazy for a specific substat. You just, what you really want is like the HP. So whatever rate food you use is uh, perfectly fine. And if you can choose any, just go for the cheap one. Right, as a warning, uh, this this could be nerfed in the future, but let, I assume that it, it is not going to be. Uh, this first set, specifically, the boss is very long. It's longer than it should be. And it, there's a possibility that with the bombs you find, that will be an issue. Like, there's a possibility that it would take so long that with the pomaders you find, you are not going to be able to make it uh, in a good time. That's just something to keep in mind. Uh, by the way, this guy is, a, I would say, the last one that is annoying. He does something called Terror Touch, which is a 20 second slow. Which is about, I think, 50% slow. So it, it is annoying, but as long as you're not pulling multiple monsters with that guy, it's not too bad. Why is DPS so much better? Because, uh, well, there's no incoming damage in there, so only DPS matters. Did you see on the EO stats, says Aaron, there's like 100 something clears of machinists. And the second best is 20 something warrior. Oh, you mean for uh, scoring is joining? Yeah, DPS uh, does it way better there. Why well, this guy in rage uh, when he's low, uh, a little under forty percent. So you want to make sure that you know where you will hide before you get to that point, right? So like right right now, I know I can hide behind there, so perfect. So I'll just push it. There it is, so now we know it's coming, we're gonna hide. So look, it's coming, we can just hide in a room. Like that. Right. 
And then he's not gonna do it again, by the way. He only does it once, like for life. Uh, the other one, though, will do it, of course. So we need to watch out for that. And I guess I could introduce you to white, what a witching does now. Well, I still have not went over the second row, but we can cheat a little bit and show you what a witching does. So witching is something that will transform all monsters in imps, chickens, or frogs. Uh, if it's an imp, it will do like similar auto attack damage. If it's a frog, it will do like almost none. And if it's a chicken, it's a middle of the two. Uh, but, but the most importantly, what a witching does, it, it makes it so monsters stop doing their abilities. So like, for example, let's say this Bima, I pull him and I'm like, oh shit, right? Like, oh, oh my god, I can't hide. There's no nowhere to hide. And I can use the witching. It will interrupt all ongoing abilities. So I will go over every commander in time, but the witch chain is good to know early on. By the way, these boot, this uh, these boots, I believe, are the last aggro type I have not shown yet. So they are sound. Sound means that if you are RP walking, they will actually not see you. But if you're running, they'll see you basically as a proximity monster. Alright, so this floor was taking very long because of the debuff. That's life. There's a way to deal with debuffs, but we don't currently have the commanders for that. So. Great. so as I said, these guys are sound, unless I misremember. But uh, So that means as long as we walk, it should not pull. Yeah, see? So even though I'm in front of him, uh, he doesn't see me because I'm walking. Ah, so there we got a treasure room. First time we have a treasure room. Treasure room is simply a room that is full of monsters, but it has four chests to make up for it. So that's one of them. Uh, sometimes you're gonna get unlucky, like me, and the key will be inside that room. Uh, so since the key is in there, that means we're gonna have to find a way to deal with that room. So by the way, we picked up a dummy clown from that chest. Uh, you should get dummy clowns like, I'd say like about, uh, I don't know, maybe a little more than 50 of the time on the first set. That's very good because we are going to win to use this on the bus. Dummy clowns are they do multiple things, and I'll go over it like uh, over time. But the the big thing they do is that they do a lot of damage. So on the buses, they're amazing. Uh, so anyway, like I said, when you see where the key is, there's not really any reason to like go out of the way to explore. So let's let's just do this treasure room the old way. The good old way, which is just kill everything in uh, in it. So. Yeah, this guy does a gaze, but you, you should. It doesn't put a telegraph, but it's kind of obvious that it's going to be uh, a thing in front that you want to not face. So you can see the keys there. That's the key. So it would be smarter to kill the monsters that are near the key, because then in that case, maybe we don't need to kill everything. It's always your priority to clear out the monsters that are near your key because you want to be able to leave when the key is open without killing any extra. So there we pull two by then. We're like, oh no. So what we do is we, sing we single target one of them. Don't switch to like Ewe mode right there. And now that sprite is actually interesting. You can use LOS for other ways. Uh, for example, you know this guy is doing a range attack on me, so he's never going to come close, right? So it's kind of annoying. If you hide behind a wall, 
it will force basically everything to walk up to you. That can be a useful trick. So even though your AoE might be a gain on, on like two or three targets, I always recommend you single... If you're pulling, if you accidentally pull multiple things, I recommend you single target the most threatening one. So like, do, did I need to in that case? For, like no, because like I know what the monsters do. But as a, just as an example, I think you should get into the habit of single targeting the most threatening thing. Every time. Now if you do an intentional pull, like if I pull all these monsters, because I know what they do and I know I want to do an EOE pull, then yeah, do, an, do like EOE in that case. Because in that case it's fine. So, oh, well, there's an example of a new pull. Any we pull, you should not do. So there, we gotta be careful because when that guy does the gaze, we have to be behind them. But I don't recommend you do pulls with monsters that have like threatening mechanics. I mean, we could put into action what I just showed. I just told you, right? Oh, hello. That's a respawn, by the way. So we can put into action what I said earlier. We can, if a pull is just like really spicy, or like you're not sure what monsters are, or there's one that's like way more threatening, don't EOE, just single target that specific monster. So let's kill the Fashan first. And then, you know, once he's dead, we can breathe a little bit. Like you, you don't, you should not be thinking of like efficiency in there. Like you should be thinking, how do I survive? But there's no reason to like, Take risk for like you know a little bit more efficiency. So again, this will this beam will enrage when he's low. That's just something to keep in mind. You know, in that case, we're gonna be close to a wall. Let's say we're gonna use this one. So he's doing it. So we're gonna hide. So as a reminder, you, you may have noticed I'm getting like basically zero damage on me. So you can probably, and it's going to remain honestly kind of the same for the whole time. We're never really going to be threatened by auto attack damage. It's always going to be about dodging abilities when they happen on us. So like for this reason, yes, DPS are actually better than tanks for this for clearing this. But tanks is nice because you like you have to pay zero attention to your health, and the bosses let you mess up a little more. So for this, it's it's why I'm doing the, the guide on water. Uh, what you can do, by the way, if you want for, to wait for a monster to, you know, he's looking at the key and you think killing them would take a long time, you can wait for him to move. And there's a chance that he would actually, you know, move back and let you through. And we got another demi clone there. What's my favorite deep dungeon so far? I'd say PUTD is my favorite still.
EO is nice, but it's different than Beauty. It's it's more like it's more built on mechanics. Thank you for the prime, Falco. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So right now we're doing nothing special. We're just kind of slowly uh, making it to the boss. I'd say this boss, as long as you have a clone, you would be fine with 10 minutes in all times. Yes, one time as Behemoth as enemies, and they actually show you uh, an important mechanic uh, for the rest of the dodge, so they're useful. Uh, I might as well show something. So you remember how I said the side shows you the traps on the floors? Uh, the way, so the traps, they all do things differently, and they all look different depending on what they do. So this one is an innervation trap. It looks like, like a yin-yang symbol. It's trying to put a debuff on you that makes you do less damage and take more damage for a minute. Uh, and there's multiple kind of traps. I won't be able to show you every single one of them on this floor, but I can show you a few. So this one is the same. This is innervation. So this will put the minute debuff that I just have. Hey, thanks, heroes. I'm glad the, the guys are up on you. We're doing a guide right now, actually. For EO, so you know if you ever want to go for EO. Okay, so I, like I said, I don't know what the monsters are by heart, but I believe these ones are sound. Yeah, so you know I can just walk past them. As a reminder, whenever you see a base carry monster that's lowing like that, uh, you don't want to pull it. You never want to pull it on tank. On any job, honestly. Uh, so there is the first instance of a commander we have already at 3. So 3 is the max. Since we already have 3, I can't open this chest. So I basically have a free strength. So we're just going to use it. By the way, this is a luring trap. It looks like a little bit of an arrow. The, if you step on this, it will spawn 3 monsters that, that uh, fight you. They will be aggroed on you too, so like you can't avoid them. How many points do you get for finishing floor 100? I don't know. I, it's still too early to know. I have no idea. So, keys open, we don't care about the rest and we just leave. What do I think is the hardest D, D dungeon to solo? I'd say PUTD. Yeah, it's 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 tight between PUTD and MLI, but if EO it should be the easiest one by far. Ah, so there we got Gloom. This is the second worst debuff you can get. This is like a, a debuff that does many things. It will make monsters move fast, which means patrols will move faster, but also like whenever the monster is running towards you, it also moves like well, we can show it there. We're gonna run super fast to me. Uh, second thing this does, it, it makes the monsters tankier, it gives them more defense. And last thing it does is it gives them more damage. So it's like three bad things in one. Ah, so see there we've got two monsters that are fairly dangerous on us. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna single target one of them. To make sure that we're not in too much danger for like too long. Yeah, speedrunning 110 is very RNG. It's annoying. It's kind of fun though. It's like annoying and fun. Sometimes monsters will drop chests. By the way, they have a very small chance of dropping chests. So there is, there is one. Uh, 
Uh, let's side this again. I can possibly show the rest of the traps. So this is the same one that we saw a few times. This one gives you a debuff. Oh yeah, this is a new one. This one is a silence trap. I kind of want to show it close. So I kill the dragon. So yeah, this is a silence trap. So if you step on this for 60 seconds, you and any nearby enemies won't be able to cast spells and weapon skills for 30 seconds. You can technically remove the no spell part by using an, an echo drop because it cures silence, but you cannot remove the weapon skill part. So on water, this would make me almost useless for 30 seconds. there there's a patrol we might have to fight it sometime you might get lucky and be able to sneak past it like that if you have another way that has like little notches you can and the patrol you know it sees in the crown then you can sneak past them like that sometimes but you know always have a backup plan don't just take things for granted so this is an owl trap this is uh, the not the all of them but there's i think believe there's only one left after that so this will transform you into an owl when you uh, step on it. When you're an owl, you do 50% le you have 50% less HP and you cannot do anything for 30 seconds. So this is one of the worst traps to step on because if you step on this, you are like 30 seconds of basically super vulnerable. So we're gonna go to the boss. Even if I had not picked up the clones right now, we could kill this boss with uh, a strength. It would take a very long time though, so I, I honestly recommend that you always use the dummy clone on this boss if you have one. Because this boss just is... it's just boring, right? It's not even to help you clear, it's just very boring. Ah, yes, when you open chests, they will sometimes be mimics. Uh, another good thing about Warrior is you have an interrupt skill. So Mimics put a dot on you called Pux, which is a 10 minute dot that you cannot assume. It also reduces your damage. Uh, luckily, you can interrupt it. You can also stun these Mimics until they're gold. When they're gold, you can no longer stun them. So that's another luring. So if I stepped on this, the re monster would spawn. So yes, for so like I said for bosses, th there's three type of the mythnels and they all do different things. Uh, but for the bosses, I just recommend you have one if you're able to afford it. So Yuna is like the healing one. Uh, she typically like puts a stone skin on you and heals you, but she's also like, you know, does okay damage, so we're gonna use one. And if you have three strength, no arm in using one. And you can even use a steel if you're like not comfortable with the boss mechanics, because it will it might help you survive uh messes up. Mistakes. So anyway, this boss is simple, he's gonna do shriek. He's gonna light up the nearby uh, balls. You just go near one that's like, you know, not lit up. He's gonna do it again. Same thing. After that, he's gonna do a proximity marker. Uh, very soon. You just wanna be away for, uh, from it, but on tank, you don't have to be too far. Well, you know, don't be greedy. No reason not to. But like somewhere around there would be perfectly fine. Then the middle would be ones. And honestly, you don't care what the others two are gonna be because you can always move 
in before. And I actually use the ground. I'll show you the next cycle. I use the ground to help me there. Uh, so Shriek. Move in a safe spot. You're always safe, by the way. I use the ground for this too. You're always safe within the, the rectangle. So as long as you're like in the rectangle, all the EOEs are gonna miss you. As, as long as you're in the rectangle of like a safe one. So for this mechanic, you see this little like there's four squares, right? Like that, little squares. As long as you're like on the edge of one, the EOEs are gonna miss you. These two are gonna miss you and then you can just move in. That's why I used to like orient myself there. Uh, and honestly, there's nothing else to say about this bus, but it is way overtuned, so we still have to kill it for 40%, uh, for 60%. But that's one of the things that I feel like could change in the future. The, the scaling of some of the early bosses. Yeah, the respawns, I uh, like someone said in the chat. The respawns are one minute on this set and the next two, so it can be a problem because you're going to feel that you, you finish killing your monsters and then there's new ones like already up. Thank you for the follow. Ah, so see there, we maybe we failed this mechanic. But this is why being a tank is great. Because with steel, we can actually fail quite a lot of mechanics. Why do the first set take set so damn long? They're kind of like overtuned. It, it's why I, I said don't get spooked by the first three sets because they are kind of long. And then the monsters don't really have hard mechanics yet, so like it's hard. They don't really keep you engaged, you know. Do I have any rules for using the clones? I recommend you use them on the bosses. Uh, but I will go what, over what each one does specifically once we you know have more of them. So right now I use Yune. She's like the healing one. She's the one that does the worst damage on the bosses, but she's still like... It's still insane damage in relation to you. Like you, your character. So when you complete a set, uh, well, technically, you, like, you did it, right? So you can uh, go out, but just make sure you don't stay in the bus arena for too long, because if you would time out there or DC, you would lose the run. So just go out. And every 10 set, you can either, like, take a break, you can, like, you know, leave and come back, or you can uh, go back in. Hello, impossible. So next set, uh, next set is still kind of a learning set. There's nothing that's going to be much, uh, like that's going to be that difficult in it. But let's go over the monsters real quick. Uh, yeah, 20 uh, is actually, like Meiji says the Orto Sortud will still swipe if you're behind it, but I don't even know what that means. As far as I remember, every single monster there just has telegraphs that you avoid. So it, there's honestly nothing to say about the monsters. Uh, the boss, there's a little to say. So 
So the boss is like a, a ball, called cloning ball or something like a cloning node, I think. So what happens during the fight is gonna like there's dragons around. They're gonna do lines. And whenever a dragon is a line, it means that this dragon will do like a cone. So all three of these will do cones. And there's always going to be like a safe spot as long as you're like, you know, within a, a place that made sense. So like this one is going to have five cone. We'll see there, there's still a safe spot. And then the only other thing to mention is that at some point you'll do like a two, uh, like a, a two, uh, a two attaches at the same time. You do like one side of lasers and then the other side. So you're just going to be like, you're just going to be on like the side, the first side. Then you go across for the second one. And that's it for this boss. There's nothing yet else to say. The second set is probably easier than the first one. So. So the Sawtooth has an elbow drop. Okay, so there's a monster that apparently does something behind it. Seems kind of hard if you're solo though to see that thing happen. But uh... so we're gonna refresh our food. So, as every monster has uh, EOEs and like, you know, just telegraphs there, you can actually do EOE pull if you feel comfortable. Because I'm not gonna lie, this, these first 30 floors, I'd say the first 20, like there's something, there's things that are interesting after, but the first 20 floors are kind of boring. So like, if you want to speed up, feel free to use, uh, you know, do some EOE pulls. I'm not going to do it the whole time, but I, I can show it. I don't think you would need to for time, so it's just, you know, for convenience. Uh, that's a respawn, so, you know, that's how it is. So if you're doing, like, a, a pull with a lot of telegraph, the way you kind of want to do it is just trying to circle around like that. You should assume that any telegraph will one-shot you. It's not true yet, but they are enough, and they will one-shot you later, so... So we still have not uh, covered most of the pond. We've covered like the first uh, row. I've still not touched the two other rows outside of witching. I will do that once I start picking them up, you know. This is more of a guide you, w you will want to consume. If you've never done the dungeon, you want to consume this whole guide, preferably. If you are, if you know like what how this place works then the guy will add timestamps for specific sets like i said at the beginning so you can just go to the sets you want but like the general deep, deep dungeon mechanics i assume that if you don't know what the hell is going on uh, you are gonna watch from point a to point uh, you know from from beginning to the end so. that's why i'm kind of delaying the information there because if i just info dump everything in the beginning you will not remember So yes, monsters can drop chest. This one's a bronze. Uh, on the 99 bus, is there a way to tell if during the empty solid he's doing the green cones or the black red ground? I don't know. I, I think there's a tell, but I've never, I've never bothered to find out because you can always react to it.
No, I didn't mention from which floor the maze come from. Because I don't even remember myself. I believe it's something like from floor 1 to 30, mimics are from bronze chest. From 31 to 60, mimics are from silver chest. And then from 61 plus, the mimics are from gold chest. It's not something you should care about too much uh, on tank. Well, but something that's nice to know that if a silver is a bronze or a silver, you can stun it. But you can also interrupt it, so... Uh, so there, maybe I can show the last type of uh, trap. This is the, the one that transforms you into an owl. This is the one that silences you for 60 seconds. Sorry, for 30 seconds. Maybe it is in the last room. No, it's not. Unlucky. I'll try to show the last type of trap. I'll get lucky at some point. So dummy clones, I actually don't think you should use them on floors. Uh, at least not until the very high floors, because it's kind of a waste. Uh, so just just grab them. Uh, if you have three when you're on the bus, cool. Use one on the bus. It's trying to make your life, you know, you're gonna get five minutes of your time back to do whatever you want. Uh, but I would not use them on the floors until you're on the very high floors. There's a respawn. The way you should kind of think of your palms until, you know, you're very close to the end is you should... Keeping them at two is never a bad idea. So, for example, there if I had three strength, I would... Be, I would probably use one just to speed up a little bit. Because if you're sitting at three, then anything you find in the chest will you you need to use it like on the spot. So it, it kind of removes like your uh, some player agency, right? Like you you will use things as you find them, and you won't really have a say when you want to use them. So like personally, what I want to do, what I like to do is use my pawns when they're at three, if they were gonna provide some kind of like benefit, you know. Uh, so I right now I'm not using a strength because I have two, but if I pick up a third one, then uh, I'll use it instead of sitting on it. How many demi clones drop on average in a full run? Uh, they're very common on the higher floors, and then a little rare below the higher floors. So personally what I do is that if I have three, I use one on the boss, on the next boss, whatever it is, just to make it faster. If I have two, I don't use it on the boss unless we're like you're getting to you know the 80 boss plus. You don't always have one for you don't always have three down there. But I'd say you commonly have three. It's not that rare. But it's not that common either. It's about the same rarity as I would say a Petrify in uh, MLI. Up to the high floors. The high floors, they become ridiculously common. So I guess for the sake of showing what palms do, I will be using a little bit of palms uh, right now. Even though we don't need to, and even though I don't think you should unless you have three, I'll just use a couple of them to show what I do in action. So for let's floor, let's use a flight. So as you could, as you probably noticed, this floor took a really long time, right? Like the key is pretty yellow, 
and it took quite a few kills to get out. So if I use a flight, this will affect the next floor. So this, when you use this in your item effect, you're gonna see like flight. This means that this is active, not the floor you're on, but the next one. So the 13th floor. So right now, this floor is gonna have the flight active. What the flight does is it's going to take 50% less monsters to open the key, and there's also going to be 50% less monsters. So as you can see right now in that room, there's one monster. Uh, there's one monster. A, a room normally has two monsters in it, at the minimum, but by now, it has one. Because the flight got done. Same for this room. So that means we're gonna, basically we're gonna f uh, save 50% of the time on this floor. Also, we got a buff there. There's a very few buff, but there's a, a few, and this is one of them. Uh, this actually boosts our GCD. Our GCD will now be... Uh, it's a 20% boost, I believe. So we went from 235 to 188. By the way, if you see these bad, these yellow lines, uh, these are rare bags that give you loot, but outside when you open them. So like they have no impact on your run, but they will like give you things you can sell outside. It's like the, the loot, right? Thank you for the follow, guys. Ah, so there we go, the second kind of the clone, Dora. Uh, so you know is like the healer, she puts a shield, she heals you and she does a little bit of damage. Dodra is like the middle ground. It's like a black mage that CCs a monster and does, let's say, like middle damage. And then the last the last one we have not seen is uh, the most damage one. So this key opened in three kills, which is due to the flight. This would have opened in six kills otherwise. So there we go, now we have a free steal, might as well use it. And like I said earlier, if my palms are at 3 and will be, provide some kind of benefit, I like to use them. So like, right now we have to restrain. Might as well pop one, it's trying to make this a little faster. The monsters, although they're kind of a joke right now, will get, like, ridiculous. Like, as soon as we start uh, start stepping outside of the flo the first 30 floors, the first 30, you can, uh, you should see them as kind of like an introduction. Like, they're kind of a tutorial. Uh, once we step outside of that, monsters will start being ridiculous. Like, it will be all about knowing what the monsters do. So you, I mean, you really have 30 floors to get used to the, like, you know, the deep dungeon mechanics, your job. Uh, but then after that, it's going, like, your brain power is going to focus, is going to all switch towards learning monsters. Uh, so I'll try to show the last type of uh, trap I was, I've been trying to show for a little bit. There it is. Uh, no, sorry, that's a luring. But I never showed. I never showed a luring does. I said it would spawn three monster, and there you go. So it will spawn three monster, and they will all be aggroed on you. So even if I run away, they're all going to like. They're all on me already. So that's just something to keep in mind.
Sorry if I'm not talking, I'm focusing on this pole. I mean, when you are away pulling down there, it's not that bad, but you still, like, gotta make sure you're outside of every telegraph. Is there a lower max kill threshold on lower floors and so when does it change? I cannot give you uh, exact values, but generally the lower floors have a lower minimum and a lower maximum and then you know the, the higher you go, the higher things go. But I cannot give you a value. We, we kind of knew them for FTOD and MLI, but we don't know them for EO yet because it's only been 5 days. We've been watching the VODs on YouTube and they've been helping a lot. I'm glad the, they've been helping me. There's still a sixth one that I, I, I'm going to have uh, to upload later. The Gunbreaker run from Italy. Alright, that's the last kind of trap I could not show. So this one is a landmine. So when you step on this, you will do... Uh, what is it? It's, it's 70 or 80-ish of the current HP of everything nearby, including yourself. So if I pull, say, this guy and this guy near the landmine. Once I step on this, I will lose like a huge chunk of my HP, but so will they. So I will step on it now. So see, we all lost the HP. Uh, that's very nice because it's way more useful for you to have a bunch of enemies lose like that HP than it is actually hurting you to lose that HP. Because like you, you can just heal it back. Uh, but then they can't. We will like utilize that uh, kind of trap a lot in the future. So I would say the, the, the first set, it can be a little bit tricky time-wise. This one should not be. Uh, the, the only reason it's going to be a little tricky for us is because I'm explaining so much on the way. But on a normal run, you shouldn't have, uh, should not have time issues on this set. Even if you're like one, you wanting everything. Don't feel forced to do AOE pulls at all. So that's an intuition bag, like I said on the earlier floors. You just stand on it for a few seconds, it'll pop an intuition bag. But this provides no value to the run, it's just loot for outside. And also, I did not mention this yet. Silvers can also explode sometime, and when they explode, it's more than just the, than the landmine I just showed. This this will do about 70% of your max HP and every monster's max HP around you. So the landmine can never kill you, because the landmine is your current HP, but this can kill you. Like, if I'm low and I open this, and it does, you know, more damage than I have max health, then it will kill me. Like this. So this did 37,000. If I was below 37,000, it would have killed me. But the landmine will always adjust to your current HP. That, all that really means is you don't want to open silvers unless you're full HP. And silvers are the only kind of chest that explode. Gold and bronze don't explode. Uh, it's 70% or 80%, I don't remember exactly. So I recommend you just open you just open them on your full HP. All I you know, like 90% plus.
All right. Oh yeah, it's like does the silver and the landmine. The one of them do seventy, and the other does eighty. But I can never remember which is which. Uh, but you know, I have cleared in every Dim dungeon, so that should tell you that this is not like a very important formation. So. Just make sure that whenever you're doing it, you have near full HP. And that's that's good enough. Oh yeah, by the way, the Demi Clones, the way they work, because I never really explained it, I just said you on the boss, is the Demi Clone is like, it lasts on the floor you're on, and then it goes away when you switch floor. So if I use the Demi Clone on this floor, and I spend 15 minutes on this floor, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be the, uh, the whole time with me. But as soon as I switch, it's gonna go away. Which is why it's kinda nice to use them on the bosses, because the bosses are generally where you're gonna spend the most time, on the lower floors. Or I should say it's where you're going to be spending the most time fighting. Because there's a lot of running around on these uh, floors when you're not fighting things. Ah, so there's there's an example. There we got Yune, but we're full on clones. Uh, so there's no harm in just using one. Now I'm gonna warn you. When you're using a clone, there's a huge animation lock. It's very long, right? So if you're using a clone on the floor, do not be fighting something, or you will die. So yeah, like if I'm pulling a random monster, what all she's going to do is she's gonna help me kill it. So it's gonna it's gonna give me like damage, right? She puts a dot and she also heals me if I get low, because that's you like she's uh, the healing one. Almost died on the clone animation, but this version was on. Yep, I've died to the clone animation uh, a few times. I think twice. So there we got the blind and the buff. I'm still trying to get uh, more pomanders before I really go over what they are. So there we got a free safety. Might as well use it. So with this, there's no more traps that exist on this floor, which means I can just run in the middle of the rooms and it's perfectly fine. traps so i can just kind of move like that but as you can see the reason i say that you can just use your palms when you feel like it is just as you can see we're already drowning in like the, the common ones right so there's really no reason to like make your life a little more miserable by keeping your strength and your steals and all this when you're already when you know you're going to be finding finding 20 of them by the time you need them so the follow guys I didn't realize they made the um, I didn't realize they made inner infuriate not consume your inner release that's that's new 
Thank you. Thanks for the sub, Sumo. Thank you for the prime. Thank you. Hey, we're uh, we're beyond the hundred subs. That's nice. New threshold, new milestone. Yeah, it's been like that for a while, but uh, I don't know. I guess I never. I guess I never think about it. Hey, Joni, thank you for the prime too. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it very much. All uh, all funds will be uh, forwarded to uh, some fiber guy to make me new alerts. If they stop ghosting me and you know they start replying to my messages, man, there's sorry. This I know this is a little bit of an anecdote. I contacted a guy on Fiverr to like remake my alert. I wrote like a five paragraph thing for him to read, and I I, I kid you not, he's, he in five seconds after. He just wrote in the in reply, "Yes, I'll do it." I didn't even didn't even read any of what I said. Just said, "Yes, I'll do it." And then after that, I told him, I told him, "No thanks." But you know, it's, it was still kind of funny. We're just fighting to get out there, no rush. This is safety, so there are no traps either. Uh, waiting an entire hour for spawns is better, but more kid used to score. No. For this, uh, for the first 30 sets so far, it seems like you want to you wanna kill everything and speedrun. You want to do both. You don't want to wait the full hour. It's not worth it. Finally, almost have all the palms. Uh, okay, I'll show. Perfect time. I'll show what Doda does because he's actually some. He's like the one that does something unique on these floors that are not bosses. So Doda is like a black mage that puts a petrify in the dot. Uh, so petrify, very simple. When you're fighting something, he's gonna cast petrify. So for 10 seconds, the monster will do nothing. Now, as a heads up, this is good but also it's bad for a lot of situations uh so i would be i would actually be very wary of using dodra on floors if if you use dodra you like pay 200 percent attention to what you're fighting because the petrify can make uh, abilities happen weird i i don't have like any good example to show on this floor but there, there's there's gonna be plenty of examples later to show that uh, show what this is about So we got a free flight there, we can use it. Yeah, good, uh, good song. So, you know, the rap was a petrify, but also a pretty strong dot. So, overall, he's going to lose your damage a lot for a floor. Oh, we also got a buff uh, we've never seen so far a sprint. This basically makes it so it's as if you had sprint active the entire time. So that's just nice. Not perfect. So we have every pump on this row. So I'm going to explain to you what they do now. So the second row. Uh, first pump is called an alteration. This this is a pump that you use on the uh, on a floor and it will affect the next floor. What this one does is the next floor would have a room that is either Corrigence, well Mandragoras or Mimics. 
if the room is full of mimics, it's gonna replace a room with it. Like, it's as if this room spawned with three mandragoras or mimics instead of these three monsters. Uh, if you got mimics, they they are on a tank. They're not that bad because mimics have a higher drop rate of chests, so you're just going to be fighting mimics instead of normal monsters. But if you got mandragoras, you, they die in one shot when you attack. Them. Uh, so there, it's this is a game to use. Like it's a gamble, but it's a it's a usually beneficial. Purity. Uh, so you remember how I said the mimics would put a dot on you that lasts ten minutes and you cannot remove. This will remove that dot. Uh, so on tank, it's not that useful, but it can be useful still because like you might still get the thing. Fortune. This simply increases the drop rate of chests from monsters. It's usually the rare. They will rarely drop a chest. And with this, they will drop it like much more commonly. I don't know EO numbers, but if it's like PUTD, it should make the drop rate go from 2% to 15%. And this, this affects all monsters on the current floor. This is not the next floor. Like if I use this, it, it's the current floor. And it, that, that includes respawns and everything, right? It's everything that is on this floor at all times. Uh, which I already showed, it transforms monsters in like something else, and then it, it also blocks their abilities during that. Uh, Serenity is good, it's uh, the, your only way to remove debuffs. So if you have debuffs or buffs, this will remove all the enchantments on the current floor. If I use this, it will remove sprint and glue from this, now it's gone. So this is a pretty important commander. And, and Liturgy is very weird. It's a new commander which will make monsters do everything slowly except moving. So if I pull like this guy, and this affects all currently existing monsters on the floor, but any new one, like any new monster, will not have the effect active. I'll sh actually show what the liturgy does on the next floor because Dogra is gonna petrify and make it hard. So I'll show what Liturgy does on this next floor, which is Altered. So I use an alteration, so one of the rooms there will be either Mandragoras or Mimics. So Liturgy. I just need to pull something that actually like has a chest. Oh, well, if you want to, so convenient. Is there really no monster that has a cast bar? Oh, well, there we go. Well, there's one. So, Liturgy, you're gonna see, like, for example, uh, these guys cast something called Gold Dust, right? You know, it's, it's a pretty fast cast. Now, if you use a Liturgy, everything's gonna be super slow to attack and do spells. So, when these guys do uh, Gold Dust again, it's gonna be il ultra slow. Like, see. It's like about, I don't know, like 10 times slower. So this buff will last 10 minutes for the current floor. And it's it doesn't include monsters that spawn after you use the pomander. So if I have a respawn, like the guy in the room back there. So you see these have like the liturgy debuff, but this one does not. This one is like normal speed. Also, we got Corridians, uh, Mand Mandragoras, if you prefer, but Corridians. So these are like monsters that die in one shot. So it's basically a free kill. And it also has an increased drop rate of chests, so it's even like double beneficial. So we are almost at the bus.
I will explain what the pomanders in the last row do probably in the next set whenever I find uh whenever I find the, the one important one I'm missing. There's a very important pomander, by the way, that you should be very happy that if you see, can see it there early on. It's called Pomander Raising. Probably the best pomander to find in EO. Uh, but it's fairly rare, so we, it's very inconsistent if you actually find it uh, in your run. But if you, see, if you see a pomander raising, you should be very happy. It's basically a pomander that lets you, like, that lets you mess up. No, it drops, uh, it drops before. But uh, also in Evan Alive, raising drops early as well. You can get it as soon as 4-7, I think. Alright, so the boss, not that hard, but you shouldn't really be sure of hitting, uh, getting it either because it's it does very little damage. Just don't stand in like six cones at the same time. So as I was always, in my opinion, if you have three demi clown, you should just use one on the boss. So we used Yune last time. Yune is like the least damage one. Dodra is like the middle one, like the middle damage. So we'll just use Dodra this time. He's not going to petrify the boss, unfortunately. So the line is, they're, they're going to do cones like in front of them, basically. Now, if you're going to fail, because I honestly sometimes it's hard to tell like which way safe. If you're gonna fail this mechanic, just pop defensives and stand in like a cone. But on tank, this should not even stretch you. So this is the two part one. You just want to stand in between the four lasers there, and then you're just gonna run across when that happens. So that's gonna happen. Then you just run across like that. I'm sure there's better ways to do it, but that's the way I like to do it, so that's the way I, I still do it. Let's say you were like you don't really know where the hell to go and you're like, oh my god, I have no clue what's going on. Just use like a defensive and try to stand in one cone. As long as you do that, it's not even going to stretch you. And, you know, let, let's do it again. I'm like, oh my god, like I have no idea what to go. I completely messed up. Well whatever, just stand in like one cone, right? That's that's the advantage of tanks. That you can do a lot of mechanics on bosses like that. Did Meiji release the EO guide already? She has her uh, handbook guide, which we're gonna look at for the next set actually.
so that's the 20 bucks. This set is probably the easiest one in the whole place, so... There will be a few monsters worth noting on the next set. So let's look at them already. So yeah, that's Meiji's guide, by the way. She has been uh, keeping it <laughs> with the memes. Yeah, she was. She made this on patch day because we were we did a team run, and she was updating it like the same day as the patch, as we were going through. Okay, so there's a few monsters that are like a little bit dangerous. There, they don't have all. They don't have, all have pictures. So while it's probably going to be more beneficial when I actually show them in game, but basically there's a patrol of dragon that do a very wide cone. That shouldn't be too bad on solo and especially on water, but it's still nice to know. Uh, Ardo Knight is a monster that will do an untelegraph AOE sucking effect followed by a very big hit. Uh, and you cannot stun. M most of the things are like a threat you cannot stun in there. But Nara Patrol is like a walking dog thing that will do a point blank circle. And if it hits you, it will try like to like kill you with it. It might not be a one shot, but it, you don't want to get hit by this. And an Orto Demolisher is like little uh, turrets that uh, do a big enrage at 30%. Uh, you just gotta make sure you're away from it. And uh, let's look at the bus now. This is the last set where there's not too much tricky things. By the way, this is the HP set. This is the set, the farming sets. So this is the set you're gonna see a lot of uh, if you ever farm this for either pool. So this boss doesn't do anything complicated. He will summon like uh, low T dragon heads that give you volns. Uh, sorry, that give you volns if you you know go through them. So he just does them. Uh, he does them on the sides and in front, depending on what's going on. Uh, this is probably the hardest mechanic. He's gonna do something called major flare. He's gonna spawn a bunch of like circles on the ground that you avoid. The trick there though is that. You, whenever like a cycle happens, some heads are gonna spawn and will like ohm towards you. They will like grow towards you. So the way you're supposed to do to do this mechanic is exactly the opposite of what I'm doing right there. You're supposed to move uh, every cycle. You're supposed to move to a different spot to dodge the flares. If you do it that way, the heads are not they're, they're not going to all converge on you. I did it there. And then this mechanic is easy. This is just a baited circle that you bait to one end and then you run to the other end. It's gonna like follow you. Uh, it's gonna follow you, but as long as you did it on the other edge, it's not going to reach you before it expires. Like that. And that's it for the boss. Then he does like a middle line or a side lines. Nothing complicated for this. So I'm going to eat food. So most monsters there, they still ju just like have a telegraphs you want to dodge. There, there's some tricky ones, but I will explain them as I see them. So as I said, when you're sitting at three strength, there's not really any reason not to use it. So I'll use it when this guy does a telegraph. There, so let's try. The, dem the Demolisher, that's uh, one of the Twitchy monsters. It does give me a second. I would like to fight it, but without this patrol being in the way, so I'm just going to wait a little bit.
So what this guy does, he's just going to keep attacking you. When he gets low... Uh, oh my god, how many patrols are there? One sec. I just want to have a, like a, sh be able to show what he does. So when that guy gets low, he will do an, an enrage thing, a very large cast. Uh, that will that that will kill him. So this, so this will be a very wide uh, circle. You're gonna see it soon. You can either go out of range of it if you're like fast enough, or you can just hide behind a wall, like that. Uh, you just gotta keep that in mind so you make sure you don't fight them in like a very awkward position. This guy, I believe, does like a circle E with a nut thing. No, he puts poison on you, sorry. Uh, he puts poisons on you that stack, but they do zero damage. So, she's open, we have no reason to fight anything, unless it was in the way, in which case, where well, we would kill it. Like, this guy might be in the way. Yeah. So this guy does a gaze, followed by a Neewee on himself. So again, whenever we do like an accidental pull, it's usually better to kill one of them fast than to try to like Eevee both of them. Yeah, any the then raid will one shot the tank, like someone in the in the chat said. Anything. You should play as if anything will one-shot you, even on tank. Like, if it's a telegraph that's not a boss, it will one-shot you. Some of them do are already, like the enrage of this guy, but everything will in uh, like two sets, so... So this guy's gonna detonate. If you do good damage, you can kill it before. Like that. But it's usually better to plan to hide. Yeah, this is a great sound. This is the one that plays in the, the snow dungeon, right? In the uh, Shadowbringer. The burn, right? Right, that's a treasure room, so it's full of monsters, but it has four chests. By the way, this is a cone gaze, so you don't actually need to look away if you're behind. Though you can always look away if it makes you scared. Another free flight. So this guy is gonna detonate. 
You can maybe kill it in time, but it's usually better to hide. Wanted to check maybe this. Uh, we have three fortune right now. So fortune is the one that I said yeah, increases drop rate when you're fighting monsters. If it's sitting at three. It's, it's not a bad idea to use it for like possible drops. Though right now this force fly that it has less monsters, so it's probably less valuable. But that's a dangerous monster, especially if you're fighting in a weird spot. He's gonna do electromagnetism, which does a big sucking effect after a little bit. And then he's gonna do like a huge hit on you. It's not gonna kill you on tank. Uh, on DPS it gets close though. And you cannot stun it. You cannot stun this. So don't try. Does water feel better in Dramatic for the early floors? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It feels better. Way more healing. Do you always use a strain or an or steel on the bus or only for certain bus? Personally, I will always use a clone on the buses if I have at least three. Uh, strength, steel. Like, if I have a clone running, then I don't really feel like I need to use a strength because the clone already does so much damage. But if I have no clone running, then I would probably strength the boss, yeah. Right, I'm gonna test something, by the way, but I'm pretty sure that when he does the certain spell, I think it's a two part attack. So I think if you charge too fast, it would actually hit you. Let me try, but I think if I charge in too fast, it's gonna hit me. Yep. So you need to wait for the actual AoE to happen there. But as you can see, these falls are going much faster than the first uh, set. The first set is really like the, the really long one. And so follow. free safety we can just not deal with traps always good and we just open all the bronze we see because there's a chance they will give us potions which we don't really need on warrior but it's still kind of nice to have them especially because like i said warrior is really good is really good to learn but after you've learned like after you have learned everything and then maybe if you still have not cleared then at this point it's probably better to switch to uh, whatever dps you feel the most comfortable playing and then for that, you're gonna need potions. So this guy does, uh, is that the gay guy? I forgot. Yeah, gaze into leap side. So gaze into uh, EOE. By the way, there's random EOEs appearing under my feet. That's because these guys, they shoot random EOEs. Uh, when you're not in combat with them. So just something to keep your eyes out for.
whenever you're able to open a silver chest, by the way, uh, don't don't rush to it and open it. Go to it, wait a second, then open it. Because there's a risk you would hit a landmine and then open the silver and then bo boat would kill you if it blew up. So be careful. Okay, we can even use a fly if we want. Like I said, when their pumps are at 3, don't sweat it. We can use them. So let's just burn a flight. It's not because we need to clear, but because it makes things uh, a little faster for us. Kind of off topic question, but do you kill all the monsters in Beauty Floor 150? Uh, if you're just trying to clear normally, you don't need to. But me, I do because I'm scoring. Yeah. Okay, that's a red base. Uh, so I did say earlier that you should never touch red base. That is true. You should never touch them. You can kill them though with a specific commander. And the way Dread Beast works is there's three kind of them. Like there's three like model. There's this one, the Centaur, which is a, a buff when you kill it. There's the like a snake lady that gives another buff. And then there's like a, a rock dude that gives a third buff. Uh, the buffs are, this one will give you 20% damage increase for 30 minutes. The snake lady uh, slash Lamia will give you 30 minutes of HP regen, and then the rock guy is going to give you 30 minutes of 20% defense buff. Ultimately, it means that they're all useless to kill, except this one is actually kind of nice to kill. Because I would get 30 minutes of 20% uh, damage increase. So how do you kill it? So there's this very specific commander on the third row. I still have not explained, but we can maybe talk about the storm. Storm is interesting. Storm reduced the HP of all enemies on the current floor to like one, like one HP. But the thing is, enemies regen HP out of combat, right? Like if I if I if an enemy is low health, its HP is gonna regen like us. So if I just use a storm, like right away, well, let me show you. If I use a storm like that, you're gonna see everything is slowly regening health because monsters regen health out of combat, such uh, same as the players. So we can't do that. Like I, I it's like I can't you no, know, I can still pull a monster and benefit from the lower HP but it's still not really a big deal now if you got a specific debuff that we've not seen yet there's a debuff that makes it so things cannot regen HP anymore if you use a storm under that debuff then yeah your storm is going to put every one HP forever but you can't really rely on getting that debuff every time you use a storm uh, so now I, I'd say if you see this Dread Beast, like specifically this one, the Centaur, and you still have like at least 30 minutes left on your set, it's probably not a bad idea to grab the buff. But though, because of the HP regen, uh, as I explained, then you need to do this in a very specific way. So the way you need to do it is you need to make him to be in combat with you. And then you need to kill it before he kills you. Because this guy is going to kill you in like two other attacks. So the way I like to do it on tank, very simple. I'm going to go as far as I can for my provoke, 25. So I'm going to be ready to provoke. I'm going to provoke, storm, and then use like a steal. So I'm going to, and I'm going to use defensive just in case. So I'm going to wait for him to move to make sure that, uh, you know, I can actually pull him. And you may, you, do, you want to make sure you don't hit a trap when you're doing this as well. Of course. So let's do it now. So I'm going to use defensive. I'm going to provoke, storm, and I'm going to kill it like that. So now by doing that, and also he gives you a, a gold chest for free. So let, let's go. But so now I have a 30 minute 20% damage buff. Uh, I personally, I think for the cost of one storm, that's worth Unless you were like about to finish a set, or unless you don't need it for the set, which in this case we don't need it. Like, I don't need this damage for this set that I'm doing right now, but I just wanted to show it off. 
Because on the higher sets, this could be useful. That's the way you do a, a Dread Beast, the Centaur specifically, with Storm. This is the only way you should kill it. If you're not going to do this, you want to avoid them at all costs. We got no ability. That's a terrible debuff. How big is the Dread Beast buff? It's 30%. Uh, sorry, it's 20% for 30 minutes. So it's kinda huge. It is a very big buff. And it will also stack with strength. But if I use a strength, I I, I have both. Uh, damage ups. Alright, this guy does uh is the the guy does a big crown. So he's trying to do something called swinge after a little bit. This is a huge crown in front of him. Yeah, it's really good. It's a really good buff. It's why, personally, I think it's worth to storm the beast. Right, these guys. So the how do you call them? The Vu Vuivers. The Vuivers. I don't really know how you, how you pronounce that. Uh, in combat, they do nothing, but outside of combat, they will do like a, a pulse. Like they're gonna pulse. Uh, the, these guys should do it soon. Like that. So if you're if you're inside of that when they do it, you're gonna get a bone stack. It doesn't really hurt. But it's trying to give you a bone stack, and they do it out of combat. Dragons only do a line EOE. I, I assume, by the way, like when I'm playing the monsters, if it's a telegraph that is shown on the ground the entire time. I don't really feel like it's worth explaining in that, right? Like you should, you should know that if a telegraph is under your feet, you have to move out of it. Like if it shows you the entire time, there's no reason to really explain what it does. It's why I'm fighting. Uh, it's why I've been fighting some monsters that I've not explained what they do. If I don't explain what it does, then the assumption is that common sense like is enough to fight it. Like you don't need explanation. Like this one, for example, only does a circle EOE called Electrify. Uh, we still have zero raisings, by the way. That's not cool. You should definitely be happy if you found raisings by now, but uh, we're, we have zero, so... They're pronounced we Vweaver. Vweaver, okay, interesting. You're in floor 61 with war and still no raising. Damn. I mean, I would say that's unlucky, but that's kinda... Honestly, that's kinda normal, I feel like, at this point. People have been complaining about the lack of raisings a lot.
Let's chill a Weaver so this guy does nothing in combat. Should you use a Raising as soon as you get one? No. You should keep them for the 50 plus stuff. I'd say as soon as you get into 51. Well, you know what? If it's your first time... Okay, if you've never been there before, I'd say starting from 31, feel free to use one. Yeah, okay, that, that's fair. If you've never seen like the set you're on, I think it's worth using one. Once you've seen all the sets, I would only use it on like 61 plus. But if you don't know what's coming, then yeah, I would use the, the raisings as you get them. As long as you're above 30. You got 24 minutes and you're 21, 30. Wow. Well, Corridor and Slash Mimics, yeah. Was that a treasure room? Because like, even if you got 4 times 4, that's 16. That would be 8 more that you've got. One tre oh, one treasure room. Made sense. Ah, so the Vanara. These guys are tricky. But they're not that tricky, but you gotta know what they're doing. So he's gonna do like a point blank circle called side something. You just gotta make sure you're away because it, it will only show you that it's happening at the end of it. And if you get hit by this, he's gonna crumble uh, into a very high damage. That, I don't think it would kill you on tank. It would kill you on DPS though. How big of a pull would you land mine on DPS on floor 71? Uh, you could probably, with a witch chain, you can probably do like... Have, what, with steel, I, I'd say you can do like 8... 8 monsters. Not like, not that hard. It wouldn't be that hard. Thank you for the, the prime, by the way. Lucario, thank you. Uh, the, the landmine was is not going to be the tricky part if you're on a DPS. It's like bringing the monsters to the landmine. Okay, so we're finding two threatening monsters there. Well, one of them is threatening. So let's just focus down one of them. Would you recommend summoner or warrior for first solo clear of EO? I would recommend warrior for to prog from like the from fresh. And then after you know the mechanics, if you're still not there by then, I would switch to your most comfortable DPS. Any of it. Any of any DPS. Also, the thing that's really nice if you saw a warrior is that you won't need potions. You don't need European potions. Uh sorry. Orto's potions. But we are we are doing a warrior guy right now. And that, the reason I'm doing warrior instead of um, like machinist, even though machinist has way more tiers than warrior, by the way. Right now, machinist has of, over 100 tiers and warrior has about 20. But the reason is I think war is better to prod. So it's why I'm doing a warrior guy.
By the way, every time I'm going through the rooms, even though I'm arching the walls and there's less chance of a trap, it doesn't mean there's no chance of a trap. So you always gotta be ready to hit the trap. Though in that dungeon specifically, it's not really dangerous because there's no trap that would kill you. At worst, you're gonna hit the luring trap. And then you're gonna have to deal with four monsters. Yeah, Machinist is the one with the, the most players. He has something like 120 players right now. So we have three strike. Might as well use one. Uh, this guy does a pretty big cone. Just like don't be running away from it, then you're fine. Yeah. That. Most of like the, um, we're almost out of the like the tutorial sets, right? After that, it's going to pick up in difficulty massively. Pet a monster, I got you. I'll pet the next one I see. Ah, perfect. We got a dread and a raising as well. So we've got every pomander so far. Uh, so I, I don't, I can't really waste these two to show you what they do. Dread is a pomander that you use to, like, one shot things. But it's, it's, it's. Uh, I'll, I'll show what it does exactly. And then raising lets you die and revive when it's up once. So I'm gonna put this guy to the, to the thing. There. Alright, there's a Dread Beast there. We don't really want to mess with that. That one is the one that gives you a defense buff, which is completely useless. Is it worth to Iwi pull with Warrior 110? It's worth... You can do it. Uh, it's kind of fun. It does save you time. It's not really necessary, though. Oh, yeah. It is fun. I, I, I did it a little bit in that guide. These turtles, they just do something annoying. They'll do something called Diamondback. And if you don't interrupt it, they'll get, uh, they'll eat less damage for the rest of their life. So just interrupt it if you're a tank. They also do a pretty quick, uh, we call stomp after that. It's telegraph, but it's quick. All right, so as a reminder, we cannot pull this. If you ever pull a Dread Beast by mistake... Like, yeah. I don't even know what solution to give you because you're going to Witching, but you're not going to be able to kill it. So what I recommend if you see a, a Dread Beast is actually don't really go in the room until you know why, like how it has moved. Then once it's moved, you know you have like 20 seconds to get uh, past it. But you, you can't be greedy on these guys. If I pull this... Probably my only chance is to use a Raising Commander. Yeah, or a Storm. But we have no Storm right now. But if you had a Storm, then yes, you will use a Storm. 
Okay, so this boss, so I don't have three clones, so in that case, I'll do the boss, uh, you know, the, the long way. If I had three clones, I would use one to save time. So this is a wall in front. Just gotta dodge in the old, easy. The tail is the middle, so the, it's gonna do like a line down the middle. Which will spawn heads that you just dodge them. Now this is the mechanic that you need to do cor like correctly. So it's gonna spawn heads that follow you every time the, the things explode. So you just gotta keep moving. Like keep dodging in a different spot every time. And as long as you do that, the ads are not going to all like converge on you. You can get a lot of bones, by the way, on this fight. Like, don't feel bad if you get like what eight. You can, you could go to eight very easily. So this is just uh, you just bait this on one end, and then you go to the other end, and it's gonna like expire before it even reaches you. Wing is side, so you go middle. And the wings also spawn heads, so you gotta dodge them. And uh, that's it for the boss, you've seen everything. So now let's just repeat. How uncommon. Uh, sorry, uh, tail and spell. How uncommon is Onion like Demi? R rarer than the other two, I think. It's not like crazy rare, but it's rare enough where I don't have one for every boss. <clears throat> we bait this on the other side. There we go. Wings is the side, so we go middle. Layers, we just uh, keep moving. Yeah, I mean, you could use the dummy clone on this bus if you really want to. It is really long. And to be fair, the monsters on 130 are like way tankier than the ones on the next sets. Uh, I mean, you could have zero dummies right now and you would still find all of them back. It's really up to you. It's really up to you, really. But I, but I, I just like having a consistent uh, number. So that in my case, unless I have three, I won't use it. If I, assuming I have time to kill the boss. Kill his middle. Rarer than match side? I don't think so. I don't think Onion Knight is rarer than match side. It's maybe rarer than match side early, like on, but once you make it to the higher floors, it's super common.
Alright, it's almost dead. Very long fight without the clown. My just something I noticed. So I've never played Warrior in max level. Uh, but something I noticed about the rotation, you gotta be very careful when using a release uh, to not kill yourself with Primal Ram. Because this is a fa very lengthy animation block, I noticed. But you can delay your Primal Ram for 30 seconds. So I would use that information to make sure you'd never use it when you would, uh, well, die from it. It has killed you twice, yeah. It's a dangerous uh, button. So wait, can you can you own gank during the animation? I don't actually know. Let me try. Kinda ish, I guess. All right, so that's the four first thirty floors. Kind of like the tutorial floors. Nothing too bad there. Now it's going to start programming difficulty like drastically. Would you say EO is similar in difficulty to MLI and PewDD or easier? It's way easier than uh, PewDD and MLI. It's way easier. It looks scarier at, the f at first because of the, all the mechanics, but once you learn the mechanics, it's very easy. Alright, so... Let's go over the next... Uh, that's set. 3140 has a lot of monsters that do annoying things. So. Uh, well, okay, that's not really worth mentioning. Orthobug. So Ortho Spider, this is a little spider that does like a point blank that will... Everything will one-shot you at this point. Just to assume everything will one-shot you. He does a very a quick point blank around himself that is on telegraph for most of the cast and it will uh, minimize you if you get it then it will, you will get uh, one shot uh the minotaur the orto tor does a very quick swing and a very quick swipe just uh, keep uh, your eyes out for this swipe is a uh, frontal crown swing is a circle aoe or orto ray is a patrol that does a, a huge wide crone in front of it or a point blank AoE on himself, depending on the cast name. Orto Chimera does Ram's voice or Dragon's voice, which is Donut or point blank. Yeah, I, I, I tried to find a, a source that had like pictures for every monster, but I could not find one. So, uh, so unfortunately, I can only share the names for before the set, but in the set, I should be able to show everything easily. And that guy. <laughs> Which can barely tell what it is in the picture, but he like teleports beyond you and then nuts you back. Nothing too bad, honestly, on the monsters. Nothing too bad as long as you're like ready to react to whatever they throw at you. Uh, so let's go see what the 40 bus is about. He's a little more involved. So. So this is, uh, I believe, if you've raided, you should know what it does, kind of. So it does a move called Twister. 
when this move goes off, you must like be moving because it puts like a one shot landmine under you, which will despawn after a short while. Uh, after that, you're gonna follow it up with like it's trying to like do a bunch of AoEs, but there's always like if I can rewind a little bit, it, it they always spawn in the same position. Um, like rotated, but like there's always going to be like a, a an edge and the middle like have a clear view, right? And that's the one you want to look out for. Uh, so after that, he's going to teleport. Uh, no, sorry, he's going to do four EOEs on you. This. You're just just going to drop them, you know, like somewhere. They're going to be away by the time you need to do the thing. Then he's going to do not teleport middle. Then you need to go in the in that line I talked about, the one that has like a clear view. You just stand there, you don't get knocked back. Uh, and that's like pretty much the whole mechanic of the fight, but he will do one thing at some point. He does it once. So he's gonna do a squall, but he's, he's going to actually go in the air. And then he's going to go like to a part of the arena. Yeah, and he's going to do like a line EOE from where he is, right? So he's trying to do a line in the middle. But when he does this, you gotta be careful because at the same time, you will you will be using something called twisting dive. It's gonna put like a twister under you, so you have to be moving during this. If you're not moving during this, that little uh, landmine is gonna kill you, right there. So that's it. That's it for the boss. Oh, the edge of the arena, I believe if you hit any kind of win thing during that fight, it will put like a, a dot on you. I don't think it's a one shot, but you know, no reason to find out. Alright. Well, let's just go. So there's a few tricky monsters. I'll make sure to explain every single one uh, as we encounter them. This guy doesn't do much. He will do a uh, circle on you. Then after that, he will do. He will. He might buff an ally with damage, but you don't really care about that as a thing. That's the thing that would give damage to an ally. Mirror Knight does a gaze when you pull it. So just respect the gaze. Do really don't be greedy with, with gazes in there, by the way. You don't regret it. You're dead. If, if anything is at this point, you're dead. Maybe not everything, everything, but assume everything is a, a one shot. So you have a stun, which you can use on some monsters. I don't know which ones uh, at all. It's too early still. Uh, it's not a bad idea to just like get see like if it works. But I would not rely on your stun until you're like 100% sure that something can be stunned. Uh, even myself, I don't really rely on my stun still. Shapti will do a line AoE into a scone. Oh, there's one there's one downside about the altars strategy it's that if you get mimics they're uber tanky compared to everything else at least on most sets lining wind to cone
So as a rule of thumb, if you're fighting something and you don't know if there's a Niwi, if you don't know like 100% and there's going to be a Niwi or not in like, you know, a second, I recommend you don't dash and you don't ram or run. Like just wait until there's a telegraph happening before you do it. So managing your time is not going to really be a thing until we get to like the 60 set. The 61 plus set is where the time, like we'll start to have to worry about it a little bit, but even then it's never going to get really that bad. Like we will have to use some farms aggressively, but it's really not going to be that bad compared to something like MLI or PUTD. But I knew anyway, until like the 60s, we at most like you'd be looking at maybe a flight or a strength. So this guy does nothing, he drains your HP sometimes, but that's it. On this set, I'd say most of the AoEs one-shot you, not all, but starting from the next set, then it, it becomes the truth. Like, starting from the next set, anything one-shots you. And when I say one-shot, I mean, like, it does, like, 300k damage. Like, you, you have no hope of surviving a single paragraph. Yeah, only hope is tank involved, but... It's hard to tank in vault. Like unless you because the most the most of the time the telegraphs that kill you are the ones that happen really fast. So like if you have time to tank in vault, if you if you got time to tank in vault, you probably have time to move away. But yeah, it can be helpful. Like if you get caught by a very wide AoE, it can be helpful. Alright, so we just fight everything. Can afford to use a flight if they're at three. If they're at uh, if your strength are three, you can also do it. It's just gonna make your life better. And you know, if you've got a free fortune, why not? Line we into cone.
this place is a, a test of your like focus because if you're going into this from PTD or even high you're going to feel it's going to feel pretty different but you're gonna feel like you are uh, you need your attention needs to be like completely on the game for the entire time because like already anything is a one shot Because I know in PUTD and even I, it's kind of the meta, you know, like when you're climbing on the boring floors, you're gonna like boot up a podcast or something or a show and watch at the same time. But I feel like in EO, this is not really viable. Like if you want to do this place in a timely manner, you're going to have to like give it your full attention the entire time. Yeah, even the first sets has one shots. One shots are the norm there, not the exception. So uh, I I do I did say that earlier, but I think the way you should plan your like chest checking route is just kind of check what's in the way between you and the key, and just don't go crazy for the rest. You could technically use all your free time, like because you're going to have plenty of time on each set. You could use all that time to check like every single chest. But I think if you do that, you're going to get burned uh, on the off the earlier floors faster. Does Palace have any EA with a one shot? One shot on tank? I don't know. But like there's some that put like EWEs on like they put debuff on you, they kill you. But I don't know if there's like true one shots anymore. Oh but well there's level 5 dead, right? Respect the gaze. He always does a circle a wee bit, by the way, after the gaze. Isn't 191 at your spots a one shot? No, it's not. PUTD is very generous on the telegraph damage. Do tanks survive Dragon's voice? Yep. Death Spiral is not a one shot either. I've survived that with a steal on DPS multiple times. Uh, for this set, the most, like, the really annoying monsters are all gonna be towards the end of it. Like, middle to end of it. But right now, we still got, like, the things that only do circle the and all that. But, uh, we're going to see some... There's gonna be the first monsters that we actually have to know the mechanics for or we die. Very soon. So, gaze. And then he's going to do the circle AOE.
gaze. Purple UE. By the way, the way this works is if you get it by the gaze on this one, it's going to infuse you and then you're going to die or stun. And then you're going to die from the UE. Uh, do we think I'll make a video or a written guide for EO? Uh, well, I'm doing right now a video guide for EO. So it's like a, it's like a normal VOD. But I'm going to explain like everything in depth. Uh, I've already explained most of the, you know, regular debunking mechanics in depth. Right now we're entering the floors where I'm going to like explain the monsters uh, in depth. And bosses. So this Lamia, all she does is, uh, you think she does a gaze, but all she does is a circle you. Now I gotta say, I hope I clear this, this attempt, right? First try, because if I fail... If I fail it, I don't really want to go back on water right, ag right again. I don't want to do the same job twice in a row. So if I do fail this attempt, uh, the guy would be delayed for like uh, probably a week. So hopefully we clear this attempt and we don't have to worry about it. All right, Shepti. Let's try and be lining away into a circle. Uh, sorry, Kalaga. Go. Ultimate monster. We're just gonna focus on the Shepty first. Another bird. Do you actually need healing pot as a tank? No, you need, you need zero as a... You, you should need zero as war. Which is a, a big reason of why I think this is a really... Probably the best, like, prod job. Because the other DPS jobs, you're going to run into situations where... The potions are kind of necessary. So again, like I said, uh, this Dread Beast gives you a very nice damage buff. So it's usually worth to kill it with Storm. But earlier I did it to show it off. I did it to show it off earlier. I You should not kill it if you don't need to for time. And clearly right now we're not going to need to kill it for time. Uh, though, to be fair... He's by the key, so he's kind of high risk, right? He's kind of a little bit of a risky guy to keep alive, so maybe we should just kill it. Uh, it should not matter that your storm, like it should matter that you have zero of the some palms until floor fifty. So let's actually kill this one. It'll make my life easier. So the way you kill, uh, you you can do multiples when doing storm, by the way, to like you know kill more things. But the way you want to kill this guy as safe as possible. Then as far as we can with the provoke. Pop defensives, provoke, pull, storm, then you just want to like use something to do it. Like that. The set of you do you think is the hardest? I think the six. Uh, sorry, I think the seventy-one to eighty is the hardest one. But you gotta be aware for like all. Of them, so. All right. So this guy. So he's gonna do a very quick point blank. Uh, you just need to make sure you're away. This is the thing. Particle collision. If you're close to him, when he does that, you're gonna die. 
because the needles passers don't have one shot. Yeah, that's the monkey set. The one, uh, the seventy-one is the monkey set. Uh, free liturgy, sure. By the way, liturgy. If you if there's some monsters that you think like will give you a problem, uh, great. Great time to use a liturgy because the liturgy is going to show you all the mechanics super slowed down. Like for example, if I'm if I'm not sure like what this guy does, I don't remember, or I think it's hard to like deal with it, I can pop a liturgy, and it's gonna make his stain actually so much lower, and it's it's going to show you the telegraph light also before. So now I actually know like what it does. Which boss do I think is the hardest? I think um, 70. The one with the magnets. It's 80. It's 80. I think 80 is the hardest. After 80, I'd say 99. Well, 99 was, I would say, what I would, was the hardest until uh, the ice mechanic at this safe spot figured out. Now, because of that, I think it's like second hardest. Uh, so, same as before, if you have three of a palm, it's not a bad idea to use it. So, we had three F1s there, might as well use one. You don't need to, but you don't know. Maybe it's trying to give you a raising or something nice. You have to be level 81 to go in. Okay, then uh, the Naga only does one thing. It does a gaze in front. Like that. All right, so not bad disable. So the debuff we just got, uh, it does two things. It will make it so that any monster that has a not bad mechanic will no longer work on you. So that's beneficial. But for example, anything that would suck you in, well, it will, it's not going to suck you in anymore with this. Uh, and second, it, second thing it does that is uh, bad is a uh, you have a, something called the Dread Pomander, which is like it you can knock monsters away with it and it one shots them. If no not back is active, you can no longer do that. Like the dread will do like zero damage. That's the two effects.
Alright, so we got a Gozu back there. Probably one of the most dangerous monsters on this set. Him, uh, him and another one are probably the most dangerous monsters. So this guy's gonna do swing and swipe. Uh, I always have to remind myself which one he opens with. I think he's gonna open with Swain, which is a point blank around himself. Yes. So Swain, uh, my way of remembering Swain and Swipe. Swain is like he's swinging someone around him, so it's around. And Swipe is like he's swiping his credit card, so it's in front. And that's the way I remember it. That's my my own trick. And he's done. He's going to keep doing that. So you just you gotta pay attention the whole time. So swing, swinging around. And then swipe the credit card, but he didn't get to it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds stupid, but the stupider it sounds, the easier you're gonna remember it after a second. It's the same with magnets, right? Like, up, you know, opposites attract each other, so then now you know plus minus is gonna like suck you in, and then the same one twice is gonna push away. Alright, so we're gonna pull him. So, first thing he does is gonna be swing. So, he's swinging someone around, so it's out around him, so you wanna go away. Next thing he's gonna do is gonna do sw uh, swipe, swiping the credit cards with fun. And good. And then he's probably gonna do it again before you kill him, so you gotta be careful. So he's gonna swing again there. Unless I kill it. Yeah, there is a swing. Then you move. Then after that it would be the swipe. Hey, thanks, Freddy. Thanks for the sub. You got manipulated. Alright. Well, thank you anyway. Two months. Alright, so Chrome Gaze. Gaze again. Yeah, the all the way you're talking about is very bad to fight in. Because yeah, sometimes you things will LOS you like when you're inside of it for no reason. So then you gotta like get on the same uh, eight level. Right, we should start seeing the other monster that is very dangerous on this set. Uh, sorry, I was reading something. So the other dangerous monster is a patrol area. So this guy is the second dangerous monster there. Uh, he does two things. A really huge frontal cone and a point blank AoE around himself. The cone is called four something. So four is in front. So you know you don't want to be in front. And then the other one is called... The, the, the other thing is called not four. And that's the way I remember it. So there it is. Now let's fight there, because the other one is around. So if we see four, we'll move behind. Yeah, so that's my way of fighting these guys. If I see the, the word four, I have F-O-R-E, I'm gonna move behind. If I don't see the, the word four when he's casting, I'm gonna move like away. So four, we move behind. Then the other cast, we move away. Whatever it's called. Atmospheric something, I think. Okay. Atmospheric, atmospheric displacement.
Uh, we, we tested out the Onion Knight yesterday. Uh, I, I let Onion Knight do 50% of the boss alone and he did exactly 10% per minute on 499. Alright, so it's gonna be Swain first. Swinging around. Into swiping in front. Swapping in front. Yeah, and starting from 431, uh, mimics can only be silvers. All the way to 60. Yeah, you can max melee that trap. Uh, though we're not really going to go into like uptime uh, things for this run, but yeah, you can max melee that trap if you want. Actually, died to that yesterday as well. Uh, this guy does nothing. Actually, does nothing. I think he was, he's gonna put ace on himself after a while, but as a tank, you don't care. When he ace, you can vengeance, so he kills himself faster. True, true, that's something. Because if you didn't know, your vengeance actually reflects some damage, so... That's true. Alright, so I believe there's no more... Ah, there's one monster I'd like to mention. Uh, I don't think we've seen it yet, but uh, everything else should have been covered on this set. Everything else that is like a threat. Ah, no, sorry. There's two more. Uh, I see both of them. Uh, by the way, first thing you always want to do anyway on the floor, especially if it's like an intersection, is you want to see if there's any patrol coming. Or there's none in that case. Uh, like I said, you're sitting at 3, not a bad idea to use something. Let's use a fortune. Alright, the Garm, uh, well, Ortho, Ortho Chimera is going to do two moves. Ram's Voice and Dragon's Voice. Ram's Voice. Dragon's Voice is a donut, so you go in. And Ram's voice is a point blind, so you need to go out. As far as, I, as I'm aware, he's always going to, win, going to do both of them, and then there's going to be like a 10 second break, and then he's going to like do them like that. Uh, is it on purpose I have no storms? It's just I saw two Dread Bees that give you damage buff and I decided that it was probably better to get the damage buff. Because like I was saying, you should not really stress about not finding your your storms uh, for like a very long time. But they're pretty common. Do we?
Because we we should not have time issues all well until 61. So we don't need to stress about finding things until then. Okay, Ram's voice. So we out. Then we go back. Because it's Dragon's voice. Be tricky, uh, be that, say, uh, sorry, be cautious when you're fighting that room. It's very hard to tell where the telegraphs are in there. That would be like, you know, more safe if you're fighting that room. The Ram's voice. Just disconnected on 430 boss at 4 personnel on your solo run. Hey. Just just deep dungeon thing. They really they really kept the best from PTD and MLI when they made EO. They kept the DCs because everyone loves them. Alright, this guy does uh just a, a Niwi after uh, Iron himself, but he is telegraphed, so. There it is. I believe it also boosts his damage, but you don't need to care about that on time. Alright, this guy is the next. Swing first. Swinging around. And then he's gonna swipe in front. You know, swing around. Swing in first, swipe in front. How do I feel about EO in general? It's a bit underwhelming. It's very different than uh, Putin and MLI. It is very different. It's more like the... It's more like the, the Raiders introductory... Intro, introductionary... Uh, I don't know how to say that word. It's like the, the Raiders Deep Dungeon. It's like the intro to Deep Dungeon for Raiders. That's the way I see it. Uh, personally, I have fun. I'm having fun. Now, do I think it would have been better if uh, the new Deep Dungeon was more like QT than ever high? Yeah, I would have liked it a little more. But I mean, this so far I like this because I don't raid, so it's kind of new and shiny to me. Yeah, Orto Thor is pretty da dangerous on this set. Dragon's voice. But I learn. So, so when you look at the Orto Thor, Zirin, uh, at first I thought the swipe was really long, but when you look at it, the swipe is actually super small. So I, since I figured that out, I, I respect, like, like it's Jeremy Lice. Because at first I was like, I don't really want to AoE pull these guys, but their AoEs are very short, so you can actually AoE pull them. Like the swipe, with a liturgy, right? Like the swipe is super small. Alright, so this is the last monster that does something worth mentioning. So he's gonna, he does something very weird. He's gonna like go behind me and push me back. He's gonna do it now. 
Like he goes behind you and then he pushes you. Just be careful you don't do it, uh, you know, like you're not pushed in a bad situation. I do the follows, guys. We're so doing it again. So remember, swing. Swing in around, and then he's gonna do swipe. Swipe in front. So do I just prefer upscale to cap UTD? I mean, if they made. If you like, let, let's say they took PFTD as is, like they changed nothing, but they they gave everyone the max level toolkit. I don't think I'd like it more, but if they took PFTD and they gave everyone the max level toolkit, but they tinkered with the numbers, like they made the numbers match so that the experience would be the same as it is now, then yeah, I think I would like it more than you. No, the Grozos in the 90s are different. Uh, they're not exactly the same. The Grozos in the 90s, first, the swipe they do is super large, is super long. And second, they charge you before swing. So that's the treasure room with the key inside. Is EO easier than QTD and MLI? Yeah, it is. Here. Okay, so we got a strength for the bus. That's good. Uh, sorry, for the next floor. Swing. Going around. Wipe in front. I mean, if you feel like QTD is too long, definitely eat it. Even high is, you know, the next best thing for you. Point blank. Because even high plays like QTD. Like, very similar. Alright, last floor. I believe uh, I believe I've shown every monster at this point on the set, so we're just gonna go fast. Yeah, it was very appealing. If you're uh, if you love raids, there's no way you don't like Yo. Nice raising. I raisings are really are especially nice today because it's a guide run. Uh, so you know if I can have all the eggs in my best yet, and I don't have to like <laughs> repeat this, that would be great. Alright, so rare. And as a reminder on war, you want to keep your chrono ran until you know for sure nothing's gonna happen. So I'm just gonna wait for the rear. Uh, the boss of this set is actually kind of easy. Uh, because it's like the only boss where the HP is, is fairly balanced, so we're not going to have to fight this for like 10 minutes, like we've had the last few bosses. Is this relative? I mean... Well, yeah, I, I guess you... Cause, but I mean, Twister is like... 
You can't really die to Twister unless you're just not paying attention, right? Because like they even go away before the the whole mess with the circles. Like it's a one shot, but not really a one shot I'm scared about. Like you would only die to this if you were not paying attention. Or if you don't know it's coming. Like I, I definitely I definitely have way more odds of dying on floor 20 than floor 40. Because floor 20 with the cone, sometimes I have like you know a brain fart and I'm like I know it's coming, but I do it super wrong. But like floor 40, I don't really think you can mess up that much. So yeah, by the way, the way I handle these guys, because they push you back, like I said, is you just want to fight them in the old way, but you face their back. You, fo you face your back towards the, the wall, right? Because if you face your wall towards the room, then you're going to get pushed in the room. Okay, let's kill the sword guy. One, probably the last time we get to showcase what he does. So four is front, and we go away from front. And the other move is uh, the point blank. So when it's four, you go away from the front, and when it's the other move, you go away from it. Like that. And well. Alright, so Twin Tanya clone, I believe this one's called. Uh, not a hard boss at all. You just gotta know the mechanics. Uh, we, I did explain them at the beginning of the set, but uh, I'll show them as I'm doing them. Did I check this? Probably. Alright, if you had three Demi Clown, you could use one on this boss, but th this is like the only boss on the entire place that feels like you kill it fast, even without clone, so... For this one, it's not really a big deal. So this guy, he's gonna do something called Twister. When he does Twister, you wanna just basically keep moving because it's gonna put a landmine under you. Which will one-shot you if you get hit by it. Like if you if you stand there, it's gonna one-shot you. So this is the setup of the mechanic. You're gonna see there's one straight line that like from the wall to the middle is safe. You just wanna spot that. Then he's gonna do four puddles on you. You just wanna uh, put them somewhere. After that, he's gonna go mid. And you just wanna like go towards the, the path that's clear and let, let it push you there like that. If you do mess up and hit the puddles, it's gonna put a wind uh, wind dot on you, so it's not the end of the world, but... So Twister, just keep moving. Now he's gonna do something tricky, he only does it once per fight. He's gonna do another squall, which is the AoE puddles, but he's gonna do them only on you. Then he's gonna fly. He's gonna go somewhere in the arena. Okay, so there. So he's gonna in a straight line do a new week. But he's gonna put he's gonna put a, a landmine under you at the same time. See? So if you're not moving during this part, you're gonna die in one shot. That's the that's the part that you have to know. You have to know this. And then he does the same thing. He's gonna do twister. He's just gonna make sure you're moving. Then you're gonna do this, you wanna see what line where it's safe, it's this one. Then you just wanna like, there's, I'm sure there's uptime optimization, but you just wanna make sure you got your photo somewhere. And you just position yourself. I, I believe you cannot arms line this by the way. So I arms line there, it didn't work, yeah. So you need to eat the neck back here. Twister, keep moving. 
By the way, this uh, this landmine, this twister he puts, is always going to go away when this thing is set. Like, it goes away before this part, so you don't have to care about it about it during this part at all. Just uh, a tip. If you accidentally pull a puddle in the middle, like that, it's actually going to go away before you have to move, so you can just... It's gonna look scary, but you can actually like move, so... We'll start keep moving. And then it's just a repeat of this forever. So we see what line is what line is the good one, which is the one in the back. And we're just gonna try to drop the puddles anywhere that's not metal, preferably. Like uptime be cursed. Your uptime should not matter at all there, so. Then we position there. Same thing. And then one more twister. So th this is not a hard boss at all. Probably one of the easiest ones there. You just gotta make sure you're not sleeping at the wheel, and that you know like well, how it works. But there is there is honestly no excuse that you should die to a twister. Like there's no excuse. Alright, and that's the floor 40 boss. So I'd say now. 41 is where everything one-shots you. Like, from now on, I, I did say you should consider that you should assume everything's gonna one-shot you up to 40. It wasn't true, like, 100%. There's some things on one-shot you, but now it's true. Like, now everything's a one-shot. Like, the, the non-one-shots are the exception to the rule, and I don't even know them, so... Is there a dead wall in this fight? I believe the wall around... I've never gotten it. But I believe it puts a wind dot on you. It's trying to put a powerful uh, damage over time effect, but it's, I don't think it's a death wall. How much time it takes to clear 21, 100 DPS solo in average? So my runs on average are 8 hours, 30 minutes. Uh, so it's about... Like maybe 7 hours? To do 21 30 uh 21 uh, 100 yeah so like it should be around seven hour on a dps all right uh, i'm going to take a short three minute break because i want to get some more water to uh so my throat doesn't start hurting in like a few hours so i'll be running a quick ad during my absence sorry about that and once i come back here we're entering 41 i'll be right back
I am back. Sorry about that. Thank you for being patient. Alright. So we're entering 41 now. Let's see what's up. So it's kind of hard. Uh, Mage's Guide is great, by the way. I highly recommend you won't use it if you're climbing yourself. But it's hard to... It doesn't have much pictures yet. Or they're kind of blurry. Uh, try my best, though. So 41. There's going to be a lot of dangerous monsters there. And I will show all of them in-game, of course. But just to go briefly uh, over them. Berter is like a, a really fat blue guy with blue horns. Uh, yes, I can link it, sure. There you go. So, Berter does like a, a circle AoE that you can dodge easily. But then, if you're behind him after that, he's going to do an untelegraph AoE behind himself. You gotta watch out for that. Uh, head Tet is like a scorpion that doesn't do much worth to mention. Sprite in doesn't matter. Uh, Archeron, also known as a Giga Shad, because he looks like a Giga Shad. Uh, he's going to do a move called uh, Quake that you must interrupt or line of sight or you're dead. Uh, we'll, we'll get to show that plan either in the run. Kelpie is another uh, tricky monster. He's going to do a charge on you. And then right after the charge, he's going to uh, do a Niwi that is too fast to react. But you can actually run away from it as long as you were already running when the charge happens. You can also stun it or line of sight the charge. Uh, Grubu is going to suck you in. After the suck in, he's going to do a frontal cone, like in the direction the way he was facing you. So you just need to move behind after the suck. Uh, Gelato has an enrage, like the the little turrets we saw earlier, is an enrage, an enrage when he's low health. You can LOS it or kill it. Uh, the big wolf, uh, the whore hound, same as the. Archeron, he has like a, a move that you must LOS or you're going to die. You cannot interrupt this one. This one you must line of sight or you're going to die. Mudman doesn't do anything and uh, neither does this guy. Actually, this boss is involved though. This boss, one of my favorite bosses actually. Uh, let's check it out. So this is like a, a chimera. This is a Garm, but boss version. This boss has a lot of RNG. He, I don't think he follows like a set pattern. Or what he does. So it's basically... So if you've ever fought Chimeras, there's, they have like two things, right? Like they have the Dragon's Voice, which is a donut, a, a thunder move that's a donut. And then they have Ram's Voice, which is a, an ice move that's a point blank AoE. And that's... You just gotta remember that thunder is a donut. And then ice is point blank. That, that's you gotta remember these two things because it's important so when you're fighting this monster this boss yeah he's doing his moves are i don't know if there's a pattern i feel like there's no pattern but he's gonna like show them in almost random orders so one of them he's gonna do something called sound of thunder and ice or sound of ice and thunder and basically he's gonna do the, the mechanics in the order of of this like the order that they're listed in so like right there sound of thunder and ice means it will be thunder then ice thunder is a donut ice is a point blank so this is in and out so you're gonna see me there move in and then move out so he's going to do thunder there and then you move out right, so that's one of the mechanics another one and they're always like kind of like that he also has a move called like right breathed cold and i believe like left breathed thunder or something it's just like right or left you want to be on the opposite okay, this move this is exactly what we saw but he's gonna like do a charge too so you gotta be far enough for the line to become purple that means you're far enough then he's going to do the moves in the order that they are listed so this time it's thunder was cold so it's do it's thunder then cold which means it's donut then ice which means it's in and out so there we're going to go in, then out. Uh, and I believe that's the mechanics, pretty much. Yeah, okay. And the last movie does, but this one doesn't really matter. Kako Funny, he's going to summon like a lightning orb. And you just got to make sure that you're far away from it. Uh, so just keep running and, uh, you know, screw your uptime. You don't. You should not have uh, to worry about uptime anyway. So you're just going to run away from it until it despawns. The only tricky part is that he always does a left 
a left or right breath right after this orb. So you can't be like in Narnia when it's over. And that's it for this boss. Uh, very nice to use a steel on this boss too. Because if you fail the mechanics, then the steel might let you survive. So anyway, let's go in. We have a, a lot of monsters. You can stay in the it box going around it for uptime. Maybe you can, but uh, I should not. Uh, I'm not going to care about uptime in my case because we don't need to. Time should not matter until 61 on tank. So we, should, we really don't want to worry about uptime right now. Just trust me, you're not going to lose this place because of uptime. You're going to lose because. Well, because of uptime, but in the opposite way. Like, you're gonna lose because you tried to get uptime. There's way too many risky things around. Alright, so lots of monsters that do nothing, but there's lots that do things. This one only does a circle AoE. Also, we should have food. Please, eat the food. Alright. Good song, by the way. We like, we like to call these layouts the rave caves. Because it's like the PTD caves. But they're like rainbow colored. Like there's there's colors of every kind there. I know, like we had a yellow cavern, a yellow, a blue cavern. There's like a purple one, a pink one, a red one. Like there's a blue one there. Alright, so here we. You cannot read a single one of these AoEs. All of them will one-shot you. All of them. No exception. I At this point, if you pull multiple things, and you're still not at the point where you're comfortable with the monsters, I highly recommend you witching. Because there's too many things that you cannot react to. Like, you need to know they're coming. Okay, let's pull this. This guy is actually tricky. Uh, so as long as you're in front of him, he doesn't do anything. He's gonna do like a move, a new E. So you're gonna be tempted to dodge behind him, but careful. When you're behind, he's gonna do something called elbow drop. This, this will one shot you. So you gotta make sure you move back if you see the if you're behind him. You can stun him, by the way. So don't do the mistake of stunning and going behind. Because if you do that, he's gonna do elbow drop on you. Yeah, wrestling move that does like quadruple your HP, so he's a pretty tough boy. By the way, this is day 5, I believe. They sit for day 5 of the Deep Dungeon. I think we know almost everything. At least concerning the monsters. So I'm, I'm trying to explain all that we know. There might be like things we don't know, know yet. But I don't think there's anything dangerous that we don't know yet. So I'm trying to explain all that I know. This guy will do circle. And then watch out. Because after that he's going to do a large, a large cone. So you definitely want to be close to him. So this guy again, circle, which you're gonna be tempted to dodge behind. And then when you're behind, he's gonna do elbow drop. So a way, you can either like bait the elbow, like see it cast and then move, or you can actually just move back before he does it. If you do that, then he won't do it. Like for example, if I just move like 
right away, then he's not gonna do it, right? Because I'm back in front. Does EO also have the extra mines on 71 plus? Yep. EO has more mines in general. I, I feel like there's more mines on the ground for each set. Alright, this guy again. So it's gonna be circle into big cone. Do I like Warrior more than Paladin so far? No, I like Paladin more. Well, I, I, to play, I mean. I think strength-wise, they're pretty similar, but Warrior is actually helping me. Warrior is better for the stream for me to talk because then I can I don't have to focus on my rotation like whatsoever. So I'm gonna have once because I'm sitting at three, and uh, I'm also going to strength because I'm sitting at three. No reason not to. All right, there's a, a dangerous monster. So on tank, you have a little bit of a privilege. On these guys, you can interrupt their uh, kill move. So there's two ways to do that. I'm going to show the way if you don't have an interrupt first. So, oh yeah, first there's a bait crown, so don't be running around. After that, there's a quake. So you can either interrupt it or you can LOS. So if you run behind a wall, this will not kill you. Then don't forget, he does, he does a wide comb. So you know, you gotta make sure you're close to him. And then once we find another one, I'll show you the interrupt way, which is easier, but also easier to die to because like you forgot your interrupt is not ready or something. So you gotta, you gotta know both ways. Yeah, I mean, Paladin was definitely better for uptime. But the, the, the rotation is harder than water, for sure. So, circle, and then we can move back instantly or wait for the elbow. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, no chance of killing yourself with primary run. That, that skill is trickier than I thought. When I before I went into warrior, because I, by the way, I've never cleared warrior. This is my first try on warrior, and I, in fact, the first time I played with level nine warrior, I didn't realize this would be like so dangerous. Ah, so we got a serenity, so we can remove the debuff there. We're gonna pre alteration, we can just use it. Uh, Spriggan doesn't do. Spriggan on a tank doesn't really matter. All he's gonna do is a uh, ace buff on himself after a little bit. I don't even think he does any AoEs outside of that. We have seen everything on this floor. There's a, a lot more twitchy monsters on this floor, on this set, don't worry. They're coming. Uh, pretty unlucky, by the way, on the dummy clowns this run. Much more unlucky than the average run. Only four I've seen so far. 
We got mimics there, so the alteration, as a reminder, would make a room. We'll make a room either full of mimics or full of corrigents, and this time we got mimics. As a tank, that doesn't change your life too much, because you know you're still gonna fight them anyway. Uh, though they tend to be they tend to be tankier than normal monsters, but it's usually worth it anyway. Because they give you more chest. More chest, so. Oh, so there's two patrols there. It's always nice if you can angle your camera in a way to see patrols coming, because then you don't get caught by surprise, like I would have right there. I'm gonna shoot the interrupt. Uh, so when they do the quake, you can actually interrupt it. I would still like be near a wall just in case, but uh, it's enough. Well, you can just interrupt this. But I, I stress that I would still try to be near a wall just in case something weird happens. Like for example, you interrupt, you actually like, you know, just used it on a Mimic. And it's not ready or something like that. Because like for example, there I, I was fighting the Mimic, right? And then I pulled this guy after. What if my interrupt was like 10 seconds scroll down when this quake happened? Do you really think I would have noticed? Probably not. And so in that case, I could have used the wall as an emergency. No. Oh yeah, very good question. Interrupt cannot miss on blind. It can never miss. Very good question. Yeah. We're gonna interrupt again. And yeah, I don't remember who pointed out I had zero storms by floor, like 30 something, but there we go, they're all back. Storms are not rare at all. Like, in fact, when they're at three, I, I probably not in that, because like doing storm pulls is risky, so I don't really think you should go for it too much. But when they're at three, I like in my own runs, I tend to use them. I tend to use it on the next floor if I'm at three, because they're that common. Elbow drop, careful. And this one's a proximity monster, that's why he pulled. So we got a free witch chain, might as well use it. So you may you may have noticed on tank, we don't really use steals. That is exactly what it is. They're, they're just not useful on tank. Uh, I would. I honestly mostly just use my steals on the bosses, so I can maybe like mess up a mechanic and uh, survive. But I don't. But I don't know which mechanics on bosses are one shots and which ones are not. So here's another advantage of playing tank: is that we don't need to care about no item at all. 
On DPS, you don't really need to care about it either. But well, we have a synergy there, so who cares? But yeah. Like the... The, the no item doesn't matter on DPS too much, but it truly doesn't matter on tank. Like on tank, it will never matter. Alright, so we're gonna interrupt this one. Oh, so there's two there. So let's actually line outside this one then. So that's why I kept the wall closed. Because then, by doing this, I keep my interrupt for like an emergency interrupt, right? Let's see, there's three patrols, so... Well, let's wait. And now let's pull you. So remember, you're gonna do a bait crown, so don't do too far. And now this one, if we want to be ultra safe again, we can LOS this. Or we can interrupt. Let's interrupt. Alright, so the Kelpie. Two way, three ways to handle it on tank. Three ways. So first way is you just do it normally. So when when you pull it, he's gonna do like a move on you, a gallop, a charge. When he does this, keep moving. Because as soon as he finishes it, he's gonna do like this, which uh, will kill you. That's one way. And then we might see him do it again. Yeah, so you can stun. That's another way. If you stun, uh, it will not do like the one-shot move. Like, it, it won't charge, but it also won't do the one-shot. Then there's a third way to do it. This one is the scruff, the scruffed way, but it still works. You can line upside the charge altogether. If he doesn't get to do the charge, then you, you will not get the one-shot move. So if you want a point of reference for dummy clone, I have actually, I actually have one because of Zarin. Uh, the the floor 70 boss, I did it on Paladin with full strength uptime. So I, I trained I trained the entire time and it took it took 11 minutes. Zarin did the same thing with a strength, but Onion Knight and it took him four minutes. So Onion Knight made the fight go from 11 to 4. Right, back uh, elbow drop there. We, we've still not seen the uh, Onion Knight, by the way. What Onion Knight is, it's the third demi clone. Like, the first one is called Yune. Second is Dora. And third one is called Onion Knight. And the, the Onion Knight is the best one by far. So, like, it's the one you want to keep. It's the one you want to keep, if you find it. And preferably, you would find two before the end. Uh, if you don't, it's not the end of the world, but it really helps. So this guy doesn't do much, puts a stacking slow on you, that is like pretty small. Then after that you're gonna do a line anyway. Should be soon, there. It's, it's the attack speed slow, sorry, it's like GCD slow, not movement speed slow.
next floor. New play newish player like me need to spend weeks grinding to yeah yeah. I mean if you, but you're kind of in a weird situation because it's weird that a new player like knows about this content before they get to max level themselves. I guess through I guess because of streamers right? Because it is kind of popping off in the Final Fantasy XIV section right now. But yeah, you can practice in QTD MLI, and I would say even they're pretty different to be fair, but they're harder overall. So. No, I, as a warning, it's I, it's very possible to like EO, but dislike Beauty and even I or vice versa. Like they're, they're that different. Alright, so there's a patrol, so we can stun that guy. That's what we're gonna do there. Though keep in mind that I will probably have to deal with it a second time, but the second time I can run this way. So. Uh, or maybe not. Right. So Spriggan Sprig does nothing. Oh, there's another one. So what do you do if there's a patrol and you're kind of in a bad spot and you're, you're always about to get invaded? Uh, running to a room is usually viable if you're war in full HP because there's not really anything that could kill you. At worst, you're going to hit a luring trap and you're going to witch it. Alright, Gubu is dangerous. Very dangerous. He's going to suck you in. And then you need to move behind. And look, this floor is tricky because this floor is no knockback. So in this floor specifically, he, he's, he's, he does the animation of suck in, but he doesn't actually suck you in. So you gotta pay attention to it with the noise. It's the noise that I use there. So he's gonna do it maybe again. No, he's not. But this is like a tricky floor because he's not going to actually suck you in. He's only going to like do the animation. Ah, yeah, good point. Very good point for Warrior, actually. Yeah, when you're under inner release, you have, like, not bad immunity. That's a good point. I didn't even remember that. Machinist, I think, is, be is way better than Warrior if you know what everything does already. Or if you're, like, really quick to learn and you don't really need to, like, experience it yourself. And I think Machinist is better than Warrior. Warrior is, like, better to prod. And then I think once you have, like, a few attempts, like, two or three, if at this point you're still not clear, then I think it's better to switch to Machinist. That's the way I would uh, present it. Because the thing with Machinist is that you're going to need some kind of, like, a little bit of potions. On Warrior, you don't need any. Because that, here's the way EO works. It doesn't really matter. It honestly doesn't really matter what job you do it on. Because I, like as soon as you know all the mob mechanics, that's it. Like that's that's the big difficulty. Like everything else is like is is not a big deal compared to that. But like anyone, any of the people that care on machines right now, 
I bet you that like 90% of them, they could play on, on Dancer and Clear 2, right? Like it doesn't really, as long as they know how to play the job. Oh, so the key's there. That's good. Alright, so suck in into... Into front drone, so move behind. Yeah, I did the same as you, Freddy, and... Uh, and I ended up there on my, on my Paladin anyway. First, I'm gonna stun there. By the way, this set is the first set where I would say... No, no, that's not true. I'd say starting from 31, you should raise if you've never seen it. Okay, so there we're just going to do it the normal way. So we just run away when he does this. Uh, these guys, they do, they do, they, I said they do nothing, that's not true, they do something. Uh, it's honestly way spookier than it actually is. So, this guy, he does like a combination move every, uh, I don't know, every 30 seconds or so. It puts a vol on you when you're out of combat, that's it. So, we're just gonna keep killing things. So line A we come in. Yeah, well, I mean, I if I could, I would raising every set, starting from thirty one, but I can't. So, um, but they're all dangerous. Like all of them can kill you easily. All these guys does when you pull him, by the way, is line you. So. Uh, yes, I can show you how to LOS the wolves. It's the same as the guys I LOS before. The guys with the big sword. Uh, like Archeron, I think they're called. Uh, I would show you, but I've seen no wolves yet. <laughs> but yes, I will. If I see one, I will definitely show it. Alright, Mudman doesn't do anything. Uh, unless you're fighting two monsters at N+. Plus. But he does like an AoE slow. But like E himself doesn't do any AoE. So it's kind of whatever. But if you're fighting multiple monsters, this... Uh, this is probably like witching that you need to use there. Well. Time down on 99 on Samurai. You for to Liturgy before Storm Play was dragging a sphinx. A sphinx. A sp oh, yeah. Sorry, how the hell do I say that? A sphinx? A sphinx? I think you said it's faints, right? And it one shot you with swing cost so much time then. <laughs> it's kinda of funny because if you fire out to liturgy, then you probably die in like two seconds after the E we uh showed up to. Alright, so we got a new batch of monsters there. Super unlucky with the oh there's I saw wolf there. Super unlucky with the demi clone, by the way. Faints. Faints, okay. Alright, gelato blows up. Uh, this guy has like an enrage when he's low, but he has a, a point blank AoE that's kind of fast when he's not uh, doing it, so careful. Right, so when he's low, he's gonna do a, he's gonna blow up. So you want to make sure there's something kind of wall nearby that you can hide behind, like this one right there. You can kill it in time. 
Like right now I can because he's doing this cast, but I should I would still never pull these guys without a wall nearby. Like uh okay, well the wolf's coming. So the wolf is also LOS. So you wanna pull the wolf near a wall of any kind. Wolf actually does no mechanics outside of the LOS thing, so you just want you just wanna pull it and fight near a wall. As soon as you saw the cast start, it's called Abyssal Try, I think. Then you go high beyond a wall. Like that. And it's gonna LOS. Now we're gonna do something that I don't recommend. I would highly recommend you would you should witch in there, definitely. Uh, but you you know you can actually we can actually do it like that for now. But I would LOS this 100%. Sorry, I would witch in this 100% if I was new. Because they will repeat the mechanic. You don't you don't want to get overwhelmed? We're gonna do the thing again. We'll just wait for it. There it is. Then we LOS. Yeah, the Kelpies, it's really fast. So the Kelpies, it's why I don't like to LOS them. It's like my least favorite thing to do. I prefer to just respect the, the charge and do it normally. Or stun. Alright, so let me show this guy when he actually blows up. So this guy has an enrage that we didn't see earlier, but I'll show it this time. It's not a time enrage, by the way. It's enrage when he's low HP. So it should be around there. That's it. Alright, so explosion. This is a big uh, AoE you die. But you can LOS. Do you stun Kelpy before or after their charge? You must stun them when the charge cast is happening. I, I think if you stun them after, uh, they're going to like get unstunned after the, the stun and then they're going to like do the one shot move. So you gotta stun them during the charge cast time. Yes, you can just run away from it. Alright, so there he's gonna suck me in, then do a one-shot frontal crow move. Yes, if you're if you're like if he's doing the charge on you, as long as you're moving like away from it, it it's going to escape your the move. So So we're out. I'm gonna pull this to show it off. So that guy only does one thing. It's like a circle he will himself. It's kind of big though, so watch out. And it's pretty fast. As a reminder, all of these moves are one shot. You cannot survive them on a screen ball. Is it actually an X AoE? I remember watching my team run and it looked like a pretty massive AoE when you killed two or two. You mean the Kelpie uh, bloody puddle thing? It's a pretty big AoE, yeah. It's like, it doesn't have a telegraph, but it's like an AoE, an AoE around it. Alright, let's just leave. Uh, let's use an F1 because we have three. Let's also use a strength uh, a strength because we have three. I honestly, if you use your strength F1 and flies whenever they are three, I don't even think your time is gonna matter until seven. That's the second dread we found. Oh, free fortune. Oh yeah, yeah. The animation looks like an X. I think it's a circle. I've not, I've not really tested it out, but I think it's a circle. Right, so we're gonna LOS this guy again, or at least we're gonna set ourselves up for a possible LOS.
we should do it next hit. But in that case, we can kill it in time. How many sustainings do you think are needed, is needed for a full ninja run? I'd say if you start with 200, you can, you can have enough for the entire run unless you chug them like really hard. Because you should only really need start to start potions from like 61, 51 ish. Alright, so let's get ready to LOS in case we don't kill this in time, which I don't think we do. Yeah. Maybe we would. Maybe we would kill it in time, but uh, you know, I've just. I've, saw, I've seen Angelus lose a run to this, so. You know, your your two seconds of uptime are not worth uh, your life. No mud man, as a reminder does nothing alone he only slows you but he doesn't have a knee himself so it is only dangerous if you're fighting other things so by the way i still not really use a liturgy but as a reminder liturgy is really good if there's some monsters that you think like are going to give you trouble on a set and then you you like you want to see their mechanic but before you actually like you know fight them for real then liturgy is great for that because then it's trying to like show their mechanics in slow-mo I gotta say, I so I, I did say one of the reasons that warrior that I think warriors are good broad choice is because the rotation is so simple, and I do confirm because I've never played warrior at max level before, and it's, the rotation is still like I don't even have to look at my my bar or all I'm doing. So this is a very good job to prod the mechanics on the monsters. So we got a storm there. Like okay, a storm is dangerous straight up. Like you, it's it's really a dangerous thing to do. But you can make it work. But you need to know what the monsters do like very well. So let's say we use a safety on this floor to make sure there's no more traps. Then what we would do is we would pull like monsters that we know are like quote unquote easy. Like so that that's monsters that don't like just kill you in one shot. In like you know in something that you can't dodge. Let's not go too hard. But let's say like for example, I don't know, let's say these two guys. And then let's say the two mudmans, you know, right there. So that's the way you want to do a storm. Is you're gonna pull all the easy monsters to you. And then you're going to storm as soon as they're all on you. Because you wanna do that so they're like, you know, in combat and they don't heal their damage. So that's the way you do like a, a storm. We don't need to do these yet, but it's not a bad idea to practice. And then uh, often you can kill like one more monster that's low HP effort. So. But I highly recommend if you're gonna storm that you combine it with a safety or a side. Because it's like it's re a really bad time to worry about traps, so. And yeah, I agree. I think the hardest part of Warrior is not killing yourself with Primal Ren. But you have 30 seconds to use your Primal Ren, right? So... 
The way I like to do it is I like to do it after seeing a telegraph. So that's the last floor. We're gonna get to show another wolf. Easier for you to kill yourself with Ifrit. Yeah, to be fair, my summoner run did die to uh, summons too. I remember at some point I did a poll and there was so much shit in my screen, I have no idea what was going on and I died. So we have two wolves there. What do you do if there's multiple patrols and you feel like they would be a problem? Uh, depend on the situation. In that situation, we can be patient and see like where they're going. So, you know, this one's going away. So we can actually kill this one first, and then we will we will deal with the other one when uh, he comes back. So LOS. We eye behind the wall. Uh, I are, when you're doing line of sight, by the way, I recommend that you do not trust rooms, but you trust always. So I would. And to explain it better, I would not trust, like, if the monster is there, I would not trust the crystal. Like, I would not think that this is uh, gonna save me. But whenever there's, like, a hallway, like, a wall, like that, then I would trust. Like, this, I trust. But when it's within a room, don't trust the rooms. Like, just trust the hallways. Are you love to rewatch this one in its entirety? Are you gonna post it on YouTube? Yes! In fact, the point of this of this run is that I'm going to put it on YouTube after with timestamps for all the explanations for... You know, I, I'm giving like explanations before the floors and for the floors and the bosses, there will be timestamps for all of them. Uh, so let's line up slide this. And what I recommend people do in the video too is uh, I would love if people, they also put timestamps in the comments, right? Like for example, let's say I'm fighting this guy at, you know, like at uh, 3 hour 55 minutes, then I'd like someone in the comment to be like 3 hour 55 minutes, Orthos or Hound. And then we just have a bunch of comments like that. That'd be great. That'd be my, my dream. So. What's the recommended job for solo push? I recommend Warrior personally. I think to prod. I think Warrior to prod is going to give you like, it's going to. Uh, free up the most space in your brain to learn mechanics and then once you've learned the mechanics uh, Oh nice interesting we're gonna make and a monster shouldn't be that bad Once you've learned the mechanics, then I think you can switch to the your favorite DPS job The thing with DPS is you're going to need a little bit of potions So it's nice because you're gonna be able to get your potions on warrior Now, by the way, every time I pull two monsters by accident, I do the fight, but there is no reason you don't witch it. Like, your witch chains are used for this. So if you feel like you're gonna get overwhelmed, it's way better that you witch chain now, than wait. Now, you know, how, how would I describe it? Like, if you've got a bad feeling in your stomach that this pull will go bad, then it's probably time to witch chain. Because if you wait for it to go bad, it's not, I'm not even sure the witch chain's gonna save you. And let me tell you, you're gonna feel way less stupid if you die with zero witch chain in your bag on floor 86 than if you die on floor 54 with like three witch chains and three of every single commander in your bag. Like you're gonna feel like a dumbass if that happens. So uh, I recommend you just use your pumps as you see as you as you see fit. Especially witching. Even raising. If you've never seen a set. If you if you've never seen a set above 30, I, I think you should raise the set. There, there's too many things that are dangerous there. Because it's not the same as raids, don't forget. In raids, if you mess up, you lose like what? seven minutes maybe at most maybe five minutes on average if you mess up there you're going to lose like five plus hours of your time right
Uh, so we are on the bus. We are on the bus. Thank you for the follows, guys. So what I would do on the bus, I have only two demi clones still. In this case, I would probably use a use a strength on the bus to do it. I still don't know exactly the kill time on the buses. Because it's still, you know, we're still not even a week in. Uh, so the way I like to do math for the bus, my, my personal like strategy when I'm trying to figure out if I have enough time to do a bus, is I'll see, I'll wait until the bus is at 50%. Well, also, let, let me explain it, because it's a multiple part thing. I'll explain when I get to the bus. Have you ever been a discussion in the Discord if Gulo's swipe is a bug or not? There's no way it's not a bug, right? That looked so messed up when it happened. Oh, we have a free strain. These birds always jump scare you, same. <laughs> It looks like you're getting hit by some one-shot AOE, but... Alright, so the way I do the bosses, if I'm not sure if I'm gonna kill in time, is I write down in the chat the kill, the, the time I'm going to pull it at. So let's say 13... 15. And then when the boss is at 50%, I'll see if there's more than 50% of the time left. If there is, I'm fine. If there's not, I'm not fine. That's my strategy. Okay, so what I like to do on the bosses, personally, is I like to use a steal. Also, you could totally use a demi clone there, it would be fine. So this boss has a lot of mechanics, we gotta be very careful. So this is in and out, because it's thunder and ice and there's no charge. So this is in and out. Alright. Then this is left, so we go right. So this boss, like I said, I don't know if there's a pattern. It, look, it just looks like he's spamming mechanics when I'm doing it. In random orders. So that's the chart, and it's called Thunder. So this is going to be out, because cold is the point blank. And then it's going to be in, because it's Thunder. So we're going. Right, so we're staying left. Alright, this is a lightning bolt. I have no idea if you get one shot if you get hit by this. I don't want to find out, be my guest. So what I like to do there is I just like to respect the content and uh, chide physically in the, the widest circle I can find. So it's going to be there. I pop sprint and I just chide. Maybe you can get a GCD or two sometimes, but I don't like doing it because then he does a left or right move. Right at him. So you got to be somewhat close to it when he does that. Now we're just gonna wait to see what mechanics are coming. So this is charge, thunder is in, then it's out. So we go away, we go in, then we go out. So this is left, so we're right. I don't know what's next. So this is no charge, thunder eye, so it's in, out. I don't know what's next. But it's thunder, so perfect time to do my uh, animation luck thing. Uh, we're doing fine on time, by the way, because it's at 50%. And it took three minutes, so it would die with like six minutes left at this point. So yeah, we're fine. So don't go too far because he's gonna do left or right. So he's doing left, we go right. All right, keep your eyes out. Could be anything. So this is charge. So we go away. Then it's thunder cold. So it's in out. So in. Then we go out. Left. So 
So I got my inner release. I'm not going to animation lock myself though. I'll wait for a mechanic before I do it. So no charge, thunder and ice. So that's in and out. Oh, you know what? Maybe he actually always does the same order mechanics. I feel like it's always the same order. Let's see if it's uh, the same order for the third time in a row. Alright, so we're gonna respect the content, keep guiding. Oh yeah, I think he always does the same order mechanics. Because now we're gonna do left or right breath. Yeah, so now we go left. After that, he does the one move without the charge, I think. No, he does a charge. Okay, so that's in out. Well, never mind. So Thunder Call, that's in out. So he does switch it up. In. Out. Left, so we go right. Try to not be inside the hitbox. Thunder and I, so that's in and out. Try not to be the inside the hitbox, by the way. Because if he does a charge, it can, hard, it can be hard to see if you don't see like the line on you. You can technically know with the cast name, but for me, I need to see the line before I, I realize that it is. Oh, and it should die very soon. Uh, so that boss actually kind of squishy. Uh, luckily, so. So yeah, this boss, 440 and 450, I think you don't really need a Demi Club for that. Like, you can use it if you want. But these, they seem very, like, they're not HP sponges, like the, the rest we've got. Alright, so this set is, uh, done. So we're about 50% of the way there now. And, like, it's gonna get harder, but it's honestly not gonna get much harder. It's gonna be like this most of the run. It's going to be like this most of the run. Like, we're going to be doing fighting monsters that have one shot mechanics, and then there's a boss at the end. Has the rave god been kind to me so far? Yep. We have not gotten bad songs yet. All right. So, let's see in the next set. Uh, so, that's what we did. All right. This set has a very bad monster. There's a lot of people, by the way. Lots of people, they use a raising on this set. Like, the people that, like, they, they know all the mechanics already, right? Like, they, they no longer have a first-time set. A lot of people, they raise this set, 5160, because it's considered, like, one of the most easy set to die on. So just a heads up. I would definitely raising this if you've never seen this. Like, no question asked. So, there's a lot of monsters. Sprite. This is... If, you, if you've done the other deep dungeons, especially this one is tricky... This, this does nothing until you kill it. And when you kill it, it's gonna explode and, you know, one shot you. So you gotta make sure... It's not a big explosion, but it's like... It's an explosion. So you gotta be away from its its corpse, basically. It, it'll give you like three or four seconds to move. Okay, the Emir is like a giant slug. Uh, he's gonna do something called Ice Bites. Which is gonna put like five or six seconds of reflect damage on him. I think it's only auto attacks that get reflect, but I honestly recommend that you stop all actions. When it's up. Uh, Rockfin is a monster that does a move that you need to LOS or you're going to die. Uh, Yabi is Cherry. It's a patrol that will like slow you and then do a very quick circle on you after that. If you're moving already when it slows you, it's going to be fine. But luckily, the, the, it doesn't kill you if you get hit by the circle. It puts you at 1 HP, so you're going to have like a chance to heal. But still, I wouldn't really plan on getting it. Uh, Big Claw does a bit cone into nothing. But if you're behind, he's going to do like a, a move behind him. So just try to watch out for that. Zaratan is the most dangerous monster on this set, in my opinion. Uh, does a frontal, a huge frontal cleave, followed by a back cleave. Uh, in the same cast. So you gotta like move. Pain Ray is okay. It's gonna like jump on you and knock you back really far. Then it do a donut or a point blank. And Monk is 
not that bad. You just suck you in and then do an AoE, but as long as you're moving as he's doing it, then you're fine. Yeah, he can do the this guy. The Zaratan can do the Batley first. In a group, I've seen it. In solo, I've never seen it. Because I think the only way you would do it back first is if you stun it and you like intentionally go behind it. But I don't even know if you can stun it. Because he always does the first leaf in the direction of its target. Or like in the direction of a random party member, but you're alone, so. Uh, th these monsters, I will, don't worry, we're gonna pull like every single one. Because uh, there's a lot, of, a lot to say. Uh, and the boss is also tricky. By the way, the Ice Pites is like an eternal dilemma of like... An eternal discussion of like, can it reflect everything? Can it reflect physical? Can it reflect auto attacks? I don't know. I don't care. Personally, if when it when this buff grows up, I sheet my weapon away and I stop doing all actions, spells or not, uh, for 6 seconds. So, you know, the day I lose the run by 6 seconds, we can blame that, but I don't think it's possible to time out on this set. Alright, so this bus. Uh, a fat Guzu. He's gonna open he's gonna show you the mechanic, the main mechanic of the fight, luckily in the opener. It's eight swipes. He's gonna swipe four directions. And then after that he's gonna four is well, it's like eight directions. But it's two patterns of four. Uh so you just gotta make sure that you dodge it. I do I do this mechanic in a very weird way, by the way. The way I like to do it is I just go in the spot he always already swipe for every single swipe. And then I just try to pay attention to if he does a repeat, if he swipes the same spot twice, then I wait for the two strikes. Then he does he does like he does like three random moves between each uh octopole swipe mechanic. He does either that, which is a knockback, it's called like disorienting groan, or he does a swing, or he does a swipe. So there is a swipe, swipe in front, swipe your traded card, so he swipes in front. And the, the third one, which he's not going to do there, I think, is is a swing. Probably the most dangerous out of all the, the three. So Thunder Call. So that's when he starts doing like the, the mechanic for real. The way I like to do this is very specific. So the, the way the orb spawn is kind of a static position every time. But the boss will start his first swipe on your location. So what I like to do, personally, is I like to run to the orb that's like right there. So he always starts the swipes in the same light position relative to the orbs. And then I just do... So there I didn't do it, but it's, it's a new strat. Because I didn't do it yet in that VOD. So there I'm just going to look at the swipes. He's going to do four, so that's... Well, let me rewind a little bit. So he's going to do four, and the first one is going to start where you are. So all I look at is the first one. So first, so I know where the first one is, so of course I don't want to stand there. Then two, three, four. So I don't care about these. But then I'm going to look, is the fifth one a repeat of the fourth? So it is. So what I'm going to do is very simple. Because the fifth is a repeat of the fourth, I'm going to like go inside each, like, you know, I'm going to basically follow where he swipes. And then when he gets the repeat spot, I'll wait for him to do it twice. And then I'll move to this spot and never leave again. So that's like my way of doing the, one of the patterns. Uh, and then after this mechanic, he's simply going to do like two moves. He's going to be swing, do, sorry, he's going to do swing, swipe, or groan. This time he did swing. Uh, and I just want to see the second pattern. So here's would be, here's the mechanic again. So he does the same thing, he's got four swipes. Then the fourth one I checked, is it a repeat? In that case, the fifth one is not a repeat. So all I have to do there is follow the swipes as they happen. And you don't even have to think about any kind of pattern. So I'm going to like literally follow all the swipes. Now there is there is more optimal ways of doing this. But I like doing this strat because it's I don't need to learn the patterns. So that's my strat. Uh, this boss used to spook me a lot. I'm more confident at it now. Alright, uh, anyway, uh, bef the boss, I mean, the boss is something, but this set is really the monsters. No, the, it's just, uh, the, the reason I say there's a more optimal way is because this, the boss, the way he does it is 8 swipes, 
it's not true RNG. It's it's actually two patterns. So he does like well, it's one pattern. He does a pattern that I believe is like it's always top, bottom, right, left. I think. And then for the second part, you will either repeat this pattern or do the opposite. Uh, so you can technically know exactly where to move if you know the pattern, but I, I don't like learning the pattern. So personally, I just came up with that like uh, like almost on the fly strat. And also you can tank one or two swipes on tank very easily. In fact, I'll show you like the brain death strat I figured out for tank. Because there's a brain dead way to do the swipes on tank, but I don't know if you can do it for every swipe. Alright. So lots of uh, dangerous monsters on this set. Lots of them. So, we're setting at 3 strength, I'm gonna use 1. Because setting at 3 serves no purpose. For the weak palms, like sitting at three of the strong palms, like Dread, like Storm, Liturgy, like okay, for at least until the like middle high set. But sitting on three strength, no, it's not really useful. Alright, so I already saw a shard somewhere. Shard is probably the top priority. So this guy, you must LOS. Or you're going to die. Uh, it can be hard in the cavern, by the way, to find like a LOS spot. This will work, though. So he's gonna do like a move on me, a, char a charge thing. You must uh, hide when does this. So you you must have a wall be between you and E, or you are going to die. Alright, there's a lot of monsters with me. So this one, don't get tricked. He's gonna do a fairly fast EV on himself. Then after that, he's gonna do a fairly fast EV on you. So like where, wherever you are, he's gonna do like this thing. Douse. And it's they're both are pretty fast, so just be ready. No, you cannot stun. You cannot stun the shark. So get ready, AoE on M. And then AoE on me. Alright, so let's pull the sprite next. So the sprite, like I said, doesn't do anything until he's dead. And when he's dead is when he's uh well is when he does his thing. Did I test arms line on Mimic? Yep, yeah, it, it works. It actually works on the girl Mimics, interestingly enough. Okay, so watch out. When, and, and I'm telling you, you must remember this, because you will die to this. When this guy is dead, he's gonna explode. See? So he's dead, but he's gonna explode. And I'm telling you, you're going to die to this so much. Like... <laughs> This is by far what's killed me the most. Oh, so interesting. We got an alluring there. Well, that's gonna happen sometime. You're gonna hit traps. Highly recommend you witching, unless you know like exactly what the monster's gonna do. And if you witching, I recommend you single target something. So we're gonna do that. And single target what you think is the most threatening monster. Alright, so this, because, so this is the most threatening. Emir is the most threatening, so we'll respect it. So, okay, when that move comes out, deal it charge. You stop all actions. I stop all actions. And then when the buff goes away, you can resume attack. You can also stun this uh, cast. So when he cast it again, I'll try to stun. Which should be around now. Okay, so if you stun the cast of this, you can actually, like, well, attack, right? 
But the, be careful because it's it's a very fast chest. Yeah, Dora Petrify, I believe, also stops explosion sometime. But you can you cannot rely on Petrify uh, from Dora or anything. <laughs> it's too like uh, weird. All right, so you don't blow up. Don't forget. Oh yeah, that's gonna happen sometimes. You're gonna step on trap, even though you're arching the walls. You're still going to step on trap sometimes. It's kind of ironic because there's a safety in that chest. So the key's open right now. We should just leave. Uh, let me just check this chest. You know, I like watchers, but yeah, we should have just left there. I, I would really not explore once the key's open. I would just leave every time. If you're just trying to clear at least. I don't know exactly the the reflect what kills you for it. I think it's only physical or only like I think magical works. Like you can still use magical abilities against it. But personally I, I use no actions when it's up. Because here's here's what I'm scared is gonna happen if I use magic actions. I'm scared that uh my guy's gonna like you no know, boot slap during the spells and then die because if you if that happens then you're gonna die get reflected 300 key damage all right this guy i can pull him I can pull him this guy actually does nothing only does a cone you only have to dodge this Ah, so there's a shark. What we can do there is hide in that little path, and the shark should see us. It should not see us or see us so late that we can pull it after. But yeah, it didn't see us. So now we're gonna LOS uh, around this wall. There's another shark. Uh, don't forget that we have to make sure we are near a wall for the LOS because he's gonna do it again, so let's not go too far. There it is. And uh, as I said, it's way better to kill the patrols right now than leave them alive. So let's just kill this one as well. Size really good. So that's the guy that does a uh, circle on himself, then on me. He's going to do it on me. Size really good, because uh, remember it shows you traps, also shows you the minimap, so you know exactly where the chest will be located. And as a, remind, uh, as a reminder, landmines are do damage to you, but also enemies, so they're nice to get quick kills. 
Now, I would say in the previous deep, deep dungeons, I wouldn't really recommend going for landmines, uh, like just for fun, because it can be kind of risky. But on tank, with the damage output of things, I would just say, like, go for it. Because, I mean, if you have a defensive and a shield or something, there's really nothing that's going to kill you. Like, just straight up. You just gotta make sure you respect the UEs, right? But like auto damage, uh, auto attack damage wise, it's perfectly fine to step on the one mine as long as you're full HP and there's not like, you know, more than three monsters on. Excluding two monsters that I will cover later. If you reveal the map with a side, does that still reveal the... Does that, does that still give you a points? Yes, it does. You get a 2500 point bonus. gonna blow up don't forget yeah the, the thing i said with the landmine there's only like two monsters that it doesn't it's not really true yet uh, uh, don't worry i will explain what they are they're on the next set all right so jelly charge we can stun which we did but too early so when it goes out i recommend you stop all attacks and spells I think. And he does it fairly quickly too, so you gotta be careful. He's gonna do it again very soon. But this time we stunned it. Wow, that key is very long. Surprise on the blow up, don't forget. It's gonna blow up. I'm gonna assume it's gonna open with this steel because we've killed quite a few. The, the key will only update when he's dead dead, right? So he's gonna blow up, then the key's gonna update. Yeah. Oop, wrong direction. Would Vengeance on War kill you on Reflect? That'd be kind of... That'd be kind of evil if it did. I assume it doesn't, but I, I don't want to put my life on the line for it. I would assume it doesn't, though. Because that would just make no sense. I guess we can try with own game, but I would, I'm very surprised if it actually does that. Right, let's see. It doesn't. It does not. Uh, science has been done. Oh, done too early. All right, things up. Let's chill.
All right, shard, LOS. Make sure he's positioned for another LOS if we get to this part. There's another shard back there, we'll kill it after. You see, very technical, right? This place. It's like there's not really much going on other than the mechanics of the monster. And then making sure you don't get jumped by patrols. I think that's the, the two main. Have I primal ran in the trap yet? No, I have not. I've, I've been pretty respectful of the primal ran uh, timing. I've not used it in the dumb way yet. All right. We'll use that. Ooh. And we got a free side, why not? So the set I'm on right now, it's the last set where time shouldn't be like really an issue. So right now it's not about yet to try and keep your pumps at 3, except maybe your strength and maybe your flight. Like these are, I would be fine using these. The rest though, I would try not to use them if possible. Let's do it in wood chains of course, because wood chains like, uh, they're, they're there to save your life. So. Then don't know why we killed that guy by the way. Uh, we were already out. You said you tried the vengeance reflect with Omdian, but you fought Omdian when you tested it? Did I? But I have this macro though. Are you sure? Maybe I did, but I, 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 it's supposed to be this macro that I have. Oh, you know what happened? Probably I. Ah, uh, I know what it. I know what it was then. It was because it's it's a macro, so you know macros they don't get their abilities chewed. So I probably like did something then this, but it didn't chew up the arm gain, right? So that's probably what happened. Anyway, I would have been surprised if that killed me though, honestly. So Leech does I believe a volm and that's it. Yeah. Puts it stacks volms on you. But we're a we're a tank, so we don't care too much about that. No raising, no Omdian science, let's go. Do I know the what percentage of ninjas is it you? Oh man, this is this is the eternal question. No one knows really. So I know it's below 50%. Because I sorry, I know it's not 50% because yesterday I fought I think like four ninjas at the same time. And I my L definitely dipped to like below 50, and I would say even below 40%. And they never assassinated me. So I feel like it's like 30%-ish. 20%? Okay, so people are saying 20%. I would believe that. I would believe that.
How long does it take to trade her? I think it's as soon as you're 20%. I think as soon as you're 20%, he does it instantly. Oh, Yabby. Okay, that's a monster you don't want to fight at the same time as something else. Let's be careful. I'll show what he does when I'm done with the mage. So the Yabby, when you pull it, is gonna do like a slow, and then you must be moving away when the slow is is on, or you get it by a circle. I'll show you exactly how to do it. Alright, so I'm gonna pull him. He's gonna do a slow on me very quickly into the fight. I'm gonna be sure I'm moving when it goes off in a straight line because this move will hit me if I'm not like already moving when it goes off. And that's it. If you do get hit by the move, you will have like a second or two to heal yourself before he kills you. So it's not like the it's not you're not dead if you get hit by this, but you like you're close to dead. So you should do it this again soon. As soon as I see the slow, I move. Oh, there it is. Like that. Yes, mimics can be stunned uh, until they're gold, and then when they're gold, they can no longer be stunned, and they're gonna be gold next set. So we're gonna do what I said that I would do. So my flights are gonna have three, so I'll just use one. And there's still plenty of dangerous monsters to go, don't worry. There's still five floors uh, on this set. There's a reason people are raising this. My god, the keys have not been kind. He lost two raisings to unfortunate monkey chest bumps with nearly narrow line of sight. I've still not died to a monkey yet, but I've been in a, a few spicy situations due to them. Wow, okay. I mean, if, if the keys are not being nice like that, we might actually have to use some resource to make up the time.
So that should be the last, uh, I hope. It is not. Holy shit, this is on. So that can happen sometimes. Kill counts or RNG. Uh, for whenever you know you're about to leave the floor. When, when you can leave. And in that case, when this set, we've been getting like really all like keys. So that like, they require a lot of kills. So that is, you know, eating into our time. So like right now, we're actually behind the time I would like to be on. Because it's about 6 minutes per floor. Probably. What does that mean? For your palms if you're behind time you definitely don't want to let it become a problem even more so you should be using something uh multiple things that you could be using but i would say you should prioritize prior prioritize things that you have at three already so like right now what do we have at three you know we have three liturgy three flights three altars three fortunes three storms so all of these are kind of viable Honestly, it's mostly just pick one and use it. Uh, so let's see what is in this. Well, this doesn't matter. So let's use a, a, a flight, this one. These debuffs are ass. And so is the Mimic. Okay, so like I said, when your palms are at 3, use something. We have bad debuff there. Time's bad. Let's just serenity. We'll find it back. Yeah, I only saw 2 dreads so far. So the, the, these tiny shoes that we're seeing right now, a little bit because of kill count, is why is why I'm saying that it's nice to prod on water. And it's probably the best to prod, but like once you learn all the mechanics, then it's probably better to switch to a DPS you like. Because then the DPS, you're not really going to get that whole like uh, time constraint thing going on. Like on DPS, you could very easily kill everything. And you won't have to really manage your palms that much. Like bait plot does a bait cone. And then a, a back uh, claw move. Like if you stay if you stay behind, you're gonna wind up a claw. Uh, this this does damage behind. I did. So let's kill the patrol so it's just not in the way. Wow, we're out with two kills. Nice. Keep moving. Anyway, okay, well. Nice. Sorry, I have to focus a little bit there. Alright, all right, here's the plan. So, time right now is going to be still a little behind. So, what that we should do is still use it, still keep using things we have at 2. Uh, so looking at my palms right now, that's uh, Lethargy or Storm or Altered. We got a few options. I really can't believe how unlucky this has been though. This is a... Uh... 
I, I've scored this set and it, it wasn't even that tight. So I'm surprised that it's tight right now. Alright, so we gotta find the key and leave. Uh, so let's use a storm because we are sitting out three of them. So the way you do storm plays, you can help yourself with a liturgy. Let's do it the very safe way, I guess. Ah, perfect. Okay, so there's a no regen on this floor. If you do, if you see no regen, very good contender for a liturgy. Uh, okay, we have an onion knight. By the way, that's the last the gnome. This is the best one. This is the one that you want to keep, if possible. Uh, so anyway, where's there's a no regen. So the big thing with storm is that if you got a no regen floor, uh, they will actually not regen when you storm. So that it's like a free, basically a free floor. So highly recommend. That if you're like missing, if your time is low in any way, or like honestly, if you're, even if you're sitting at three storms straight up, using one on the no region is always a good move. And also, I use the fortune there because I'm going to be killing a lot of monsters. So like that's the best time for fortune to give me things back. And uh, in fact, fortune already gave me a strength. So. So for a floor that's gonna be so fast like that, it's it is worth your time to like explore everything. Because like at this point, we're going to get a lot of chests out of the portion. It's very likely we're gonna get helpful things. So And see, we found a witch in a strain. Okay, so that puts us at the next uh, floor. Uh, so the boss, like I said, the boss, if you're using a Yune, like, let's say you're using like the weakest Demiclone, which is Yune, and a strain, the boss should probably take like seven minutes, maybe. Maybe even a little less. So technically, right now, we got 20 minutes to do two floor, uh, three floors. That is a lot of time, so I don't feel like we need to use anything else personally. Maybe a strength, and that's it. Oh, we got a Dread Beast, interesting. So that Dread Beast gives you regen, which is honestly kind of useless, but I mean, I had already stormed anyway, so. And we got a storm back, never punished. That's what happens when you use your palms with fortunes, you tend to get things back so much that it then kind of makes it worth it. Good song. So this is an asted floor. If you get an asted uh, floor, generally want to try and fight it. This is just the most efficient thing to do. Even better if you can afford a strength, which we have. So. I bait cloud as a bait drone. And then swings that bait claw behind him. Alright, Piranu doesn't do anything. Actually does nothing. I don't even think he has a telegraphs. The stain raid I'm going to do now is a pretty dangerous one. He's gonna jump, which will knock me back like really far. So you can either let him knock you back like, you know, in a room or uh, on a wall, but then he's going to follow it up with a donut or a point blank. It's one, or, one of the two, so you gotta react to it. Personally, I think this guy's easier if you let him knock you back away from him. But if, if you're like, if you don't have space, you can uh, intentionally let him knock you back into like a wall or something. But then you gotta be ready because if he does the point blank, you're going to have to run away from him.
still doesn't matter still because anything that hits you it will one shot you so it doesn't really matter but it's nice to have and there we picked up the strain that we use ah mount that's another dangerous monster Uh, I'm fairly sure this guy is a, is proximity aggro, so like as soon as I'm close to him, he's gonna see me. But for this one, we actually have to go away. Alright, surprise gonna blow up. Alright, so that guy is not that bad. He's gonna do sucker. Which is just like pulls you in. You gotta stay kinda close to it when he does that. And then as soon as you get sucked in, you have to run away because you, you will die. Like, if you don't move as already, you're gonna die. And then you gotta keep spamming this. And by the way, you need to be kinda close when it does sucker because if you're really far, it, it's gonna like, it was gonna be even spookier because then you're going to have less time to like run away from it. So. I think we've almost saw all the monsters, by the way. There's like a few missing. And that's one of them. Uh, this guy does a, he just he just does a big circle on himself. A good way to like make him because he looks similar to the other crab. So the way I tell them from each other is that the guy with the that's called big claw, he has a big cone, and this one is like kind of fat, right? Like has a, he has a fat round shell, so he does like a circle. Here. Thank you for the Prime, Nillary. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, not the Prime, the, the sub, the normal sub. Thank you. Three months in advance as well. Wait, does that, what does that mean, three months in advance? That means you were already subbed and then you bought subs for like the third month that's coming? Very nice of you. Alright, so this guy, Big Claw, so he does a big crown. Then he does a big claw behind him, if you stay behind him, like that. Same thing, big, cl big claw into... And we're out. We, we kind of rest the control back of the time there, it, and it took a storm. Just stare on ninja, hey congrats. Congrats, not only. Glad the glad the VOD were of use to you. This this what this one I'm doing right now is technically gonna be my, my warrior clear, quite clear, my first one, but this is I'm doing this more like a, a, a guide. So I, I it's playing I explain all the basics of the dungeon and I'm it's playing all the monsters in death and the and the bosses. So this should also be a great VOD for anyone that's trying to clear. Right, let's pull another Stingray, because he's probably one of the most annoying to deal with. So he's gonna knock you back. Then you're going to have to do a Donut or a Point Blank. Now there he didn't knock me back, because there's a no knockback penalty. So you, you gotta keep this in mind, right? Okay, we got a Monk coming there. But don't forget, you have Witch Chain. Like, if you feel, if you feel like things are gonna get out of control, uh, you should wait chain before they actually get out of control. So this guy usually would suck me in, then do the move, but then with the no nut bat, he's not gonna suck me in. Which means I just have to make sure I'm away when, when this happens. Same thing, he's gonna do the sucker, but I don't that cannot get pulled. How do I think war feels compared to Paladin and Air and Eo? Compared to Paladin, I'd say Warrior is pretty similar, honestly. Like Kiting Ky doesn't really have much value inside of there compared to uh MI and PT. It feels kind of similar. I I'd say Warrior is easier though, because your rotation is way less big brain than Paladin. So 
you, you can actually focus like 100% of your attention on the mechanics. Oh, okay. This is the most dangerous monster on this set. Period. So this guy is going to do a... He's going to do a crown... Uh, sorry, a very big square on you. You go behind. And then when he does it, you need to move inst instantly into it because he's going to do it behind. And uh, both of these will one-shot you, of course. So... So he can do it behind him first, but in solo, I've never seen it. So... Alright, so we move behind. Move in front. By the way, uh, just a warning. If you somehow end up with Dodra, the meat clone on this set, I highly recommend you don't fight these Zaratan guys. Because the Petrified will make this a die a nightmare. Like the petrified is gonna make the his cycle super weird. Highly recommend you don't even try to fight one. Alright, so same thing there. In front. And we go we go there. So a tip for these guys I'm gonna show you on the next one. In front. Yeah. Uh, a tip for these guys, if you actually want to avoid one, because, because you know, you don't need to fight it for some reason, or you have a Dodra out. Uh, there's sound. There's sound aggro, so you can actually RP walk past him. And he will not see you. But, you know, I can I can just chill by this guy. If I'm walking, he's never rest. Yeah, the climber side has a new section with clears uh, for by job, and uh, that's where I saw that Machinist is dominating right now. Over a hundred clears for Machinist. By the way, I did not even mention that, but. Uh, so you remember on the first 30 floors, there's respawns that would happen every minute. On the respawn sign from floor 30 is 10 minutes for a respawn. So you're, you're very unlikely to see it happen. This guy is gonna blow up, don't forget. Alright, so what we can do right now, I personally believe we would not need to use any pumps to make it to the boss. Because this boss should be around 7 minutes with the strength plus, like, let's say the weakest the meat loan, you name. Uh. But we can use a flight if you want to feel a little safer. That's fine. Or a strength. So let's use a flight. So this is an ace, no item. No item doesn't really matter for us, so it would be easy peasy. All 
Alright, let's kill the patrol first just so it's not, uh, you know, gonna be in my way. We're gonna do a soccer move. Which we dodged because we were in inner release, but never to say. So I would honestly not fight these guys if you can afford to skip them, which we can right now because we don't need to really worry about this direction. Because they, they are by far the most likely thing to kill you. Donut comes back. Alright, donut again. By the way, he did the donut every single time every single time we pulled it, but you can do a, a point blank. Like it's called expulsion, it's a an AoE around himself, so you gotta watch out for that. It's kinda slow though, so you can usually react to it uh, pretty fast. So I'm keeping these uh, Zaratans last because they're the most risky monster. And right now, I mean, I, I have it doesn't really benefit me if I kill them before I kill this Piranha, right? So I, I'm pretty sure we saw everything that this set had to offer as well. So right now, the next set we're going to go in is, by the way, the set I would raise normally. So I, I will raise it because I would know it. Alright, now we're gonna fight one. So, as a reminder, be very careful. This is front. Then we move back. We move front. This is front. And we move. And we're up. So this is the bus now. So we don't need to strain the bus, so I will just unite. I'm not keeping track of the bus kill times too much, by the way, but uh, I mean, you can use them, of course, for your own runs. If you want to like, get a point of reference, it's still too early. For us to have like accurate boss time, so I'm winging it a lot. Uh, so this boss, I like to steal this guy for the mechanics in case I would feel, fail them. So I'm just gonna make sure we have enough time. We'll pull at 4, 11.50. Let's go. We're gonna do the 8 swipes first. So 3. Four. It's not a repeat, so all I'm gonna do in this in this case is follow the swipe. So I don't start in the first. Then I'm only gonna go where he swipes, right? Like that. Because technically we're supposed to do the Simon Says mechanic. But if you just follow where he last swipe, you don't need to actually remember anything. Right? Like that. Now disorienting ground is a knockback, so we're gonna stay in there in the middle. Swipe is swiping in front, so you go away. Now he's gonna do the real mechanic. So the way I like to do it, he's gonna spawn orbs, and there's always gonna be one close to him, and I like to try and stand on that orb. It doesn't do damage. I like to try and stand on it, so he always starts his mechanic like that. Because then that gives me a safe spot, and I can just do the same thing I did last time. This is a repeat, so this one I do it a little differently. This one I'll follow. 
until you go is why he slashes left so three now you don't slash left twice i'll let it go twice then i move there and i don't move again that's the two patterns you can do you saw both of them swing he's swinging around so you move Then he's gonna do one more move. It can be the, the swipe or the drone. It's the swipe, so we move away. All right, now it's gonna be a repeat of the thunder mechanic. So again, I like to stand on the orb that spawns because it's gonna provide me a very nice safe spot in the middle when he starts. Okay, so I'll just stand there. Then we say the same thing. One, two, three, four. Is it a repeat? No, it's not, so we follow the whole time. So we're gonna follow. Up. Down. I don't even know what's the pattern, I don't care. I'm just following where he slashes. It's like cheating at Simon Says. Simon Says. Swain is swinging around, move away. Next is going to be the drone or the swipe. Swipe, so we move away. Mechanic again. I'm going to show you a way you can do it on tank. If you are like really... If you really can do it. There's a very easy way you can do this mechanic. It's trying to take you a bone. It's trying to give you a bone, but it shouldn't matter too much. On that. So same thing. Orb spawn. You go on the orb. Now you're going to do something even more simple. You don't stand right of the boss. All you're gonna do is move north. That's it. That's it. You do nothing else. Maybe pop a defensive or two, and what's gonna happen is gonna he's gonna swipe you once. But since you're a tank, it's not gonna damage you that much. So we're gonna get it once there. Like that. So this is in the background. That's a way you can do it if you just don't wanna think about it. Swipe, prod. Thunder crawl. Yeah, well, it hurt me for zero, but remember, I had UNA, she gave, she gave me a shield. You can do it again, if you want. So, right now, I have no steel, but I it, with a defensive, it should do like zero damage. So, I'm just gonna pop a defensive. I don't even know what's the pattern. I just went in that first place, he swiped, and that's it. So, look, that still did again a zero damage. Swain is swinging around. Swipe in front. So if you really can't do this mechanic, if you have a steel on, I think you can actually do this every single cycle and you would survive uh, on tank, like the whole fight. So that's just something to keep in mind. Well, let's do the mechanic uh, my normal way for this one. So same, I, I bait the orb and then I check the fourth one. Three, four. So that's a repeat. Left's a repeat. So all I do is I follow until it's left. So we follow up. We follow down. Follow right. Then left we wait two two strikes. And we go left. Like that. Swinging around. Wiping in front. And so what happens if, because you know I say like, oh, try to position yourself on the orb so it's always a, a static pattern. It's because if you don't do it, and it's like, you, you just kind of let him face wherever you want, then the, you have to stand in a different spot for the first swipe, right? But this one's not a repeat, so we're gonna follow. Like, you can do it, doesn't really change much, but... So since this one's not a repeat, we're just gonna follow every strike and be fine. You don't need to know the pattern.
Let's send that back. And that's a front swipe, and we're done. Yeah, on DPS, I know you can survive the hit with a steel too, but I, I think on DPS, you couldn't really stack up, like, uh, multiple bones. On tank, I think you could actually stack bones the whole fight. <laughs> I think you, you could still survive like that. Alright. So we're entering, like, the end game sets. Like, it's where, this is where things are going to be a little more spicy, and we're actually have, going to have to manage the time a little bit. So before that, I will go take a three minute break, just stretch my legs a little bit, and then I'll come back and we will keep going. So just give me three minutes, and I'll be running a quick ad too, sorry about that. Oh yeah, I'm back. Sorry about that. Oh, so I'm, I'm eating a candy just let me finish uh, chewing.
All right, I'm back for real now. Sorry about that. What candy? I don't know. You know, you know when you buy like these big, big boxes that just like basically they take all the candies no one liked, but they made like they call it like a, a mix of candies. That's the the box. I just took a random one and it was all right. Uh hello, hello. Can someone recommend me a funny physical damage chart? A funny physical damage chart class. I have no idea what you mean. Has anyone noticed that they couldn't they could not use print in EO and floors? I have the no ability debuff. That should not be the case. I've not noticed honestly. That's that's weird though. So two of your party members, but the warrior could not use print. Okay, that is very weird. I'm gonna try and pay attention next time I did no ability. I, uh, so we're entering 61. So uh, uh, as all the sets uh, from this point on, uh, I, honestly, uh, since all the sets since uh, 40, there's like 10 million dangerous monsters. So Diplo. Uh, he does like an AoE after you've pulled him. And that AoE will ev give an evasion buff to enemies that are in it. So it's just... You just want to make sure there's nothing that is in the AoE when he... Sorry, when he does it. Drake is like the slug. He's gonna put up spikes and you're gonna like kill yourself on them if you don't stop attacking. Uh, Cobra has a back attack. He's like the, the elbow drop guy earlier. He has like a, a circle. Then he does a back uh, attack if you're behind. And he also blows up when you kill it and puts a vol on you. Uh... Yeah, the frog pulls you in, then does a, a leap slam, like the, the Kraken, the monk. Does it buff mobs that are not in combat with you? Yes, it does. So what happens often when you're fighting the, the Diplo is uh, you're fighting it, and there's a patrol nearby, and it's going to start casting its AoE. Then the patrol just happens to walk by the AoE, gets the buff. Uh, but it it won't, like, the bu the monster will get buffed, but it won't, like, you know, get in combat with you, so... So it's not the end of the ward. You just have to avoid it for three minutes when that happens. Uh, perfected only knocks you back. Okay, Ninja, that's that's the one that is dangerous. Because this guy actually doesn't like barely anything. But if you're ever at below 20% HP when you're fighting him, he will insta kill you. So this guy is not that bad, except if you're like going to lose a lot of HP. So you know, like a silver or a landmine. Uh, Go Row is just does a, a front on telegraph into a back on telegraph. That's easy. Uh, Falak doesn't really do much solo. You just have to not carry him around or he's gonna spam donuts. And the boss is actually easy. This boss is actually easy. Probably the easiest boss beyond the first ones. Uh, so this boss is just a fat tiger that has like very few moves. It's actually the mount you get after you have four players so all right so this guy uh, opens with a tank buster that does zero damage as a tank this will do like truly zero damage to you so don't even think about it then after that he's gonna do a charge move on you so you need to be away to like you know until the tether becomes purple then he's gonna do a point blank ue or a donut if he's not glowing if he just like stands there this it's a point blank it's trying to be that if he's glowing, uh, like, you know, you, you can't miss it. Like, if, he, if there's, like, shit, like, glowing everywhere, it's going to be a donut. Right after that, he's going to do Roar, which is, like, the setup for the mechanic. Like, the real mechanic. Uh, that's very easy. There's just going to be rocks falling on the ground. You want to be out of them. Four rocks will fall. Two. Three. And the fourth one is always going to be a little further than the other ones. And then, depending on if he does the, uh, the donut or the point blank there... Your safe spot is going to be different. So if he does the point blank, you need to stand there. Because basically the, the concept is that the he blows up. So the crystal blow up in the opposite direction in like a cone. So this it, it and it just so happened that this would be the safe spot in that case. So that's that's one of the cycles. That's if he does the point blank inside the, the things. And then we're gonna go through another cycle, which I believe he'll do like the the other one. Uh, the other like the, the donut with so this is the charge again go far away until it's purple so it breaks it charges in then it does the donut or the point blind this is a donut you honestly can't miss it 
You just stay inside. And then he's going to do the, the roar again and the setup. Four crystals fall. The furthest one. So if he does the donut there, which he does, your safe spot is going to be that little light. You know, there's like in between these three crystals, there's like, you know, a middle. It's going to be there. It's going to be a small triangle. Because basically the donut makes the crystals explode in a circle. So it, and it makes this the safe spot. It, it might look like kind of scary in the video, but honestly, when I do it, it's very simple. It's going to look very simple when we do it. So, not, not when I do it, but like when I show you to you show it to you guys, it's very simple. All right. So let's just do it. We're still going to go over every monster individually, so don't worry about it. Now, I like to raising this set really, so I'll do it. I'll do that. I'd say this set, once you've know once you know everything, I like to raising this set because the ninjas are dangerous. This is also the first set where I would say your time might start looking weird. So at this point I would definitely use a strength when you whenever you have three. Maybe even when you have two. But if you know you're gonna be fighting for a while. It's really fine to use your strength. Out of the only grind, doing good. Uh, right now we're doing my seventh job, if we hear this. But I'm doing this job as a guide format. Because the way EO is structured, once you've done it on one job, it doesn't really matter what job you do it on. So I'm now at this point I'm confident enough to do a guide format. So. By the way, this is the first set where Mimics might be gold, uh, well, will be gold chest. So you can no longer get Mimics from silver or bronze. Now it's going to be gold chest. Alright, so we're going to pull constantly. We don't want to fall behind on time. He's going to do a back thing, move away. There's a snake in down and a ninja. So that's a ninja. If you're fighting this guy, you can't be below 20%. Well, I actually recommend you kill these first. Uh, like above any other thing that we see. All they do is that. They do a circle on you. So like, by the way, any monster that does like a back move, you don't need to actually stay behind until he does it. You can go back in front before. And it'll be fine. It, it's more of a like uh, Evan High muscle memory to bait things behind because in, in Evan High, auto attack damage is very high. So it's, it's, it's usually better that the monster is doing spells rather than attacking. Like, so in Evan and I, you're used to doing things like that because you want the monster to be casting instead of attacking you. In there, though, it doesn't really matter. In there, it's probably the opposite effect. Monsters do so little auto attack damage that it's probably better that they attack you rather than do a little piece. Alright, so the Diplo, like I said, uh, well, there's a lot of things to show, but I, let, me, let me fight towards the key. So I'll just pull things towards the key. So this guy only puts poisons on you. I don't even think he has a Neely.
Yeah, he has no AoE, only puts poisons. Which uh, we don't really care about on tank. Okay, this guy does... He does two abilities, but I don't remember in which order. So let me get a refresher. Yes, okay. He does a cone, a big cone, into a circle AoE. Or is it just a big cone? Oh, yeah, yes. Okay, correct. So he does a big cone and then a big AoE on himself. He can be stunned, though. There, I don't know yet exactly what you can stun, but you can always find out yourself easily. Just stun something as you start fighting it, and then, and then you know for like all future uh, monsters. So the key's open. We're gonna go. I'm just gonna check this one chest. Uh, so like I said, if your things are at 3, and the, the time is like, looking a little sus, not a bad idea to do something, but right now the time is looking good. <clears throat> so this guy again, crown, into big circle on himself. And if you want to be fancy, you can stun for uptime on the bait circle. Just make sure you actually have your stun rate. Safety is always good. So should always kill the patrols when we can. We pull two monsters by mistake. Uh, luckily the Terrak doesn't do anything. Does no abilities. So we only all we really have to do is target the snake and just kind of ignore the other one. Because like we know he's not gonna do anything except damage. And we're a tank, so we don't care about damage. Gonna be a Diplo next. I'll show you what he does, but he doesn't do much for this one. All the Diplo is going to do, he's going to do, he's going to just attack, he's going to do then a big, well, not not that big, but a circle AoE, that's very, pretty slow actually. Uh, and then, if any monster gets hit by this, they're going to get a 3 minute evasion buff. And it's like a very high evasion buff, it's like 80%, so, you just want to make sure there's nothing close to you, to, to him. Uh, also, this, these guys are proximity uh, aggro, so... I mean, you're very likely to have to kill them whenever they're in the way, like this one. Right? We, we just can't escape this one. But the key's there, so we might even... We might be able to leave right after he's dead.
Uh, you got hit by this AoE and it puts a 3 minute Vuln debuff on you. Oh, interesting. Okay, so if you get hit by this, it doesn't apparently kill you. But it puts a 3 minute Vuln on you. That, that's one of the rare AoEs that don't one-shot you then. Okay, so something, so I did say the 60 ones should be where your time is going to be like. I know for a fact your time is going to be a little more tight. So something that's not a bad thing to do is would be kind of using our pumps a little aggressively there. So as, a, as an example, I'll use my storm on the next floor. Even though time is not really spooky yet, there's not really a reason to wait for it to get spooky until we use something. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. This guy does nothing. All this guy does is a cone. Fire breath. Was chunking, chunking your L for about one fourth every other way through the roll. Wow. So that was like almost almost for uh, 16 of I. Very high kill. That's a little unfortunate. We got a Dodra there. Might as well replace the Dodra with a Dodra. I do not recommend you use your clones, by the way. Like, if you have three clones, I, I don't really think it's worth using them on the floor unless you find a few of That's my opinion, though. I would definitely not use an Onion Knight. Doga, maybe. Yune, maybe. But I would only use them if you had, like, terrible debuffs. Because yet, the upside of these guys is that they're not affected by the debuffs. By the way, this was a triple, terrible floor. We killed... I think we had to kill literally every monster. <laughs> you know? Wow. The yeah, pace is of 6 minutes per floor. Right now, we're like slightly behind. Because, you know, 6 times 2, 12. And we are like 12 and 15 minutes, seconds behind. So let's do exactly what I said. We're going to use a storm next floor. Is the way to use a storm uh, when you don't have a no regen carrying you is you just safety because you don't want to deal with traps you're gonna pull any monster that is not really dangerous if you kite it around with you so like these guys all they do is a circle and something behind them so like they're not gonna be a threat this is the big tank upside right there this is like something tank does better in dps definitely uh, we're gonna pull these guys because all they do is a poison. We will come back for that Onion Knight. Well, no, we can use it there. Let me. There's a long animation lock when you use like a, a clone, so I had to make sure the AoEs were away. Like that. So remember, Knight is the best. The reason they're not following me is because they petrified them, but now they're back. So we're just gonna pull like any easy monster still. Once we have like seven, we can uh, do the, the storm. There's a Dread Beast there, but it's a defense one, so we don't really care. Alright, so we can do the storm there, that's seven. So once everything's on me, we're just gonna do that. Pop the storm, A we down, everything. And then we go. That's it. Now, if this beast was the 
the damage one, I would have went out of my way for it. But because it's the defense one, I don't care. Yeah, it's like a more controlled landmine. So you might not know what a landmine is if you didn't do like the other ones. Storm is way closer than a landmine than it is to a pitchy. Alright, so why did we use a storm even though the time was good? Well, not bad, because we don't need to let the time get bad. It's also nicer when your palms are at 2, because then if you pick up anything in a chest, it goes right in your inventory and you don't have to, you're not forced to use it like there. Like right there. Okay, Drake will reflect damage. Uh, do, do a thing that reflects damage. This. When he does this, you stop attacking. It's like the sludge. You can also stun it the cast time. So it doesn't happen. So we can stun this very easily. Now the Drake does nothing, as I said. I just pull it. There's a patrol there I want to fight after to show it up. Let's uh, check this. Alright, still. Uh, do casters get to ignore their ice uh, spikes and fire skills? I have no idea which spells get reflurry and which not. I heard that for both it's like only physical or only autos. Apparently you can still cast spells. But uh, I don't, I, I'm not, uh, I just put away my weapons when I do it, to be safe. Even if I'm a jester. Yeah, because exactly for that. I'm too scared I'm gonna auto between the spells. Because as far as I'm aware, the way your, your autos get like activated when you're a jester is you right click an enemy. And I, I have no idea if I right click my enemies, like, you know, subconsciously. I, I don't know, so I don't want to fight that. Alright, so right now we're sitting at 3 strain, which means that as soon as my strain goes away, it has 4 minutes left, I would refresh it. Because there's no reason to sit on 3. Oh, we pulled a snake, that's fine though. So what we should probably do next floor 
Uh, oh, well, there's a patrol. I wanted to fight this guy. So, so this guy... So he, he wins up a very long cast. But it's not, it's not a cast bar, right? It's only like a... He only shows it in the front and then does it in the back if you're still behind him. So I'm going to show it again while I'm like, no, not fighting something else. But you know, you have to pay attention because he's going to look like he's fighting normally. He's just, you know, punching you. Then he wins up this. You need to move behind. Then if you stay behind, he's going to do this and then you need to move in front. And that, that's all he does. So it's like it's like a it's like an, uh, a telegraph, but no cast bar. So you gotta watch out for it. So he does it again. And if you don't want to deal with the back tail, you can actually just move right away in front. And if you do that, he won't do the back tail thing. So the Drake, Reflect, but we can stun it with good timing, which we will. Now if you're not sure if you got the stun, stop attacking any win, check, we did get it there. And then we just go when the key is open. Oh, well, never mind. We got a mimic. That is a risk of checking chest when it's open, but I still think it's worth the risk. As long as it's close to the key, right? Okay, next floor we're gonna use an altar because we have three. So altar can save us time by uh, getting Kurgans or it can lose us time by getting Mimics which would be in the way. And you know, Mimics are tank here usually. But uh, whichever one we get, they have an increased drop rate of chest. They drop at a 50% drop rate, so... Oh, and we have a free strength, so sure. So just let me avoid the snake. All right. So we will use an altar. Could even use an affluence, maybe. Not a bad idea. It's sitting at three. Affluence, as a reminder, increases the amount of chests that will uh, be on the floor. Not the ones that are gonna drop, but the ones that are gonna be like on the floor by default. So this floor is gonna have either mimics or Corridians in one of the rooms. Does affluence increase the chance of having a treasure room? Yes. The numbers would seem to point that way. Well, there's like it, it's not like guarantee, guarantee, but it's like it's likely that yes. Ah, oh, there we see. There's a ninja there. But there, there was like two patrols stacked with each other's. Right, there was a bait guy and then the ninja was hidden inside the bait guy. So there we're gonna make sure we never dip below 20%, well 30%. So this looks like a scary fight. It's not actually that scary because all I'm looking at is this guy. Like, I'm not even looking at the other two monsters. Just he's the only one that does something that wouldn't put like a fat circle on the ground, you know? So I'm gonna kill him first. 
Because you see, when the ninja does a thing, he puts like a fat circle, so it's easy to know. You can push tank. So the tank is like... You can push DPS really hard too, but you can push tank really hard on these floors. Like I'm doing intentionally, you know, like very small size pulls, family friendly pulls. Because I'm, I'm assuming that this is a guide like for, for someone that's like, you know, want to get into it. In fact, I don't even think this is the best job, uh, as I said multiple times. I think the best job is your favorite DPS. But I think for it, for it to learn the mechanics is the best. Job. It's just the, the easiest one. But like, we could really push this floor, uh, these floors. Like, we could pull multiple monsters all the time. I just don't think it's necessary. This guy. Well, this guy does a gaze into a Neui around himself. There's gonna be gaze. And then a slow Eevee. We still have no idea if the Croydon room is Mimics or... Sorry, if the Alter room is Mimics or Croydons. And uh, that's what I did for being greedy and trying to check. Uh, so that's a pull that I don't really want to do with all the witching, so I'm gonna witch this. Now I'm trying to kill the Goro first because he's the most... He's the most annoying to keep track of in like a multiple situation. So I'll kill this one first. Now of course when you're starting out, you're not going to know like, you know, you're not going to know at the snap of a finger. Like if you should witch in or not the luring trap, I think you should just witch in instantly and worry about it after. Okay, so there we're gonna have to be a little careful. All we have to do is kite away and we should be fine. We need to not attack the Drake also. So no we moves. Next we're gonna kill this guy. So even though we altered this floor, we actually will don't even know what we got. And it's too late because the key's open. So. So now that we've got everything at two, uh, sorry, at two except the strength, now we're gonna play more like a little bit defensively with the pawns. We're not really gonna go hard on anything except if time is actually like no, starting to be bad again. And there's also a strength in that chest that I was waiting to pop, so let's pop it. As we can go now. Uh, I, I've not fought this guy yet, but we'll be fighting him already in another floor. No, no, yeah, don't, don't. I know what he does. I just mean like we've not fought him for the the guide already, but uh, yeah, he only does a circle. It's a big circle though.
So I could actually show... I could actually show you what, like, a Niwi pool looks like. But it's just, you don't really need to do it, so it, it's why I'm hesitating a little bit. But maybe it would be a bad thing to show, like, what what does it look like to do a Niwi pool with a Liturgy? Because that's actually a pretty viable strat. If, you, like, if you're behind on time and you're, you don't really want to do, like, something important. So let me show you... Yeah, let me show you, actually. So I like... You need to... If you're doing... Uh, sorry. I'm uh, tripping in my words. If you're using, like, a Liturgy to the Nui Pool, you should probably safety. Just so you have room to fight. And all you're gonna do is very simple. You're gonna Liturgy, of course. So it's a Liturgy Pool. You're gonna pull monsters that are not annoying in a Nui Pool. So it's gonna be anything that doesn't knock you back. Anything that doesn't, doesn't do, like, a super big AOE that's like really awkward to dodge or anything. Uh, by the way, we got a Dodra also. So, sorry. Yeah, we got a Dodra, so we might as well. And grab it. So, so these guys are no good because he has a Reflect and the other one has a Knockback. And so I didn't show the Lizard yet, but he does a Circle AOE that's it. So that's why he's fine. So we're just gonna pull like about six or seven like easy monsters with the Liturgy active. So let's pull uh, like one more. But let's let's do like one more, like that. And then we can just eat with all these guys. We just need like a good comfy spot to do it. So let's go back to like the room uh, back there. Now there's a ninja on me, so on me, so I need to make sure I don't dip below 20%. But like on a tank with steel, that's just not really an issue. I would be doing a pull like that on a DPS. So that like on a tank, it's whatever. So of course the upside of liturgy when, when you're doing something like that is because the AW are gonna be so slow that you have plenty of time to just AW down everything. And even better, it also slows down their attack speed like drastically, so the damage output is just gonna be super small. So that's a good way to gain time fast. But th the reason I hesitate to show this is because it requires good knowledge of the monsters. Because you know, like you need to get specific monsters that are not gonna be garbage in the pool. But once you know the monsters, you can do things like that. Like you can basically turn your liturgies into three floors like that. Very nice. It's very nice. So Lethargy with Sight, that's like, it's because if you're gonna do a landmine thing, you don't really need Lethargy most of the time. So personally, I like to avoid using Lethargy plus Sight. Because I feel like it's kind of double, you know, overkill. But yeah, Lethargy does help with landmine. Like if you want to do a landmine easily, then yeah, it does. It does help, but it also does not help because... Uh, the thing with liturgy is the monsters are gonna be casting spells, right? For a long time, so... Like, actually getting them to the landmine can be a little bit of trouble with the liturgy. Because what's gonna happen is all of them are gonna be casting their spells, like, two rooms away, and then you have to wait for them to get... We don't know what I'm there. Shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter on the tank. Right, Phalite does nothing as long as you're close to it. So if I just stay close, it's never gonna do anything. But if I were to be away from it for, for whatever reason when I'm in combat, so let's stun it. If, if I'm away from it, he's gonna do a donut. This is a donut. 
You're gonna die if you're not in range. Yes, you can also LO as a donut uh, if you're like in a really uh, bad situation. But honestly, you should just never see the donut uh, alone. Like, there's no reason you should see the donut ever. No, uh, all my, my music that's playing right now is it's all in the dungeon. All the songs are in the dungeon. I don't have my own playlist. Yeah, there's some really good jammers and some really bad ones. Perfect. So I'm, I've not fought. Uh, I've not fought these monsters yet. So this guy, I you side a little bit. Last four, all he does is a big circle on you. It's targeted on you. Plenty of time to move though. And that's it. That's all he does. The frog, he's gonna pull you in, then he's gonna do an AoE move. It's a lot like the monk on the last floor, last set. So you need to be away from him when he does. So you move. As soon as you... I use the sound, the sound cue for this. You can look, you can wait until you're like sucked in, but if you're close, once you hear the sound cue of the ability, it's time to move away. You can't wait to see the cast time, the cast bar. So we're gonna listen to it. Yeah, heard it. No, this this rod does not stun you if you don't face this the thing. You you do you will never get stunned by this, so don't worry about it. It's one of the first things I tested against this monster. Okay, so right there is a very classic deep dungeon situation. You need to go somewhere and there's monsters in your way. It's usually okay to wait a little bit to go but if you have to wait more than like 20 seconds i would just pull something and uh because it's probably faster than waiting so all right man this corner specifically there's a wall trap there i've hit this one multiple times there's like a trap that's in between these two uh spots let's chill a perfected this is the last monster I've not shown, I think, on this uh, floor. This guy knocks you back every, like, 15 seconds or so. So, you just gotta make sure you're facing a wall while facing your back towards the wall. Can you jump over that wall trap? No. Unfortunately, jumps do not uh, do anything. Yeah, there's no Z-axis in that game. Well, barely. You might pull, but I'll take the risk. Right. 
so we got two floors left. Now you, you might be like, you might be thinking like, wow, the time looks super tight. Like, I wonder if it's, like, if the time is looking that bad on 61, I wonder, like, how crazy it is on the higher floors. But, good news for you is this is actually the set where, where the time is the tightest. Out of my six runs I've done so far, this is always a set where time is the biggest issue. Uh, well, it's on this set. So, once we make it past this set, it's kind of smooth smoother. Smooth the uh, same. Yeah, my storm eye upkeep is pretty bad. It's just I'm talking so much, so my, my brain just goes back to 1, 2, 3 uh, mode. But don't worry, I know. I know about storm eye. They even made it so inner release gives you 15 seconds of it. Well, it's weird, right? It like it increases it by 15. Oh, there's a ninja. Let's be careful. Ninja remind reminder kills you if you're below 20. Yeah, they made it so that if you already have it, you get plus 15, I think. But it doesn't really it doesn't give you like a flat 15 for free. Ninjas now. So there's two ninjas. That doesn't really matter because they don't do that much damage. Yes, ninja will assassinate you if you're below 20% HP. So as soon as you hit 20%, they're gonna like spam as a snail on you until you're dead. If you even if you're in bull. So Okay, right now by the way we're sitting at three of everything, so no reason to not use a strength to do that. Well, I don't know about the out of combat thing anymore. I think it they can I think they might only do it in combat, but the thing is their proximity, like their proximity monsters. So it looks like they do it out of combat, but I think what happens is they aggro on you and then they just like kill you. I'm not convinced it's out of combat. I would rather you nade there. Might as well use it. So that's kind of the way I like to roll with my dummy clowns, by the way. This this will change in the future, probably, as we get better. But right now, the way I like to do it is I like to have two Onion Knights on me at all times. Because I, I really want the Onion Knights on the last two bosses. And then my third my third dummy clown is kind of like my flex one that I use when I have fun. That's kind of the way I do it. Uh, and as I said, this is the set where the time is going to be the worst for... Oh, I'm almost sure. Uh, even even through all that, we kept the, the time pretty healthy just by making sure that we've used all our bombs when they were at 3. So, And this is a pretty bad bad luck run in general because we, we got barely no barely any storms. And in fact, we have only 2 dreads this entire time. In 68 floors. So I'm pretty satisfied with the RNG so far. I'd say this is like as bad as it's gonna get. This, at least for me, in my case, this is my seventh run. This is probably the worst luck I've had in the pump, the commanders. <laughs> you just had two dreads in one room? Wish that were me. Not all yet. 
Yeah, Raisins is the pawn that is the most important that dungeon. Like right? it's it's nice to okay, so okay, that's be very careful when Dodra petrifies a monster that has a two-part attack. Because you don't know what you're gonna do. Okay, so do be very careful. I did not talk about this that much. When Dodra does a petrify on a monster that has a two-part attack, so like for example, this guy does a, a pull in into a lead slam. If the petrifies happens at a weird time, it's gonna make it fucked up. Because for example, let's say he pulls you in, right? Let's say he pulls you in. Then Dodra petrifies before he does the leap slam. Then what's gonna happen is that as soon as the petrify goes up, uh, goes away, he will leap slam like instantly without doing any kind of a uh, you know like thing before. So you gotta watch out. Very important that you watch out for things like that. So we're gonna use a fight because we have three. Yeah, my raisins are doing uh, pretty good right now. We have raisins for the next set, when which is the hardest one, uh, not time wise, but like monster wise. And then we have a raisin for the very last set too. So Falak doesn't do anything, but he's he's so stuck in the wall that I can't even target him. So. There's a ninja. Sight is always good. So what can you do with a sight? Uh, you can always try to find a landmine to speed things up. You just gotta make sure there's no ninja involved in your landmine. There's a landmine back there. You don't even need to do crazy things with a landmine. Like, it's perfectly fine to just use a landmine for one monster like that. There's no problem with that. On the next set, it's gonna be important to do like a little bit of bigger landmines, but uh, until then, you can just kind of use them like that. Yes, if I really wanted to, if time was really bad, someone brought it up in my chat. Uh, what I could do is I could bring monsters over to the key and uh, use a dread on them. Dread. So I, I still have never shown shown what the dread does because I'm I'm being very unlucky with my pickups on them. Uh, dread lets you one shot monsters, but also lets you put a stack on monsters that increase their damage taken. So what the the best thing to do with it is technically to use it on the ninth floor, which I am right now. So I would go on the key, I would dread, kill everything near the key, then the key would let me out, I would then carry the dread into the last floor, which is the boss, then I would put 5 stacks of the, the vulnerability debuff, and then I would do the boss like that. So that's just something you can do. Uh, let's say in all of my runs so far, I've only ever used that strat once, on the very very last boss. Because it seems like time is never really so tight that you need to do it. Uh, what ends up happening in my runs is that I keep all my dreads for the very last set. Almost every time. But that is an option if you had three dreads and the time was like extremely tight. So this guy's gonna knock you back. If you don't face a wall, that's what's gonna happen. Well. I have the knockback immunity right now, but he's gonna like just keep knocking you back. Your shippy might be watching anything I wanna tell him. Make it more difficult. It's not difficult enough.
Also give us titles for clearing on more than one job. Alright, so we're gonna go to the boss. Uh, like I said, if you have to read the meat loan, I recommend you just use one. Exceptions for 40 and 50 will charge counters for she, but... So that's a very easy boss. It looked kind of chaotic in the video. But actually very easy. Also very tanky, unfortunately. So I'm gonna write down the time and make sure that I have, I have enough time to do this. So tank boss sir doesn't do much. After that, it's gonna be a charge. You need to be away. Like this. Then it's gonna be in or out. It is in. Okay, we stay in. So that's part one. Now, don't get confused. Whatever he did there is not the same thing he's gonna do on the on this one. So it's 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 like RNG. So roar is the setup. There's only four rocks that fall. Two, three, four. So we care about this one. Now we're gonna do in or out. In is always gonna be this safe spot. You go between the farthest one and the two close, uh, the, the two other ones. And the little triangle that's gonna be safe there. So that's one of the ways this can grow. There's one other way. So this is the charge, we go away. It's gonna be in or out. It is out. Out is simply a point blank. Move away. Now, the fact that he did out there does not mean he's gonna do it in during the, the roar. It, it's, it might be the same or not, it's RNG. So one rock. Two rock, three rock, and the only one we care about, the fourth rock. And now he's gonna do in or out. And this time it's out, so the safe spot is around there. It's like just barely out between the two crystals. There's the same spot on the right there. Uh, so I did write down the time in the chat to make sure that I had enough time to kill this. I'm gonna make sure I have enough time when it's at 50%. So charge, we go far away. In or out, this time it's in. You could be using King Shirt, by the way, right there. I'm not using them just so I can get, uh, you know, a good accurate time. UNA, by the way, the one I, the Demitone I use, is she's the worst one for DPS. So. This is about as slow as this boss should ever go for you. By like no strength plus UNA is about as the slowest you'll ever do this boss. Go in, easy, it's there. Steel Claw, no damage, don't need to care about that. Even without Steel, barely any damage. So this is a line, you gotta go away from it. Then it's in or out. This time it's out. And we are fine on fine. So this should be a little under 10 minutes, I think.
It's trying to be in or out again. It's out. So we go just outside the circle around there. And I mean, this bus is just way too long, so I mean, <laughs> there's not much else to say at this point. <laughs> I think we went over uh, everything like 10 times already. Charge next. In. In is, I would, I would say in is the easy pattern for this part. Because the triangle is very easy to, to always like stand in. And this is out. is out so by the way when he does the charge you might feel like you have to you no know, kite him to the wall to have enough space for the charge but you don't actually like I, I've kept him middle most of the cycles and you always have enough space to go it so Like you, just, you just go out the wall basically, like that. And roar, and I think it's gonna die before the next cycle. Next set is gonna be the hardest set. Not time for not for time management, but for just like the monsters. It's by far the trickiest monsters to fight. We got out again. Alright, so we killed at a 145. So this took about, I just want to see how long this took, this took about 9, about 9 minutes with Yune and no strength. I don't think you'll ever have a slow S fight than that on this boss. Because she's the worst DPS clone and you should use the clone there and add no strength, so. Okay, next set. Uh, war set with the monsters. So let's see what we got. So seventy-one eighty. This is this is full of like very bad monsters. Uh, I'll only mention the ones that are worth mentioning. So the Kunochi is is exactly like the ninja on the last uh, on the last set. Uh, yeah, kills you if you're under 20%. So you just gotta be careful when you're doing landmines that 
this guy is not around. Or if he's around, he has to be witched. So, Elephant will charge you, then do a small E on itself. Wolf does nothing. Curl, this, this guy is really tricky. This is a patrol that has a huge wide cone. Also does a bad cone if you're behind it. A unicorn nuts you back multiple times when you pull it. Other than that, doesn't do much. Thunder Beast is very hard. Well, hard. It's not hard, hard. But he has like a... He does like a move that has no telegraph and no animation. That will kill you if you're uh, near it. It's called Sight Tail. But you can kind of see it's coming by moving when you're fighting. I'll show you exactly how I do it. But Is there a lane for that? Yep. There it is. Meiji's Guide. It's not mine. Uh, Gulu Gulu is an easy monster with a tricky like double frontal crown, but apparently if you use an arm's length on it, it can bug out and one-shot you, so we're going to have to watch out for that. I would not use arm's length on this guy specifically. Uh, Griffin has a thing you must LOS. Monkey... <laughs> Monkey kills you in one shot out of combat uh, when he does a big AoE. But when you're actually fighting it, it's not too bad. I don't. I think the Sasquatch is like kind of funny, but I don't think it's actually like, you know, a five out of danger, of a, of a danger level. Because like really, all you gotta do with the monkeys is pull them as you see them. Uh, Skatin has a thing that will sleep you and then kill you if you're close to it when he does it. It has a gas bar though, and the lion just does a very long line AOE. And this is, I believe, the only thing I've found so far in the entire instance that you cannot LOS. So you can't hide behind a wall for the Flame Beast. It will kill you if you do that. And this boss is, in my opinion, the hardest one once you learn everything. So. This goddamn boss. There's a few tricks for this boss, though, to make it uh, easier. It's not this one, though. It's the 81... There. Well, this guy is like magnets. So, uh, just as a reminder, opposites attract each other. So, plus minus is gonna be like you get sucked in, and minus minus or plus plus will be you get pushed away. It's kind of the easiest to solo on. I'd say it's the easiest to learn to prod, but the easiest to solo on is probably your your best DPS job. Once you've learned the mechanics. Third solo machines today. Hey, congrats, Trumpsley. <clears throat> Alright, so this boss. So I, I did remind you what uh, the, the magnets do. He's not that bad, but he's like, you gotta pay attention. So he's gonna open with a tank buster that does zero damage because you're a tank. So his mechanic is called this uh no sorry not barrel fill but it's it's like the next thing he does so you're gonna see where his butt is pointed right so his, his tail is pointed this way and there's like a little uh like node like that right behind it that's the one you're always gonna be bound to and when he does this the jet is when the mechanic starts it's going to bind you i know you know in advance in solo that you're gonna be bound to this one so you don't actually need to react to anything like you're always gonna be bound, be bound to this one and I'm even tempted to say that it's always negative, but I, I always double check, but I feel like it's always negative as well. So anyway, you're gonna get a debuff. It's gonna be a plus or, or a minus or a negative. If it's a negative, you're gonna get pushed. If it's a plus, you're gonna get sucked in. So in that case, I would get pushed when the mechanic resolves. Well, there's four AOEs that are gonna happen before that. It's left like this. And be careful, it's left, but it's not like left it's not actually left. It's like, um, well, you're going to see it, right? So, so because it's it's the heads. Uh, sorry, oops. Kind of messed up there. It's the heads that are shooting. So it's leftward, and it is left-ish, but it's it's not like this, the kind of left you th you're thinking. So look, see? It's like, uh, it starts at uh, 285... It, it starts at like 315 degree and it it finishes at well you know what I mean right it's like a, it's like angled so you gotta watch out for that but anyway he does left centralize when he turns towards you it's just like 
uh, a cone, right side of bread in front. That's the second AoE we did. Now for the third one, he's doing right. So same thing. And then he's going to do a fourth one, random one again. This one, this time it's left. And then at the same time, your mechanic is going to start like, you know, pulsing. And then once your debuff expires, you need to be pushed or dragged in the safe spot. He's going to do a donut every time and you need to be close to him, to the bus. You just need to be pushed close to the bus. By the way, this line here is that spawn during the fight. Uh, we, we keep seeing these line EOEs, right? They do not matter. They do so little damage that you should honestly like phase them out of your brain. Like these don't matter. I would not even like, if, especially on a tank, not even worth your time touching your buff. Uh, and that's the whole fight. Like he's, going, he's going to do this over and over. Yeah, I know the front is safe for both. But me, I always like doing it for, uh, when I'm behind him. I don't know why. Ah, uh, yes. And the dead zone. Thank you for reminding me. During this part, during this like mechanic, you see the little blue under it? Th that's a dead zone. It doesn't look like it, but you, you're dead if you go in this zone. So you gotta be careful for this. Thanks sir, for the reminder. I actually lost my... Well, not lost my first one, but I died. My first time I died there was to this, the, the dead zone. Alright, so anyway, let's uh, go into the set. This set, I, I like I said, I don't think it's hard to manage your time on it. But the, the enemies are definitely trickier. And also, we're going to open with landmines on the first two or three floors. So you're going to see what a landmine looks like. I'd say the landmines in there are trickier than they are in MMI and PUTD because like the, the, your op, your pool of options for the monsters is kind of bad. But uh, you can make it work. Like you don't need to do big landmines. You need to do six or seven monsters for it to be worth it. And it's going to cost me a way chain in the site when I do it. So anyway. Well, let me eat food first. This set is, I in my opinion, this is harder than what's coming so if you get past that i think you're your game to clear right so i'm gonna obviously raise this i, sh I would not even think of, like i would not even wish to do this without raising and then we're gonna side right away because we need to find landmines they're gonna speed this up the reason, by the way, that we do landmines on the first three floors is because they are more common on the first three floors of this set. So Unicorn is going to push me back. Uh, something we can do to help with the landmines is we can steal. So Unicorn pushes you back three times, then it will do like a Niwi. So I see a landmine all the way back there. So we're going to do that. So these guys are going to charge me and do a Niwi. So it's fine for the landmine because I'm running in a straight line anyway. So I'm gonna do the landmine there. So that's like, you know, only six monsters, but that's perfectly fine. So I'm gonna home gang. And then we just pop Blood Wedding and uh, we kill everything. That's how you do a landmine. In the safest way possible. And they should all die before the witching end, or if not, they're gonna die like they're gonna die like right after. So, right, and we're up. So first floor was just that easy. Now we just have to leave. How oh, did I tell you it was a landmine from so far away? Way too much uh, beauty. <laughs> yeah, I could tell because I just did it so much that I, as soon as I saw the, sh the general shape, I just knew. Wow, I, you can actually walk behind that. That's kind of fucked up. Well, anyway, I'm just trying to wait for these patrols to go. And now we're gonna leave. 
Yeah, the, it's just I know the shape of the traps really well by this point. Like this, I could even tell it was a landmine from there. Ah, so we pulled a monster by accident. It's just it's just kind of whatever. We can use that landmine to speed it up like that. Oh, and we got the dread we were missing. So second floor, we're gonna do the same thing. If you're scared of doing this without home game, what you can do is you can actually the second floor you don't land mine, you do like something else, you fight it or whatever. And then the last the, the third one, the 73, then you would land mine this one instead. Alright, so this one has bad debuffs. Uh it still doesn't really matter for the land mine though. Because the, in this place, auto attack damage is, is pathetic. It's really low, so it shouldn't really threaten uh, us that bad. Also, we got 300 knife. That's uh, exactly what we want. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Pull like all the easy-ish monsters. Now, what you can do to help yourself with a landmine, you can actually liturgy. It's gonna make everything attack really slow, which is gonna be helpful. So let's do the landmine in this room. So if you don't do it with a home gang, by the way, I will strength because there's debuffs and I want to kill for. If you're not going to do it with strength, bl pop blood wedding as you're stepping on it, and then do a new and it's going to, it's honestly going to make it look like the landmine heals you. So. All right, and we're out just like that. So that that's the reason this set is not is not that bad for time management because we can do this for the first two or three floors. We, we could do it for the third floor if we wanted because we have a side still. We have two sides, but I'm going to just limit it to two. Uh, I, I'll do no more landmines, I think, just to keep it like kind of realistic. So now we're just gonna fight this uh, in the normal way. Okay, so that's interesting. I I would get a Dodrat there and lose an Onion Knight. I, I honestly don't know if it's worth it. I'd say yeah. I'd say it's probably worth. Because the Onion Knight is really sick on the bosses, but Onion Knight also like really melts anything. So this is the first time we use him. That's like the high DPS uh, dummy kill. So this guy does a very big cone, and he will also do a very big kill swipe if you're behind him. So Unicorn, you saw it a little bit. He does like th three nutbacks, back to back to back. After that, he's gonna do a circle AOE we on you, which is very easy to dodge. And as you can see, the Onion Knight is melting everything, so, you know. I mean, if you have three and you find something else, it's probably worth to use it just to speed up the floor, but... So, Wide Blast. So, if you don't stand behind, he's not going to do the tail uh, thing, so... And, uh, and by the way, when, when they call it Wide Blaster, they're not kidding. Like, I'll show you how big it is with this guy. But look how far it's going to go, okay? Yeah, like you're not dodging this. So you need to stay close to that guy. Okay, Gulo Gulo, I would recommend you don't arm slang this guy because there's apparently a bug where it would kill you. So he's gonna do the killing paw, but here's a trick. He's gonna do it twice. So once, and then twice. So he does it twice. So you, you can't go in front of him after the telegraph because he's gonna like do it twice. Uh, and apparently there's a bug right now where if you arms line, he can do it. He can like do the first one and then he's gonna turn towards you and kill you in one shot with the second one. So I, it's never happened to me so far, but it's happened to a few people. Toko Toko does nothing. All he does is, is a cone, but it has no telegraph at the beginning. So make sure you move beyond.
Uh, I'll show what the elephant does better. So he's gonna charge you. And after the charge, well, as the charge happens, he's gonna do a leap slam thing. So you just need to move away from it, like that. And he will only do this move every time he charges you. So now you're safe. But as soon as you as you hear him like charge you again, then you gotta move away. Well, if he gets to this to this point. So Anya Knight made this floor take like two minutes, if even. I would not, I would, I'm fine doing two Onion Knights and, you know, having like a third one, that's whatever. But I would really try and have two Onion Knights. Oh, let's pull this guy. Now I'll pull him, now I'll pull him because I'm not sure if he shows up later. So this guy, uh, he has a donut and a point blank. The only way to tell when he does this point blank is you need to kind of move like that. And you set some points on a, like, right that. Like that. When he stops moving, this move's coming, and you need to be away for it. So this guy also has a, point, a donut that he does, but he only does it when you're far away from him, which is kind of hard to accomplish if you're like a warrior. So, but if he does the donut, it's called spark. Or did they show up later? Then I'll try to show the donut later if I can. Uh, yeah, I want to do it. <laughs> I'll, uh, hold tight. Uh, it would have been perfectly fine to use a flight there, by the way. I just forgot to, but... Because we have three flights. Alright, so we got a no ability there. No ability is a very time-consuming debuff. What, what you could do there... Uh, it would be fine to use a Serenity, honestly. It would be fine to use a Storm as well. And we just picked up a Storm, so I think I should do the Storm. So, uh, Storm, same as before. So we should be killing a few more monsters than usual. So we're gonna Fortune as well. Why not? So I, I will Safety, just so I don't have to deal with traps. Okay, that guy would be very nice to kill with a Storm. Because he would provide with a damage buff. He would provide me with a damage buff. I'm not gonna kill him though, even though I should, because I, I don't want this run to be unrealistic since it's gonna be a guide format. So I don't want to just like, you know, get damage buffs out of the ass, so we're gonna skip him. So all we gotta do is pull monsters that are not an issue to pull when we're running away from them. So that's gonna be like the bear, the wolf. There's another bear, another wolf there. Don't forget the the bear does two swipes like that. And then we're gonna find like our pull more things. I would really like to avoid the dread beast though. Okay, so we're gonna do six monsters there. Well, six ish. I don't. I don't want to pull the dread beast. Let me wait to see it move. Okay, perfect. So this guy's easy too. And then we can do the storm in that room simply. So the the curl is a problem, but we got to it. No, so we killed it like now. Like, as soon as you encounter the problematic monster during your storm, like, pre, like, prep, let's call it, then you you got a storm, right? So that curl, it was the, I, I pulled it, and then it was, like, the limit. Like, this was where the storm had to happen. 
Because this guy would have done a huge drone and I could not have survived. So I obviously should have killed the clone, but like I said, I don't want to. I don't want the run to look uh, look silly, because you know I, we just keep getting damage buff. Unfortunately, I have to wait for it. So I'm sitting at three flights, so I use one. Even though time is really good, uh, you're gonna be glad that you don't have to rush for times on the later floors of this set. No, you know what? You know something funny, Ken? You actually cannot right click the buff. We tried that in our uh, team run and you can't. Uh, yeah, by the way, there was a free flight somewhere, so actually. There. Okay. Oh, yeah. I just remember there was a free flight somewhere. Uh, we got Yune. Probably a little better keep Dodra because I'm what I'm thinking I'm gonna do since Dodra is like the, the middle damage, right? It's like not the best, not the worst. I would probably use Dodra on the boss of this set, and then I would use Onion Knight on 90 and 99. Because yes, if you're not aware, there's a boss on 99 for this dungeon. So Alright, we got three strength, we use a strength. It's that simple. And the key's in that room, so we don't really have a reason to fight uh, much further. I'll just check this room, because I want to see things I've not pulled yet. So Griffin. Griffin's easy. He does a move called Free Fall. A few times. I believe two times. So there's one. Then he's going to do a, another Free Fall very soon. You need to you need to put this guy in the LOS spot, because you must LOS the mechanic. You don't have to, but it's good if you can. So there he's gonna turn around and do a Winds of Winter. So this is an enrage I will kill you. You gotta LOS this. You can also stun this Griffin. So the if you wanna like not lose up time, you can stun this. I'll show you on another one. No, he was the death wish. He was talking about the the dread buff, the dread buff, and you actually cannot right click the dread buffs up for some weird reason. All right, Wolf. Uh, I don't think we have ever pulled one, but this guy does not. Like he puts a dot on you. Which, as a tank, is just zero damage, so... Oh yeah, he will also damage buff himself, but even then... This is still no damage to you. So. Alright, so the reason that we have so much time right now, that we gain so much time and that, you know, I'm I'm saying that you really want that time, is because starting from the next floor, there's going to be three key monsters that do ability, and that's going to be remain the same for the, uh, the entirety dungeon, like the rest. There's going to be monsters that do abilities uh, in, in outside of combat, and these abilities kill you. Like, even though you're not in combat with them. So, it's going to make them a little trickier. Uh, like, it's going to make the force trickier tonight. Oh, yeah, we're doing a tutorial today. This card's doing well so far. It might be my seventh area. So, I'd love to find, like, one raising. So, I can have, you know, a raising for everything that's left.
So this guy, reminder, he does a telegraph and he does it again in front. But like on telegraph, so don't move in front. Same thing. And you should not arms line this guy. Because apparently it bugs out their thing. Or, or it has a chance to bug out, bug out their thing. What's the highest damage tank in there? Uh, I think they're all kind of similar, honestly. At least for Warrior, Gunbreaker, and Paladin, I don't feel like any of them is doing more damage than the other. So technically, I'm only missing the Dark Knight. So we're gonna be about. 10 minutes ahead of time right now and we'll use the, we'll use all that time to make sure we navigate the fight safely uh, the force because like i said there's gonna be a lot of monsters that uh have annoying abilities well a lot i mean there's one that's gonna have a very annoying ability uh i mean right now time's still good and we still have things at three so i mean there's no risk of just doing a fight Like I said, this is going to be the hardest set that you're going to do. Okay, perfect. We got the reason. So I'm, I'm pretty confident I should clear this. That's how easy this place is once you've learned the monsters. I'm like, with, with my palms right now, I'm pretty confident. I'm like 99% sure I'm going to clear this. So. It would be, it would be pretty embarrassing if I died after saying that. So anyway, I am 99% sure that you can stun the Griffin when he does the move uh, free, uh, not free fall, uh, Winds of Winter. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna position myself close to a wall just in case I'm wrong. So this, yes, you can stun this. This is an enrage that if you're not line of sight or you know you don't interrupt it in some way, it will kill you. Also, we've entered Monkey Land. Uh, monkeys are monsters that kill you when you are not even in combat. I will show you what they do when I see them. So it's coming, Wind on Winter. Reminder, we can stun, we can also LOS simply. Ah, see that video we? That's a monkey. So I'm gonna explain what monkeys do. Right after this one's dead. So monkeys, that's the this guy. They every minute or so, they'll eat a banana. It's called like a ripe banana. And when they do that, shortly after, they'll do like a chest stomp. That's a huge circle AOE that will one shot you if you're like close to it. Now, the thing, the reason they're not that you like, the reason that you can actually, you know, like play the game with that is you can line of sight it. Like, as long as you, there's no line of sight towards you or uh, between you and him, you will not die from this. So, I'm gonna let this monkey actually do the thing. So, that's any monkey that is out of combat will do this so they every minute or so it might even be a bigger cooldown they will eat a banana or ripe banana and when they do it that you have like three seconds to to like be in a safe position and the safe position is like okay so there it is so ripe banana so as long as you are like as long as there's a wall it's not gonna kill you that that's what you need to know for this monster so what's the way to what's the best way to deal with that? 
uh, is to do the opposite of what I'm doing right now. The last thing you want to do is like lit, let it lit. Because that guy, when you're fighting, he's actually a joke. Like all he's, he's gonna open with a charge that uh, knocks you back a little bit. And then in the actual combat, he, he literally just throws his poop. Because he, all he does is a move called Stool, stool Fell. So I highly recommend that what you do is you just pull every single monkey that could possibly be a nuisance in the future, right? <laughs> that mechanic is totally bananas. It's It catches you off guard, but when you know about it, it's not that bad. It just means that whenever you're about to enter a room, you're gonna make sure there's no monkey that's like about to instantly kill you. You draw the flight back. So I'm, actually, I'm, I'm also going to show you an emergency uh, thing you can do against a monkey or, and uh, multiple monsters, actually. Uh, well, well, I'll show you once I get another monkey. And you can, of course, invulnerable, but, you know, I, I mean, of course, anything that kills you there, you can invulnerable it. Like, that's kind of a given. I'm not going to show the invulnerable on everything. But there's actually something that you can do specifically about monsters that will do spells when they're out of combat. Oh yeah, the eel of the banana. I mean, that's so specific though. It's only if you've got like no region. Uh, you want to know a trick for a uh, water bomb gang? If you if you're targeting nothing when you use it, it will actually go off. Like you don't need a target as as long as you're not targeting something, it will go off no matter the range. No, the griffins are uh, sight. Okay, so first thing you do whenever we're like starting the 61 to the end stretch is you gotta make sure you look around. Sorry, as soon as you start the 67, uh, sorry, 76 stretch plus, you gotta make sure you always check all the rooms because you need to make sure there's no monster that kills you out of combat. Uh, in that case, there's not nearby, so we can just pull things uh, pretty comfy. So the bird doesn't do much, he's gonna do a gaze, and I think that's it. Yeah, that's the macro for home gang. That's someone posted in the chat. If you use that macro, then you can use the home gang without a target. Well, I mean, while you still have a target selected. Sorry. So all this bird does is a gaze. So that's pretty easy to avoid. And I believe you can even stun the bird if you want. All right, so this lion uh, is the only monster that has an ability you cannot LOS, so I'm going to show it to you. So he's going to do a big line AoE, and you actually cannot LOS this. As far as I know, it's the only ability in the entire dungeon that can never be LOS, so I, I'm going to be very careful with that. Because you're going to be... You're going to have to get into the habit of like, line of sighting everything. But it doesn't work for the lion. So this one you actually have to respect. You have to always go behind. Because it's a very large, very long rectangle. Alright, Statine is kind of scary. Not that bad, but you can't be greedy on this guy. So he's gonna do something called chirp. Whenever he's casting, you need to move away from it. It's like a small AOE that kills you. But it has no telegraph. So it's kinda hard to know exactly the range, so I wouldn't like I would not be greedy on this. And he does it quite often too, so. 
Okay, he's about to do it now. Yeah, there. How hard do I think he's gonna get to get four? Is it going to be to get the four care on someone that has never done deep dungeon before? As a group? Do you raid? If you raid, I don't think it's gonna be that bad. Now, if you don't raid and you don't do deep dungeon, I think it's gonna be pretty hard. Yeah. But on the upside, once you've got your one clear, like once you've got one clear in there, there's not really RNG for the like the three other clears. This is a very RNG proof place. So line E we then behind. Oh yeah, if you clear TUP, I mean you still gotta learn what the monsters do, but it shouldn't be that bad. Uh, so right now time is amazing. Uh, that's why I, don't, I like at this point it's really good. And so at this point I don't even think I need to use a fight anymore because we've got about. 20 minutes to do three floors and we already are like all four into this one what floor do i recommend having max e to pull four uh when you start like the 61 no it's, that's really when you start like the i guess the 71 i'd want like max arms as possible but like not even true like i if i had 90 90 i think that would be fine all right so we're gonna pull the team even though i don't really want to but he's the only guy that's nearby so you can also, I did it earlier, you can stun uh, this thing. So you can actually keep a little bit of uptime. There's a trap close to the wall. That's a reminder that one is uh, you have a minute of less damage and more damage taken. So there's a monkey there. I'm going to show you what you can do in an emergency on a monkey. So if you're ever like in a room with a monkey and for whatever reason you just did not like have time to pull it. If he ever does the right banana, you're going to die. Like you are dead in, in uh, like three seconds as soon as he does it. What you can do to survive, and, and and of course I could hide right now, but I'm let's I'm pretending I'm like I cannot escape. Okay. So you, what you can do, you can pull it. He's gonna get a damage boost, but he's at least not gonna kill you, like with the banana, like because it, as soon as you pull it, it's gonna interrupt the tongue. So that's that's very important to keep in mind because that's actually pretty useful on multiple monsters. So if you're ever by a monkey and he does the thing, you should pull it. Like, and it doesn't even matter like if you're in a group, if you're solo, if you're like astro, if you're like bard, you need to pull it because you're gonna die otherwise. The only reason I would not is if I was a tank with involve. That's it. Still not out, that's fine. 
Oh, uh, this floor has been pretty tricky. Well, not tricky, but this floor has been annoying. Very high kill requirement. Uh, we can we can just use a strength if we want. We are sitting at three anyway, so just speed it up. Speed up the next one too. So that gives us a lot of time to do the two floors. About uh, 18 minutes. So. This is a blind. Oh, we have an Onion Knight in the bag. Uh, so you know that's interesting. Because we actually have two choices there. Like we could use a Dodra there which would be slower but then makes the bus faster if we use a knight on the bus or we could do the opposite i honestly think there's like no difference between doing either of them so i'll just use dodra there and i'll bring the knight to the bus it will make the bus faster okay so there's a monkey there he's doing the thing so that's why you always have to be looking because now if we, if we were walking we would die now so and what do you do when you see the monkey? You instantly pull it, because you don't want to leave that guy alive. There's a ninja there, so as a reminder, ninja, I will kill you if you are below 20%. Well, if you're at 20 or less, so we're gonna make sure we keep a healthy uh, L bar. Can you LOS the monkey stream? Uh, yes. In fact, that's probably the best way to handle it. So, if there was a monkey, uh, like is, if that bird was a monkey, I could be there and I would be safe even if it looked like I was in the telegraph. It's it's usually safe to assume that anything can be LOS except a specific monster, the lion. Like the lion I just fought. But for some reason his move cannot be LOS. But everything else, yes, can be LOS. Ah, so there's a Dread Beast there. We don't want to mess with that. Right, good luck on this set. It's the hardest one, in my opinion. So if you can get past this, you're pretty set for it here. Well, at least we have good chances for it here. Okay, so Dread Beast, reminder, we don't want to pull this because this is... This will cost us a storm or a raising if we pull this. That there's no other way we're gonna kill that. Yeah, they are sight, so you can sneak behind them. You wish the game itself had an indicator on how things are growth? I also wish that, honestly. I wish. I I, I, I thought of this in MLI and QTD as well. It would be very nice. Alright, so Lion, reminder, this is the only guy that you cannot LOS, as, as at least as far as I'm aware. 
But when he does the, the line move, you cannot LOS him. You must be behind. We know there's a monkey there. Now this one's actually kind of out of the way, so this one I don't think we need to pull it. Because there's not really any reason we would go back to this room. Sorry, hit my mic there. I think we've seen everything on this floor, except the Thunder Beast. I, I just briefly showed it, unfortunately. Uh, so as a reminder, the Thunder Beast is the patrol that's like a lightning guy. And he's, he does a donut and a point blank. But you never really see the donut solo because you need to be far for him to like do it. And the point blank has no, no tails and no cast bars. But you know it's coming because you can, you if you wiggle left to right, then at some point he's going to stop facing you and that's when you know he's starting to cast it. Uh, you would like to embark on a solo run. Do you have to learn the attacks of the mobs directly to be comfortable during the run? Yes. This deep dungeon specifically, I mean, I mean, assuming you, assuming you don't want to do it blind, then yes, you must learn what the monsters do. If you don't know what the monsters do, there's no shot you're going to do this. Uh, unless you're willing to spend like, you know, dozens of attempts blind. Okay, so there's a monkey there. Ah, oh, look, he's doing the thing, so we're gonna LOS right there. Just like that. And the key's there, so we're of course going to clear out this room. Yeah, it was a great challenge. It was a great challenge. You're going to have to do to you're going to have to do your own mods though to look up what each monster does. Uh, I mean, that's what I'm doing right now. This this uh, stream is a guide for warriors, so I've I've explained what every monster does up to this point. Uh, what every boss does. I've explained deep dungeon mechanics. I've explained how to manage your time a little bit, and uh, that should be a pretty good bot to watch if you're looking to learn. And also, because everyone asks these questions, so like, which is better? Which job is better to clear? In my opinion, it's better to frog on warrior. Because it's like the simplest thing. You have, it's the, it's the job for which you have to pay the least amount of attention to like, the job itself, right? And it's just very nice to be able to learn the, all the patterns of the monsters and the bosses while also like not having to think about your buttons that much. And then I think once you're, once you're comfortable with the monster patterns, then the best thing to do is switch to your fav your favorite DPS, like your DPS job that you're the, the most able to play. Because you're not going to die, you're going to lose a run because something kills you while you're not paying attention. I mean, really, the most optimal thing is to play the thing that you need to, that you will be able to pay the most attention to the monsters. Like, for example, me, when I play Monk, I think Monk's really good. But when I play Monk, it, I had a really hard time because so much of my focus was on my rotation. Instead of, like, just the monsters. How many times did I win in this EO? This, I have cleared set, six times solo, one time in a group, and this, this day would be my seventh clear if I clear. Uh, so we're clearly going to have too much time on the bus, but I mean, time is not going to be tight at all later, so it's fine to have uh, more time there. Because, you know, it means we use too much resource, but that doesn't matter.
no monkey where is this song from it's the song that plays when you're in the belly of cerberus in world of dark world of darkness don't ask me why they put that in but that's where it's from Tain. Uh, so right now, by the way, we have an Onion Knight for this boss. I'd say that's a little lucky. A little lucky. Usually on this boss, I don't have an Onion Knight to spare. Well, I could spare it, but I'm, I'm trying to keep them. Usually on this boss, I'm going to have like a Dodra or an on Yune. So this boss usually takes around like, like 9 minutes, maybe. Like 9 to 10 minutes. And, but because we have an Onion Knight this time, it's going to be like maybe 6, if even. What's the wait for the new Deep Dungeon worth it? Yeah, I'm having a good time. I mean, I played this for like literally 16 hours the past 5 days. I'm having a great time. Now, is it very different than the other deep dungeons though? Yes, it is. That can be a bad thing or a good thing. And yes, I would say that this is easier to solo than PPD and Evan High. Uh, because in there you need less deep dungeon knowledge and you just mostly it's mostly knowing the mechanics of the monsters and then, and then it's fine it's fine if the rest of your gameplay is not up like is not the best as long as you know the mechanics of the monster you have a shot to clear okay we're gonna do the boss so i would say i would say this is the hardest boss personally at least to me It depends if like it depends if you consider the fact that the the last boss is on 99 a high point of pressure but to me no so like this boss is the hardest yeah. come around your knife uh i recommend use a steel just in case you fail mechanics that's always helpful all right so very simple who is gonna bind me well, first he opens with a no damage tank buster. Then he's gonna set up his mechanic. So he's gonna spawn like a, a node by his butt. There it is. That's the one I'm gonna be bound to. So I am positive and this one is negative. So we're gonna get, we're gonna like attract each other. So I'm gonna get sucked in. And I, I need to get sucked in because he's gonna do a donut. Uh, so we're just gonna do the four things he's doing right now. He did left. Now he did doing right. And then he's doing right again. And we need to get sucked in basically to be as close as we can to the middle. But without, you know, actually gaining in the middle. So it's gonna be around there. Then we'll just stay in the donut like that. Yeah, and apparently, I've never done it that way, but apparently if you stand in front, it's always safe for both the left and the right. So set up of the mechanic. So we're both menace, so we're gonna push each other this time. Uh, so apparently you can always be in front if it's left or right, so we might as well try that out, and that is in fact right. So these lines, you can ignore them by the way. I would not even think about them, because your, your precious brain power should be spent on doing the thing, the push, right? And the lines, you just don't do enough damage to be really like worth thinking about.
Oh, uh, well, we learned something uh, on the job. So apparently when he does left and right, you can respect it like I was, or you can just stand in front. Just since they're at an end goal, it always misses you. So we're negative, and it's negative, so we're gonna push right now. We're gonna get pushed. He does always does four things, so that's the third one. And that's the fourth one, and we're gonna get pushed. I would highly recommend that you just don't care about your uptime and just do the mechanic, because this... If there's something that's gonna one-shot you, it's this mechanic. The middle is a one-shot, guaranteed. If you, go, uh, if you go under the boss during all that, it's a one-shot. The walls, it might be a one-shot. I don't know, but I know the middle is. Okay, the walls give you a strong bleed. The middle is a one-shot. This one I know for sure. Okay, so we're gonna attract each other's. By the way, when I say the middle is a one-shot, I mean it's at as soon as the mechanic starts, it's a one-shot. Like if I went middle right now, I would die. You gotta be very careful about that. So we're going to attract each other's. Yeah, I think it would ignore tank involves as well. Okay, so that fight was very fast because we had onion, bro. We, we made that with 10 minutes to spare and the bombs are like really good, so. Uh, we, we did land mines only twice, don't forget. If you had three size, three weight chains, and honestly you don't really need the weight chain. If you had three size, you could have done land mines like even more, so. Is it safe to tank the EU lines even on a DPS no steal? I don't know about a DPS no steal, but like honestly on a DPS, I would just steal this bus anyway. Because your steals are not going to be useful elsewhere. Personally, every time I've gotten to this bus as a DPS, I've stealed. So I would just steal it and then ignore the line EUs. It's just way easier to do it like, uh, like that. Okay, I'm going to take a 30 minute break again. It's trying to be the last break and then we're going to do the last 20 floors. Uh, which should be pretty comfy. I would say the last 20 floors, they look very cool by the way. But I would say they're comfier than what we just did. So, thank you very, very much for the sub by the way. D Fire 45, thank you. Alright, be right back. Not going to take long.
I am back. All right, just give me a second. All right, sorry. So. Wait, sorry, my chat's been a pain. One sec. All right, sorry. So, 81. I, I do think 81 is easier overall than, uh, well, I, I'd say even like 81 and 91. I think they're both easier than what we went through. Um, so, like, everything down there, everything there at this point kind of like does a gotcha telegraph that you don't know is coming or it kills you. Like, that's the core, that's the persona, uh, Gorman. Uh, there's a few monsters like the Kato that they do like AoEs in their rooms that you gotta be aware of. Uh, Ektai does like a super big thing that blows up. Uh, putting just a white cone. Don't even remember what the Abyss does. Oh yeah, that's like, it does nothing basically. Deep Eye does nothing. Sportoy does nothing. Spectre is the most dangerous monster. It's like a Garm. Uh, it's like a Chimera. But it has, uh, it has like, no donut, point blank. A left sweep, right sweep. Then you gotta like, adjust with. Uh, rate is the same as PUTD, except uh, so it does like a very big AoE, but you cannot interrupt or stun. Uh, and Pegasus just does, uh, it charges you. Yes, this is public. This is Meiji's guide, by the way, not mine. So if you prefer a written guide, I highly recommend this one. Uh, Pegasus just does a charge and that does a move that you need to move away for. It's kind of hard to explain the monsters because I, I, you really got to see them in action. I guess like really register in your brain what's going on. Because there's too much. At this point, there's too many mechanics to explain everything. Uh, but the boss is worth checking out. So. Surprisingly simple, but it looks freaking hard the first time. So first mechanic, and it's always three mechanics back to back to back, uh, non-stop. So first mechanic is going to spawn like three kind of things, like an egg. Well, let's try a ball. So a ball, an egg, and squares. And they're all going to have numbers. So in this case, the squares the squares all have the same numbers. So in this, in, this, in this case, the squares are all one. The ball is two. The egg is three. That's just the order in which they grow up. So like the squares are going to grow up first, then the ball, then the egg. And it's very simple. The squares do line UEs. So it's going to be line UE first. After that, the second one's gonna grow off, which happens to be the egg. It's a, the egg is always a donut. And then the third one grows off, which is a triangle. And the triangle all is always a triangle where the tip starts where the egg is, right? So it's gonna like uh, do a big cone. Basically. And then at the at the same time, like the the secret fourth number is the bus itself. It's going to go to do either a uh, like a cross shaped AOE or a donut. And so in this case, it's a cross shaped AOE. So that's the first mechanic. Very easy, once you get it down. Uh, after that, he's gonna hit you with a tank buster. You don't really care as a tank. Second mechanic. Also looks like a lot's going on, but not really, honestly. So, and it always starts the same way. So there's like squares on two sides. And then once the mechanic starts, they're gonna start shooting, right? Like the ones on the top are gonna start shooting like that. And the ones on the right are gonna start shooting like that, and they'll like they'll it, they'll keep moving a lane. But it'll shoot there, then it'll shoot it'll shoot there, then it'll shoot there, it'll shoot there, and the same time the other side is doing the same thing. It'll shoot up, down, 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 right? So it's like in order. 
and then you're supposed you know to like move in the safe spot after it's shot but then at the same time there's going to be these circle EOEs that you have to deal with it's not that bad uh it's it looks like that you're just kind of running around and then you're going to find a, a like a place where you can run into one of them and then you're going to run into the other one and then you're fine well not that bad then the last mechanic is the hardest one when you don't know what's going on like 10 million things are going to spawn you don't need to care about any of them all you care about is that square so you see that square it's like the corner but one inside so you care about that square times four so all all the corners you care about that like equivalent and all you want to look at is the these two eggs that spawn they'll do try and roll each one will do a crown basically a try and roll right and then oops sorry i maximize the thing and then you just want to look in which directions they're shooting because that will tell you where the safe spot is so in this case so this one on the right is shooting up so it's like a cone that goes like that and then this one is shooting down the towards the middle so it's like a cone that goes like that so you know and like i told you the only four squares you need to remember are these ones uh times four because for each one in each corner so I know, you know right there that the safe spot is the core, like the squares, uh, the square up there, right? And the safe spot within the square is always the outer triangle. So it sounds complicated, but it's not. All that means is that the safe spot is this square in this case. It's always the outer triangle of the square. And that's it for the mechanics. This boss, trust me, is very easy once you've done it like once or twice. Hey, Kira, thank you for the raid. Welcome, guys. We're just working on the warrior clear slash, uh, slash giant, and we're about to enter 81, actually. So. Well, uh, let's do it. Let's do it, then. So, this this set... By the way, there is no more LOS during this set. Uh, from now on until the end, LOS is no longer viable. Like, you can no longer LOS because you're going to see the layout. It's very pretty. great song <laughs> usually i get like garbage songs but that one's great All right uh so multiple monsters that do multiple things so i would recommend you strength and flight the whole time on this set but uh, i'll talk about this later so the persona is gonna like keep dashing onto you he's gonna do a crown and then he's gonna do a point blank the next time he dashes So this will be an AoE, but both of them you have like a lot of time to react, so it's not really an issue. Imagine they put monkeys on there. Oh, there, trust me, there's a, there's, there's equivalents and worse. So AoE. They're just not as bad because you can actually see like far, right? So I know like what the problems are. Alright, so I'm gonna pull the patrol, show what it does. Patrol is easy, just don't get caught off guard. So he's gonna open up by jumping on you. Followed by a glass punch. Glass punch is a small frontal crown, so you wanna move out. After this he's going to attack you. A little bit, he's gonna do a new after this, he's gonna turn back to you and do a glass punch again after a little bit. So you gotta move behind. And the, the tricky part of the fight is now. He's gonna do something. So he just did glass punch. He's gonna jump on you and do another glass punch and selling. So like this one, you need to move back again. So pretty much this guy, you just gotta know that if you see the word glass punch, you gotta move behind it. We got a treasure room there. So these are some of the monsters that uh, do abilities. Oh, I just hope we. So what this guy does, he does a he does a gaze, and then after that he's gonna do something that is very annoying to deal with because he's gonna do a huge, and you cannot stun or interrupt it. 
So you, your only way of dealing with that is to run away. So that's what we gotta do. You gotta run away from it. You cannot LOS this. I'm just gonna break him over there so I don't pull the patrol. I don't know if he does the AoE again after he's done it once, because I've never let him live that long. He might though, but I don't know. Oh, he does. Okay, interesting. So we're gonna pull the course there, that's fine. We just gotta make sure we're away when he does the last punch. So you may have noticed these guys are kind of like blowing up in their either in their room. That's because they keep doing a gaze mechanic that's out of combat. If you look at the gaze, you're you're gonna die. But it's a it's fairly like a fairly small wrench. So it's not that bad. Also, the key is not there, so we don't really have to care about this. Room. So let's just go. All we care about at this point, well, I mean, all, we care, all we've cared about this whole run is finding the keys, so that's what we're going to keep doing. So just make sure you're not running away from that guy when he does the dash because the cone is pretty wide. Uh, pretty long, sorry. We're still not out. That's fine. You should expect... At this point, you should expect you to... Uh, like, be behind on time if you're not using pop to help you. Uh, but but we have enough bombs for it. Like, to not matter. So I'm going to pull one of the guys that... So these guys, like I said, they do a uh, gaze out of combat. You cannot look... So that means you can't look at them. When you are out of combat. What, what they do when you pull them, they will charge you, and then they do a gaze, right? So you just have to make sure you're not facing them. That's all they do. They don't do the charge again, they only do the gaze. They can also be stunned, so that's convenient. So for this boss, we're going to keep an Onion Knight. And preferably for the last boss, which is 99, we will also keep an Onion Knight. So right now, that's like my third slot for the enemy. is like the flight spot where I'll just grab whatever I find and I'll use it on the force. So what I, what I recommend you do for your palms there is I recommend you use all your flights. Uh, back to back to back. And try to fight 
with your strength also. If you, if you get very bad debuffs, using Serenity is also not a bad idea there. So if I got something like, you know, a Gloom, no ability combination, then I would probably Serenity. But if I got just a, if I got just a Gloom, I would probably just live it. Live through it. And the reason we're doing that is because, like I said, you're going to fall behind on time on this set and die naturally. So it's way better to spend your flight uh, early on. Then you will know at the end, like, how much of the really expensive bomb you need to use to clear, you know, make it in time. Because if we don't do it this way, what's going to happen is we're going to climb up. And at the very end, we're going to be very rushed for time. And our only way of like doing it in time will be to use, use all of my like expensive pumps, right? Like the ones that are rare. We want the opposite. Like we want to use the cheap pumps at the beginning so that we can avoid using the expensive one. And then on the last set, we're going to be able to use all the expensive pumps uh, to have like a really easy time. That's by far the best way to do this uh, set. Uh, so I, right now, my strength's out, but I'm planning to fight for a while, so we're just gonna restrain. Even though it's my last strain. Because it's a cheap buff, so... And as you can see, the damage output is just very small from the monsters. So like we, even now, the steel is not really. It would be useful if you're doing like a Nui pull, but that, that's more of like an advanced state. So the steels are really just nice. If you're dead in a very bad situation, you can use it. Or on the bus, they are also nice. So you can you know miss more mechanics. So still, what I recommend you do is you just check all the chests that are from the beginning to the key and you don't really go too much out of your way for the rest. Oh yeah, also last thing. Dummy clones are very common, starting from like the 81 set. And I, I mean like very common. Like you're going to find pl plenty of them. So like your, your third dummy clone, don't sit on it the whole time. I would recommend you use it the first time. I like to use it when I get a bad debuff that slows me down, but not, not my clone, right? So something like blind or no ability is very good if you use a clone because like the clone doesn't care about the buffs, so. But there's definitely no reason to be sitting on three. So like we should be looking and using that clone like as soon as the next floor or the one after. Definitely. Which means that, you know, I don't need to fly the next floor in this case. Because like, let's say I'm planning to use my Yune. Well, she's gonna be, you know, doing a lot of heavy lifting. Uh, heavy lifting so... It's better if I just use her on a floor that's not flighted, right? Because she's, like, she's gonna be there longer. So in this case, we can do exactly that. We can just go onto the next floor and use, plan to use Yune because I have a, an extra, right? Like, I would not be surprised if this chest was also a demi kill. Like, that's how common they are. I'd say about 50% of your silvers are demi clones up there. It's not more. Yeah, exactly. It is Yune again. Well, this one's wasted. 
I would say don't go below one night though. That there's, I would keep like one night guaranteed. For uh, like the 90 boss and the 99. But if you find two demi clones on the same floor, like you know, at the end, you can do much about it. Right, so I'm gonna unite this one. Just to help me speed up. And a reminder, the reason I didn't flight this is because Yune is going to be with me the whole floor. So in that case, I would rather she fought, you know, as many monsters as she is. All we care about is finding the key. So that's what we're looking for. I know that he's not there. A little trait if you see the pilot return in a room. Uh, the key is guaranteed not there because there can never be both in the same room. Well, it, it's in 99, which is an exception. So if you're wondering why we keep saying there's a lot of uh, deep down veterans, if you're following this at all, the, the scene like at all, are gonna say that EO is very different from PewDiePie and Evil Eye. I'd say most of the blame is from these floors I'm doing right now, because you're going to notice they're just not very hard compared to the the other two deep down. Things don't hit hard, uh, and you you find like so many pumps that you're just never going to have like a time pressure. What does the cattle fair do to get it? I don't know. <laughs> I assume it's a one shot. In some way. I would be very surprised if it's not a one shot. It's a 20 second petrification. I am amazed it's not a one shot. I'm not even kidding. That's kind of weird because they made the monkeys one shot you, but these don't one shot you. That is kind of weird. All right, well, uh, now we know. I know we should get out with this kill or the next one because we've played we've killed a lot. Maybe this one.
Oh, okay, so that's a very high kill key. Right now, we're like about on pace, so we're just gonna keep using pumps as we get them. So, this is where we use Rune, that's where we use Flight. Next, we're probably gonna use uh, an Alter just so we can get it down to two. But it's better if the palms are sitting at two because then if I pick them up, I can uh, grab them, right? I don't have to use them on the same floor that I find them in. So yeah, we'll do, we'll do exactly that. We're gonna use an altar. The only pump manager I'd say don't bring to two is your dread, because dread is actually fairly rare, and it's not really necessary to make it through the earlier. So I would only use the dread in like an, an absolute emergency, like you know, like you're gonna time out kind of emergency. Okay, so this is altar. This has a gloom, which is a kind of a big time loss, but we have corrigence, so in that case. Uh, I don't think we should really do anything about the gloom. We should just fight this normally. Oh, well, we have a free Siren key. We'll, of course, use that. That's a treasure room. Not really any reason to mess with that. Unless if the key was there. So the Corrigans, of course, uh, are like one-shot enemies. So that means like we basically have a three-kill head start on this floor. Like if this if this floor was seven kill, but but we really only kill four of them because three of them were free. Now, of course, there's always a chance that the alteration is gonna give you mimics instead. Uh, but that's why it's nice to use the alteration early on because you can't you can't rely on it to get a consistent time save but you can rely on it to like give you a how would i put it like a statistical time save you know like because it, it will save you time over multiple use but like you can't guarantee that one use will save you time so it's nice to use alter early on as well so we're getting right now we're getting a little bit in the because like i said managing your time in this this deep dungeon is not that bad we're getting kind of like into the the specifics like this this is this stuff is pretty important for beauty and MLI. in there i don't think you need to know as much i'm just kind of saying it for just you know saying it by the way we're doing the same strats so we're just gonna keep burning all of our flights you should you should uh, leave this set with zero flights Alright, there's a lot of new monsters that I need to fight on this set uh, to show them up, uh, so we're gonna fight them.
Uh, so the Gormont is actually... By the way, the Mermaids are just ultra thank you comfort everything. So... I don't know why they're like that, but they are. That's why this guy's taking really long. Alright, the Gormont is not that hard. But it's like every monster, right? Like, it's not hard, but you don't know what he does. He's gonna do very similar to the one earlier. He's gonna suck me in. And then you gotta move behind because he's gonna follow up with this uh, move. And the, I, I believe the only other thing he's gonna do is he's going to do a, 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 a circle attack as well. But there's plenty of time to move out of this one. Yeah, it is blinded as well. The reason I'm not removing the blind, by the way, with a, with a Serenity or something is because this is flighted. So this, this requires less skills already. If you ever have a big floor that you don't know where the key is, but and you have you know a good amount of sight, it's not a bad idea at all to use a sight. Like in this case, I don't need to. But especially if there's a lot of patrols, uh, which is making hard, uh, making it hard to move around, using a sight is not a bad idea at all. Uh, I'm going to fight this guy next to show you what he does so this guy only does one thing it's a very wide crown like very wide i'm gonna show you this crown so you just want to be close that's all he does oh sorry he also does this separate simple uh circle It feels like a lot of the MMI mobs by 480 hit a lot harder. Yes, auto attack damage is not is not is just not a thing in there. It's a little bit of a thing if you're a DPS. If you're a DPS, you're going to have to drink like a little bit of potions. Uh, and you know, make sure you don't like do multiple pulls by mistake. On the tank though, it's it's inexistent. Like there's all I'm doing is not even using my cooldown. I'm only pressing blood waiting every time it's up. So yes, all the difficulty is built into the mechanics of the monsters. None of the, the of the difficulty is inside of a, you know, like their their actual damage. So this guy looks scary, but actually does nothing. Does a very big Yui. That looks very cool, but doesn't do much. Then he's gonna do like a small uh, cone. Patrol's coming, so let's just hide there, so we don't have to deal with it. Lots of the patrols up there are proximity, so we gotta watch out for that. Okay, something you can do in that situation, when you're like stuck in a room, 
If you think you're going to have to risk of running through the middle of the room, you can actually safety. We didn't have to right there, but it's an option. Oh, the key's not open. My bad, it's the pile on return that's open. Oh well, we can fight something else then. Uh, I think I fought a deep eye earlier, but I didn't even like said what it do what it does. Oh well, the key's not there. Deep eye does like nothing. Deep eye does a gaze uh, around him. This is not a crown. It's like around him. And then after that, he's gonna like put a vol on you. I missed my storm eye the last three GC like three cycles because of the blind. Nice. Right now, we're still perfectly on pace, not behind, not ahead. Uh, so we're just going to keep using the sights, uh, sorry, the flights. Once we run out of flights, we're going to look into using the more expensive bombs. So like things like Storms or Dread, possibly. Uh, maybe Alter. Overall, fairly unlucky in the pickups uh, of this run, I would say. This is definitely a good... Uh, it's gonna be a good bot, I think, I think, for like, you know, not crazy luck. So there's a high chance this is gonna be a demi clone. It is one. So we could, uh... Well, we should actually... Let's do exactly what we did last. So I'm gonna not flight this, and instead I'll use Yune. She will help me. So with her, we can fight this floor. Uh, now this combination of debuff is very bad for time. In my opinion, uh, something as bad as this, like blind, it's not even the Noadam, right? It's the blind glue. In my opinion, this is uh, worthy of a series. Because even with a clone, this is gonna take like years. So... Okay, this guy does a new E circle. And that's maybe a line. I don't even remember. Does basically nothing, so. Alright, so there's a few new monsters to show up, show off. We'll get to them. This guy sucks you in, then you're gonna move behind. Move behind. So, the horse, he's gonna charge uh, very soon. After the charge, he's gonna do with something called Nicker, like that. This is the point blank EOE, you wanna move away. After that, he's gonna do a charge that pushes you back if you had no shield on you, but I have a shield. He's gonna like knock you back shortly after, you gotta watch out for that. So just make sure you're like facing towards the wall. Then he's gonna do the charge again soon. The one that follows up with the A. This. So when you see the big blue lines pop up, it's time to move away from it.
Okay, we got a treasure room back there, and we need to figure out if the key is inside of there. So we gotta go. Yeah, the only reason you didn't see the knockback there is because my dummy clone shielded me, and shields prevents knockback. Okay, the key's not there, luckily, so we don't have to care. Uh, do I can, I'm gonna use that opportunity to show you what a monster does. So, the Spectre is probably the most dangerous monster on this set. It would not even be a bad idea for the first time you see it to use a Lethargy. So, this guy has four moves that will one-shot you. I mean, everything one-shots you up there, but this guy has four moves on Telegraph. So, we left or right sweep. This one's easy. It's, you know, left or right. Then he's gonna do a donut or a point blank. The donut is called rain gain burst. Uh, so if you see the word rain, the, the way I, I do this is if I see the word rain, I go in. And if I don't see the word rain, I go out. Uh, and I don't even remember what it's called, the one that's not the donut, but that's the way I do it. See, so he, he always alternates. He's gonna do like the sweep first, then one of the rain or donut. Surrounding burst, yes. So if it's surrounding burst, it's a point blank AoE. If it's a uh, ranging burst, it's a uh, donut. And you gotta watch out because the point blank is very big and very fast. So you, like you gotta start moving as soon as it goes up. How would I have dealt with this treasure room if the key was there? I would have first looked if it was possible to get to the key without pulling much. If so, I would have pulled them. If it was too much to get to the key, I would have probably witched and dread on the key, and then I would have brought a little bit of the dread in the next floor to, uh, you know, do damage. All right, this guy only does one move. It's a big line AoE, but it's telegraphed, so it's Uh, we're out. Uh, there will be plenty of time to show you what the raids do. Don't worry. So we'll fly. So Ace Gloom is interesting. It's it's like almost cancels out. Like basically the Gloom defense buff is the same value as the Ace buff. But the Gloom is a little... It's, it's a little worse because like it affects your OGCDs. Whereas your ace only affects your GCDs. Alright, so there's one of the specters. Uh, there's a dread beast too, that's interesting, but we don't need to care about it. Like, well, so, okay, here's something. We could storm this and get the buff from this guy. But this is a flighted floor, and there's only three floors left. So in that case, I, I don't think it's worth By the way, the Spectre is a patrol, which is also part of the reason why it's so dangerous. We gotta do the mechanics, right? So ranging or surrounding. It's range, so we're, out. we're, we're in. Sweep next. It's left. Then it's gonna be rained or surrounding. I hope he does surrounding because I want to show you how big it is, but he keeps doing rain. Like the surrounding is is pretty big. Well, that's fine. I'll pull the other one. Okay, 
Left sweep. Then you're going to do surrounding or ranging. You want to see ranging. So surrounding, that's very big, so you don't move fast. Okay. That that kills a lot of people. Left sweep. Is it ever safe to go for the Dread Beast as a DPS? Assume, assuming you have at least a Storm. Yeah, I'd say the damage one is worth it. Uh, if you've got a Storm to spare, it's worth it. And you can do it like fairly safe. You need to pull the monster to on you and then Storm while it's running away and then finish it up with like a range of the ability while it's still running towards you. But if, he, if the monster managed to get one hit off on you, you're probably dead, so... So we'll just keep pulling. Uh, next floor is the same plan. We're gonna uh, probably fight. Uh, something that's an option is we can also sight and maybe try to find landmines. And something even more, like, but a little more advanced we can do is we can even uh, sight or safety and use a lethargy and do a near -reaching. But I don't really think, I don't really want to do that because that's a little bit advanced. So I'd say right now, what it's looking like is I'm going to flight one more time and then i will alter or storm the last four and th that should let us get to the bus with plenty of time to spare I might have shown every monster so far. I don't know. I don't remember if there's any I missed. Uh, I'll know. I guess. So yeah, we fight and fight this. And then the last floor, we can maybe even fight it normally. But I think I want to storm it just to uh, make it to the boss with plenty of time. So as you can see, the monsters are way less crazy out there. Like, they, they have more mechanics, but I think the fact that the layout is so open-ended makes it kind of easy to deal with the mechanics. So it's really only about knowing what the monsters do. And like, for your actual commander management, it's just mostly using whatever you have is at 3, it's at dread. And also, uh, you emptying out your flight and your strength. And I would honestly say out of all my runs, this has been the least lucky with the pickup. So, you know, I only have a... I only have a sample size of 6, but it's still, you know... Still a sample size. Uh, well, it's of 7. I have a sample size of 7 with this one. The, the last set are just very generous with pickups. Like, they're, they're made to have things drop. Uh, you don't you don't want any flights for 91 plus no i don't uh, i don't want any of them for 91 plus i prefer to use them there because then that lets me keep my like let's say precious bombs for the next set as much as possible we got a ring so you can see right now we're getting a little bit of a situation i've got to be careful Left.
I would say I empty out my flight on all rolls. No exceptions. Surrounding burst. I do it on all rolls. It's just that I prefer to do it this way. So that I can then carry all my strong bombs in the last set and like blast through it. It's especially more true because this set I'm doing right now is super easy to fight. Nothing's really a threat, so like, it's just a very good time to use your flights. It's just, you know, flight means you're going to be fighting. Which floor sets do you always use raising? So I recommend that uh, the way you should raise is you should only... That's the first ring we found this set, by the way. I recommend you raise every set you've never seen the first time you get into it beyond 30. And then once you know everything, I think using your raising sign from 61 is the way to go. 61 plus is where things start killing you, even if you know like what they do. So yeah, I think I'm going to do exactly what I said. So on the next floor, I'm going to storm. Probably like, you know, do a sight and a storm. Uh, then we're going to have a lot of boss, uh, sorry, a lot of time on the last boss to use a on your knight. And then the last set is going to be very easy because on the last set, we need yeah, all we need. In fact, if you ever want me to prove my point, I can do the last set opening no chest. I'm like 100% sure. So I could take a gamble there. I could instead of using my uh, storm, I could alter because there's a chance that if I got corrigence, I would have enough time to do it. But uh, rather than take the gamble, I think I would rather just take the safe play, which is the storm. Because if I take the gamble and I get mimics, then I, I kind of waste my alter. Ah, perfect. So this is no regen. Uh, which is perfect for the storm. And in fact, there was even a storm waiting for me. That's pretty funny. So I mean, in this case, I just use a storm and let it rip. If I did not get a no regen, though, it would not have been really different. All that would have been different is that I would have used a, a sight or a safety. Then I would have pulled any monster that's not hard. Uh, then I would have, you know, once I had like seven on me, I would have just killed them. Are most monsters in the last two sets proximity aggro? Uh, I'd say it's like 50 50 with sight and proximity. Even myself, I don't know yet, like all of them. By the way, I've never fought a raid. I think it's the last monster I, I never fought, so I'm gonna show you what it does. So, raid's very simple. Uh, he's gonna do a scream like almost immediately, which is like a, a non telegraph, usually. You move away. After that, he's gonna do a circle on you. And that's it. That's all he does. He's gonna do the raid again, uh, sorry, the stream again after like 30 seconds. Is it true that 91 plus silvers always have demi clones or explode? I think no. I think they do give you either pull sometimes. But now that you said it, I'm like unsure. It <coughs> <coughs> sorry. This stream is stunnable. Nope. This stream is not stunnable, not interruptible. You got to run away from it. Okay, here's the plan on the next set. On the next set, I'm not going to open any chests anymore, except silvers, because that'd be I'd love to get an onion knight, so I can just uh, bring onion knight on for 100. That's kind of the thing I've got going right now in my cares. Uh, but I'm going to not not open anything because uh, I I'm just gonna prove you that 
there's way too much time in this dungeon. Like, you, you don't need good luck to clear. So I'm not going to open any more chests. And even with that, by the way, like, quote-unquote, like, restrict restriction, we will still clear with plenty of time left. If I had to guess, we're going to have, like, two, two tries on the bus. Do mobs not aggro when they're 1 HP? Correct. There's a weird thing where if a monster is 1 HP, well, low HP, it doesn't aggro. Like, it, it, it doesn't see you for some reason. Don't know why it works that way. Yeah, there's exceptions like Mimics. I remember that. Alright, so we're gonna fight this with Onion Knight. So I'm gonna do exactly what I did the last uh, few bosses. I'll use a steel, just in case I fail mechanics. Just like, where else are you gonna use your steels on tank? Well, nowhere, let me tell you. So we'll just steal plus Onion Knight, and this should die very fast. Hey, thanks for the raid, killer. Thank you for the raid. Now I'll explain the boss though, but thank you for the raid. So this boss, very easy. We're gonna do three mechanics. First one is the one, two, three. So the one is the cone, the two is the lines, and the third is the triangle. So we just want to be in the cone. Then we want to be out of the lines. Then we want to be in the cone. And then he's going to do a donut or a cross shape thing. In this case, it's the donut. Now he's going to do a tank buster, which does very little damage. Or tank at least. Next is this mechanic. It's the one with the... You're going to see two lines of lasers that are shooting, you know, like, opposite. And at the same time, there's going to be circles on you. All you gotta do is bait the circles around for, like, a little bit. And then you need to go in one lane. And then get ready to go in the other lane, like that. Very simple mechanics. Especially because the circles, they actually stop shooting at you before this is even over. Now, this is the one that's, like, a little difficult. You need to look at the two eggs. And then depending on where you're shooting, you, you need to know where the safe spot is. And as a reminder, it's always going to be one of the four squares. Of like one of the four inner second squares. So and then it just repeats. So one, two, three. So lines first into donut, into triangle. We can wait there. Line where I go up. Then the donut. Then the triangle. Then the fourth number is going to be a donut or a cross shape thing. It's the donut here. <clears throat> lane Buster. That's going to be the lane, uh, the lane thing again. Which always starts in the same position, by the way. It's always the right one always starts there and then the... The other one starts there. We can just do this. Go in the lane. Then just be ready to go into the next one. Then it's gonna be the eggs again. I like to position my camera this way, by the way, so I can always see what's going to happen. In that case, it's gonna be this one. That's the one, two, three. Lines into triangle, into donut. That's probably one of the most annoying layouts. So we're gonna make sure we go to the triangle, then back in the donut. And then it's the donut for the bus. Gonna be 10 bus for next.
All right, and it always starts around there. It's gonna shoot like down, and then this one. Goes. Just get ready to switch lane. By the way, this mechanic always it's always the same. You could actually have like a, a hundred percent consistent setup for it. I just kinda wing it every time. But you could have a consistent setup. So this safe spot is gonna be there again. Because you see these two are doing two cones, right? And so it's it's basically these cones that decide what the safe spot is gonna be. But just as a reminder, because I'm not sure if that was clear. The safe spots, the four safe spots during like the whole mess are like these four. So like the, the whole mess with all like the lines and the two eggs, it's always one of these four spots. So like literally all you gotta look at is the, the eggs that are gonna be like, uh, I don't know, like let's say these two eggs. You just kinda look at them like that. And then depending on where their crown is shooting, you know which ones are gonna be safe. A very easy boss once you can figure it out. Alright. So last set. So if you didn't know, there's a boss on the last set as well. It's not like Beauty Dina on the high. Uh, there is a lot of monsters that do things on this set. In fact, I don't even want... I'm not even going to go over them right there because there's just too many. I'll go over the boss. I'll explain the monsters as I do them inside. Okay, this boss is just a pure knowledge check of, like, the mechanics. Once you know, once you know the mechanics, it's not that bad. So he always opens the fight by showing you the mechanics. So he's gonna show you like what the mechanics do without really like you know adding them together. So very first thing he's gonna do, I believe, is he's going to I don't even know what he's gonna do first. Let me just get a reminder. Fire those some. That's gonna be the fire ice thing, I believe. So he's basically the thing he does is he does this parallel sum parallel. Well, you know, para dot sum, which will put you uh give you a nice or fire volume. You can see it in your debuffs. And then that interacts with the rest of the mechanics. So Cali Bernie is gonna like play swords that are gonna like go back in the same direction they went. So that's th that's the first interaction with your debuff. So you right now I have the fire vone, which means fire kills me. So when he does that, I need to look at which side is ice, and I need to be on ice. Basically the opposite. Like I always need to be the opposite. And then at the same time, you get to see how the swords work, right? So when he shoots the swords, remember how he shot them in the cone? Uh, whenever, like, it's time for them to come back, they will, like, go back in the same cone, but, like, cross on the other side as well, right? Like, like an orderless. So that's the first mechanic you gotta know. Second thing he's going to show doesn't really matter too much. He's doing basically... Well, no, it does matter. He's gonna do something called Empty Souls Caliber or Solid Souls Caliber. Uh, if it's solid, you want to be out because it's a point blank. If it's empty, you want to be in because it's a donut. And basically, he's gonna like combine this with a mechanic that you just can react to. Like, he's gonna do like red things on the ground or green like triangles. You can always react to it. So Caliber needs the swords. A trick for the swords. He's always going to face a direction and then do the swords in that direction. So you can see like the, the arrow there where he's facing. He's always going to do it in that direction and then, you know, like the two other directions. So you can always position yourself in a way where you're not going to, you know, like get clipped by it. So there's three sets of sword and that's the main mechanic. So we do not power that sum, which is going to give you ice or fire bone. So in that case, we just fire a bone. So right now, we need to be hit by uh, by ice. Because if we hit, get hit by fire, we'll die. So he's going to do something called Frost Forge or Fire Forge. 
which is basically like the it's like the element of his move that will kill you if you if you fail so right now he's doing frost forge which means to survive frost i need to be the opposite i need to be fire uh so in this case i happen to already be fire which in my which means that when the swords go off because you're going to notice one set of sword is ice one set of sword is fire and one set is normal but since I don't need to switch my debuff, then I just need to not get hit by anything. So I'm just going to stand in the safe spot. No, you cannot loot raisins from 81 to 99. This top dropping from 81. Uh, so anyway, right after you've switched your debuff or kept it, he's going to do empty souls caliber or solid soul caliber. So you're going to go in if it's empty, do not. Or out if it's solid because it's a point blind. Then at the same time, he's going to do either the triangles or the red things. Either For either of them, you can react, so it's fine. Then he's going to do the frost forge or the fire forge, and you will survive as long as you kept. Uh, as long as you got the, the, the right element. After this, he's going to do Ed's glacialis or Ed's fireless. Uh, the, the ice one is very easy. There's a safe spot. There's eight safe spots in the arena. Uh, it's hard to show them to you. It's it's way easier to show them in the game. But you see there's like this little shape. That's like an arrow almost. There's like eight of them. Whenever this mechanic happens, you can actually stand on the tip where I am of any of them. And that will be a safe spot for every single uh, possible like combination of ice. So maybe we can see it there. No, we can't. But it's basically a safe spot. Each one of them is a safe spot for this whole mechanic. And then after that, he's going to do the fire sword, uh, sorry, the sword move again, where you need to be hit by the opposite because you have a vault. So right now I have ice vault, so I need to be hit by fire. So I go on the fire side. And then he repeats this mechanic forever. Uh, I want to show you just a, when, what happens when you have to switch your element. So there I, there I have. So there he sets the swords again. He's on a paradox sun, which will give me ice or fire. In that case, I get fired. So then I need to see his next move. So his next move is Flame Forge. So it's the same element as me, which means the only way I can survive this is I need to be the opposite. I need to become ice. So how do I become ice? I look at where the ice swords are. There they are. And so I need to do at the opposite of them. Uh, well, technically you could also go near them, but I like to go at the opposite. So you do at the opposite. And you get hit by only one of them. So you see there's like five lines, right? You want to get by hit by one. It's going to switch your Vaughn to ice. And then at the same time, the empty or solid stuff is going to happen. And then you need to do, do you know, do it. So in this case, it was a donut. And now we survive this. And then there's one more thing you need to know. It's about He's about to do it. So he's going to do some fire puddles sometimes. That's actually fairly easy. You just need to, you know, not stand in them when they blow up. That's it. Uh, and that's all the mechanics of this fight. It's a lot of mechanics, but it flows really well together. Once you've done this fight a few times, it's it's pretty cool, but it's pretty easy. And like there again, we are fire vuln, so we don't want to be on fire. So we look at the sword and we go on the ice side. So I think that's all I need to explain for the boss. Uh, so we can just go. Uh, monsters, are, there's a lot of monsters to explain. So uh, don't worry. We'll get through that. <laughs> monsters aren't hard. They just have a lot of mechanics. Good song. Alright, so of course you would use a raisin if you had one there. So if you have any strength left, definitely use them on the first floor because you're likely to fight. Now this ball is a proximity patrol, probably one of the worst monsters up there. Uh, this guy does many things. So when you pull it, he's going to do something called high voltage, which is a huge AoE. Uh, so you can do dodge this in two ways. First way, you can actually just run away. It's very big. And I'll show you the second way after. After that, he's going to do a point blank or a donut. So, 
the the point blank is called something but the donut is called ring some something right so that's the way repelling that one is the point blank. so you move away and the other one the donut is called ring something yeah starting from 31 plus monsters have a 10 minute respawn time so high voltage the second way to do this on a tank is you can just interrupt very convenient as a tank but it's important to know that you can run away from it if you are ever in a situation where you don't have your interrupt or you know it's down uh car he's gonna push you back a lot of times i think four times if i if i just let him push me back you're gonna see what it looks like so you definitely want to face your back to a wall after that he's gonna do a frontal cleave like that so the way you want to fight this guy is obviously you want to face the wall like that. Yes, tanks and range GPS are the only ones that can interrupt. So fight this guy facing your wall, uh, facing your back on the wall because you need to be able to move behind when he does uh, this. Oh man, I forget. I forgot I, I, I said I was not going to open any chest. My bad, sorry. I forgot. Alright, so ball, I highly recommend you kill this patrol whenever you see it. It's just way too annoying to keep it alive. So we're gonna interrupt this. Then he's gonna do repelling or ring. Are repelling. You're in high voltage again, but he's gonna die. Alright, this egg, not hard. All this guy does is he does a big uh, code. That's all. Just make sure you're close, then you move behind. Did you go to some? Sasa, thank you. Yes, do not LOS. On, the, on this set, LOS is gone. Like, you can't LOS me. So whenever there's a mechanic, you gotta be far away from it. Or, you know, like, uh, behind it or something. But uh, these walls do not LOS. So I'm just going to check the silvers, because I'd like the Onion Knight. <laughs> Or floor 100. Alright, so this guy only does one thing. Uh, he does auto cannon. Which is a line AOE, but he does something when he dies. Same as the sprites we saw earlier. When he dies, he's gonna blow up. It's a slightly bigger explosion, so just watch out. He's gonna blow up. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It's fairly big. Not that big, but... You know, a good wrench. So let's pull the patrol. So he's gonna do repelling or range. Range is in, repelling is out. That's repelling, so that's out.
Final page. No, interrupt cannot miss. Interrupt can never miss, even if it's a blinded four. So you can always rely on it. Uh, same with stun, by the way. Stun can never miss. So what we're gonna do there, uh, we're gonna use all the altars early on, just so we can see if we're lucky with Trojans or not. Can I talk about aggro types there? So I don't know them all by heart, uh, but there's a lot of proximities and a little bit of sounds. So this guy I'm fighting is proximity. Uh, the patrol, the bolt patrol I keep fighting is also proximity. The little green cannons are proximity. Uh, the, the cars, these guys are actually sound. Uh, I'd say it's mostly in proximity on this last set though. If you want to know what, uh, like, if the monsters are side or proximity or, like, you know, south, highly recommend you check out Meiji, Meiji's guide. Because for her, she, she listed every monster and what it is in her guide. It's her rhythm guide. Oh. And we're out. So this guy's proximity, like I said. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the way I remember is it does. If it looks like it's gonna be like something kind of weird robot, it's probably person. Uh, so we're gonna alter there, and also there's no reason to hold on to your app monsters anymore. Though, though in our case, we're not checking chests, so it doesn't really matter. But if you were, you know, in a natural run, then yeah. I'm gonna kill the ball first. I'm gonna use a strength uh, again. Ah, so there we go. Rain, that's in. How much time does for 100 takes? The, the run, I think, is like a minute 15 seconds or so. Yeah, these guys are sound. That's actually pretty useful to know because they're like everywhere. So you can just walk past them. If you have one raising left, last two sets, which one do you prefer using? I use I prefer using a raising on this set rather than the previous one. Because the previous one is pretty easy monsters. He's there. Uh, we still have not found the altered room. 
But sometimes that's just life. It's like just too far to really take advantage. Oh, I like the end all, to end all the first floor of a set. So for 71 specifically, uh, landmines. I'll do landmines. Oh, okay, we done limits. For 81 and 91, I tend to strength like really early, like uh, right away, and fight uh, the first floor with the strength. So since we're done mimics, I don't uh, really want to deal with them, so I'll just go back to the key and fight uh, my way up. So reminder, this guy's gonna push you back a bunch of times. Then do a big crown like that. Well, not really crown, like rectangle. Fighting two enemies, I would recommend you Witch if you ever fight two things on this set. Me, I'm comfortable fighting two, I think. Alright, so that's gonna be in or out, that's out. Trying to turn up this again. Uh, interrupt man is making this guy so much better than on other job. If you're playing a job without an interrupt, this guy is a huge pain. Yes, so that's nice. So there I'm intentionally pulling the proximity guys first, by the way, because if I were to get out, he's the most likely to be in my way. Yeah, you can interrupt the voltage on cooldown as well. So. Well, right now you might, you might be looking at the time and sweating, but this is the way this set is gonna go. Like your first few fours are gonna be ultra slow, and then at the end you're gonna like power through everything in like two seconds. Because like we're keeping all the bombs for the very annoying monsters. Is it stunnable? No, it's not. Burn into push. Got you. This is a very high kill key. Wow. <laughs> we fought we fought so much.
By the way, I'm not saying it every time, but these guys, I of course face like a wall when I'm fighting them. Because uh, if you're not, there, it's just like a thing. And it's likely that you would get pushed in the trap as well. I'm not getting the gold, but I get the bronze and the silvers. I have so much fragments now. Alright, so I'm going to do a nap once and another altar, because maybe we get Krogens. Alright, so this is the accommodation debuffs you just don't want to deal with. Like this, I'm not fighting this. So this, we're gonna have to find a way to do something there. By the way, I'm sorry, I right played this chest without even thinking about it. This was an altar, so I'm not gonna use it. So what's a good thing to use there? Uh, technically, we use an altar, so like, there could be Trojans waiting for us somewhere. Or Mimits, we don't know that. So we're on Mimits. So, I think this is a good way to burn a Dread. Dread... This is the first time we're going to use a Dread. Uh, a Dread is going to let you one-shot monsters as you like run up to them. So I'm going to do exactly that. But all these monsters will be one-shot with the Dread. So all we got to do is make our way to the key. By the way, this was a terrible floor. Like, tons of patrols and the debuffs. So what you saw in the AoE there... There's going to be a lot of monsters on this set that they do uh, like the monkeys, like they blow up in other rooms, so be, be careful. This guy's going to blow up, by the way, when he's dead, so don't be near. Like that. We even have the landmine there, so we could have had even landmine this if we really wanted to. That is a ridiculous skill count. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. So we're we're somehow somehow not uh, sorry, somehow not out with that, but we'll just find something to kill. They surely gonna open that skill. Yeah, I didn't open. Anyway, so I'm gonna show what the Goose does. He does a big swipe and a big swing. Nothing you've not seen. You've not seen. He opens with swipe. Then he's gonna charge you. And then he does swing, which is around. And then he always does this pattern, I believe. So he's gonna like, you know, attack me a few times, do swipe. Which is a front. And then he's gonna do swing, which is around. So that's actually a floor where I, the, the regen potion, I'm actually needing it. Because for at least this specific monster, I could not do this with no ability aim. Rare instance of like the regen potion being useful on warrior. But if I if I had pulled an easier monster, then we would not have needed the potion. So you know it's kinda it is kinda like a self-created problem there. So it is surely gonna open with this shield, because this is at least 10, I think. If not more. Yeah. 
Uh, no, you don't need steel for DPS. As long as you don't have like bad debuffs, you should not need steel for any monster. It's only when there's bad debuffs involved and like, then yeah, in that case, maybe. But without bad debuffs, no. We're gonna fly this. Yeah, uh, you just charge regen potion on DPS. That's why, like, it doesn't really matter. Oh my god, I did it again. I keep opening chests without thinking about it. Sorry about the muscle memory. I got an altar and then the third I'm not using. Okay, this guy uh, blows up, basically. When he's left in the room, he's gonna blow up. I just want him to, sh to do it so you can see. That, that beastly roar, this is an AoE, this like the monkey. But in this time, you cannot LOS it. So like, if you're close, you're dead. Same thing as the monkey. If you're like in a really bad spot, you could pull. You could like pull him while he's doing it. Uh, luckily, this guy does actually nothing while you're fighting. So like, he does a charge move, but it's more of a, like a team, a group thing. He doesn't actually do anything solo. So. Yeah, this is a pretty bad combination of debuffs. So I will actually use a unit there. Like when you get blind, it's a really good excuse to use a demi throw. Because they're not affected by it, so. Just trying to find the key right now, real hard. Uh, I'm gonna show you what the motor bit does. It's not even too special. Okay, I'm still trying to find an onion knight for the floor 100, by the way. Nice, we got it. We got it. Alright, so this is a clone that we could st we could storm this for the buff, but let's not do it. But yeah, we this would be a pretty decent storm. So this guy does a gaze into a swinge which is like a huge cone where he's facing like that spike the content uh, turn around So by the way, I'm sorry about the gold chest I opened by accident. I wasn't paying attention. It was, I know, I remember it was a liturgy and an altar, so I will not use them. To be fair. Uh, Mother bit. I can show you what this does. This is also kind of a uh, no big deal. Uh, all this guy does is a Niwi circle on you. Followed by an untelegraphed line Niwi where it's facing. So he's gonna face me. And then he does a line Niwi. Like that. So I believe I pulled everything on this floor that I could have shown. Might have a witch chain there. Yeah, let's witch chain. 
could have fought these two at the same time, I think, but let's just switch in because we're sitting on three anyway. I, I missed two felt leaves and primal ran on the mother bit. Nice. Alright, empty's open, but we gotta kill this guy. So right now we're going on the fifth floor and we have five, six, seven, eight left. So we have four floors that we need to do. And we got two dreads, two storms, so technically we don't need to fight anything else from this point on. But it's why I told you like this 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 set is spooky at the beginning, because you're like, oh my god, like it took me 15 minutes to work for. But not, not really. Because now we're gonna rush through the uh, everything else. Though, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, uh, there's apparently over. Oh, <laughs> okay, that's funny. Th this is a uh, apparently this there's walls in QTD. Man, how do I let, let me wait in because so I can like recover my thought. Man, <laughs> there's certain walls that kind of glitch out. And will make monster like on aggroes from you, which is exactly what happened there. It on aggroes and then on re aggro uh, immediately. No, it's it's like a, a weird bug with the a, a weird bug with the, the geometry sometimes. Like they just on aggro for no reason. That happens like in PTD, but I didn't know it happened there too. So. So, uh, let's, uh, we can just kind of blow up everything that's left. But I still need to show the monsters, so, you know, not really. Damn, so many Dread Beasts. So, I sh I've shown the Grozo already. Uh, I'll show the Orto Chimera. By the way, these guys are... Uh, very good candidate if you are going to use a liturgy to you know make things easier these guys are probably the worst monster to pull in there so chimera has like five moves uh donut point blank and a couple of bread things so this dragon's voice is a donut it's in none of these are still addressed by the way if you see anything that's like a bread it's in front so you go behind Dragon's voice. Every time he charges you, he's gonna do Ram's voice or Dragon's voice. Engulfing Ice is a bait frontal crone. Dragon's Breath is a bait frontal crone too. Now we're kind of in a weird spot because uh, I'd, I'd rather try this patrol around a little bit, so give me a sec. What? what? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's just he's trying to... Wait, what the fuck was that? Dude, I got fucking distracted there. Alright, fine. I'll use a witch chain. Damn it. Dude, why do we keep seeing weird things happen? Alright, let's let's dread this so I can you know. <laughs> I, I I think I know what was happening there. It's because he charges you when he's gonna do like a move. And I feel like he was trying to charge me, it wasn't working. I, I got scared. You know why I got scared? Because I thought I was DCing. I thought I had DC there, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Well, you kind of saw what it, it did. I think I showed I showed most of it. Basically, this guy does like it charges you, then it does a donut or a point blank. 
Uh, then after that, you basically, if anything does something called like breath or ice, it's a front uh, cone. And if he does something called scorpion tail, it's a bad thing. It's something in his butt. But he does this one really. I'm gonna pull this one to show what he does. So this one does a very easy move. It's you just gotta go behind it. It's like a three, uh, uh, a 300 degree cone thing. So you just gotta go behind it. I have no, <coughs> sorry, my voice tragic. I have no idea what the camera did. I have a feeling it has to do with its shards, but I've never seen that. 270, thank you. So again, go behind. Let's just move in a good spot. If I did pull this uh, guy by mistake, I would... Uh, the Chimera would Lethargy. But you need it, bro. By the way, these arms are sight. Uh, I I was convinced they were proximity, but they're actually sight. <laughs> it does seem all the cylinders have been demi kills or explosions only. Oh, interesting. So maybe it is like that. All right. So I mean, clearly we're getting drowned in bad debuffs there. Uh, so I guess I'm gonna show a storm. Because there, sh there should be more of these monsters to show in the next floor. So a storm. You gotta pull monsters that don't do too much shit. But you can also make your life a little easier with a liturgy there. Uh, so because the thing is we... Sorry, we want to be in combat with many monsters. And then storm. Uh, during that. So the way to do that, I think is going to wait for the patrols to get around. And then we're gonna liturgy. Uh, we're gonna pull all of these and run away, and then we're gonna storm. So it's gonna look something like that. Now the thing that's great with liturgy is that all their AoEs are gonna miss me because they are too slow. So then all we gotta do is pull these guys, and then we're gonna use uh well this this storm right. And yes, they will one day get to me, I swear. Alright. What? Why did you pull? Anyway. I, I, I don't think that storm was a very, like... Good example of a friendly, you know, family friendly storm. But it, it's kind of, you should do that, but like do it small size, right? Like, you just pull like some monsters with a liturgy on, and you run away a little bit, and then you use the storm, and you just try to like finish them up one by one. Uh, we also got a unit, by the way, that we could use if we wanted, but... <laughs> 30 goes, it was very menacing, yeah. Yeah, on DPS... Well, first I had no steel, right? So if you if you had a steel on, this would be like, probably similar to what it was like for me. Uh, but on DPS, you can do something similar, just pull a little less. But you can do something very similar on DPS. Like, I, I could pull like 6-7 monsters like that, easily. 
fight. So now we still we have we still keep getting bad debuffs, but luckily we can certainly everything that's left. We're gonna do that. This bot, this guy, I've never fought him. Uh, when he's out of combat, he's gonna do a new E called Anali. So you've seen it, right? It's the same as the other one that blew up earlier. It's a big AoE in the room that's gonna one shot you. And all he does other than that is a gaze that you have avoid. Sorry, not a gaze, a nine again. So I'm trying to see which monster I still didn't show. I think I think I can think of two more that I didn't show. But here's the thing, right? Like these monsters, you're gonna be using your dread for a lot of them. So like a lot of the time, you're not you're not really going to have to interact uh, with them. As you can see, these floors are just terrible overall. It's why you keep your dread. There's just patrols everywhere. I'm just trying to like show you the two guys that I'm missing. Then after that, I'm going to like, you know, play the actual way you're supposed to play, which is just explode what's up we'll see that's the oh uh, that's the e we was talking about there all right so this guy doesn't do much does a cone proto swipe it's very small uh after that he's gonna do pretty much nothing he's gonna do something called steam vent clean sorry this only gives him damage like this is a damage boost for him doesn't really matter he still won't really do damage to you but you can also stun this guy so if you really don't want to deal with the damage buff for some reason well, you can just stun the, the, the guy when you cast it And then I believe there's only one monster left after that that I've not shown. It's this fat, uh, this fat guy. Uh, okay, the cheese is there. So I'm going to dread. Uh, I'm going to. S I can't really liturgy yet. I'm going to dread this and liturgy the last four. So I'm, I'm going to try intentionally keep alive the one I want to show. Is it? The last monster, I think, yeah, that I've not shown is this one. Does two moves. First one is going to be a huge cone. And this guy's proximity battle. This one's going to do a huge cone. And then he's going to follow up with something very scary, but that's not actually scary what he knows from. So he's going to do Brain Jack, which is going to confuse you, so you can't move. You're CC. And he's gonna do an EWI on you, but as long as you're moving when this finishes, you're gonna get out. Like, with plenty of time. And then he's gonna keep doing Crown and that. So. But now we can use the Liturgy, because now everything has been seen. So as you can see, even with all these explanations and like using barely any palms, well, I mean, I use all my palms, but I didn't pick up any gold chests. At least as the ones I picked up, I tried not to use the things they gave me. I like, we're still like doing to, going to make it with the boss with like ten minutes to spare. So.
for last four, we got a storm for it. If that game is really nice, it's gonna give me no regen, so it's easy. If it's not, then we're just going to like side and do another storm. We remove that. <clears throat> now we just gotta find good monsters to pull. I can tell you that uh, this one and the one that does the gaze is a good monster. These are all good. Because they, these will not do anything. Well, they, I mean, they do abilities, but none of them are gonna like, reach me if I'm just trying to. Very easy, we're just gonna storm when we get to this room. Oh my god. <laughs> my, uh, sorry there. I somehow click outside of my screen, my window. Anyway, so we're not out, doesn't really matter though. So you're gonna do brain jack. You just you just gotta make sure the one thing with brain jack, you gotta make sure there's like no monster that's also around, right? Because then if you get CC while something else is on you, then you're in trouble. Like you're probably going to die. And we're out. And this boss should die with about 10 minutes left to spare, so... Alright, so yeah, that's all we have left. We have even an Onion Knight for 4100. And you're correct, it seems like every single silver has either blown up or given me a, 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 a Demi Clone there. But... Alright, so this boss has a lot going on. I explained it all at the beginning of the set, but I'll, I'll explain it as I'm doing it. So we're gonna Onion Knight this. We can't even steal for safety, though it's unlikely to help. So he's going to give me ice or fireball. So I'm ice, I am ice. Then that's the sword, he's gonna do the swords. These don't matter, he's only gonna show you what they do. Then we need to be hit by I uh, sorry, by fire. We need to be hit by fire, so we're not the fire side. We need to be hit by the opposite of where we are. Always. Alright, there is just gonna show us the mechanic, the in and out. So if it's empty, we go out, and if it's solid, we go... Or if it's solid, we go out, and if it's empty, we would have went in. And this red thing, you just, you have plenty of time to adjust to it, so. Alright, so that's the real mechanic. So where he's facing is gonna be swords, and then, you know, the two uh, other opposites. Then he's gonna push you on ice or fire bone. We're ice, so we're, we're going to need to react to this. And we need to become fire. So we can be the opposite of the frost, so we need to be hit by the swords across, which are fire. Then we need to go in or out, empty is in, you go in. At the same time, again, it's gonna happen. After that, you're gonna do the fire or ice mechanic. This is the ice one, this one is a safe spot. I'll show after the fight the, the exact safe spot, but this spot will not get by anything. Uh, right after this, we're going to have to be hit by fire because we're going to do the sword. There it is. We need to be hit by fire because we're ice, so it's right. Here. 
And it's a repeat uh, until the end. So where he's facing is the sword. You can do a little across like that. Reset. They still don't have an element. They will. They're gonna get ice or fire after this. So there it is. So I am fire, and you can already check what the sword are. So I need to be hit by frost, and it's frost. So I don't need. I need to not switch my element. So I'm gonna stand there. Then it's gonna be in or out. It's in. We go in. Then we do the mechanic. If there's uh, like that. Oh, it's the ice thing again. Very easy. Take spots. And we need to be hit by fire because we're ice. So fire this way. Then repeat. He's gonna face in the direction. I think he's always facing toward you. Uh, swords in front. You just go a little bit on the side like that. So they still don't have an element, so you can't check. Now he's going to do the fire and ice thing. I'm ice, and the fire is there if I need to interact with it. Uh, it's flame, and I'm ice. We're already in the correct element, so we can just not get it. It's empty, so we go up in. We do the mechanic. Right, so this is the fire version of the ice thing we saw. This one, there's no easy safe spot, but I figured out that they always spawn in kind of the same pattern. So you can always just kind of run in the circles like that. In the middle. It seems to work every time. Okay, we're fire, so we need to be hit by ice, the opposite. So we go left. He's gonna face me, and then he's gonna do the swords. Could be the last cycle we see, maybe two more. Do a little bit on the side. Uh, we just wait to see what elements we're given. So we are fire, so we need to know where the ice is just in case. Uh, and it's fire. So since I'm fire and it's fire, I need to be the opposite, so we go ice. We're gonna tra transfer to ice and only get hit by one. So it's solid this time, so we don't go in. We stay out and we get ready to react to whatever mechanic happens, like that. And then he's gonna do fire or ice mechanic. Uh, it's fire again. Well, I'm just gonna kind of circle around, same thing as I did last time. Uh, then we're fire, so we need to be hit by ice. By the way, when he does this move, it, it switches the side sometimes. So you can't rely on like always going on the same side. And it should die uh, during uh, this whole mess. So you're going to get to see it one more time. We can move it to the side. We're going to get an element. We're fired. So, and we need to be ice because it's the same as us. So we just go across and we get hit by one. Then it's going to be out or in. This is out. Solid is out. And it's dead. By the way, this, this is the first time you saw these green things, right? It's the same as the red things. You can just react to it. Like you can move uh, out of it every time. Alright, so the safe spots for the... Because you know the ice flowers that fell down and I told you like, oh, this is a safe spot? It's very simple. 
Very simple. It's these eight spots. Each one of these are safe. So all each one of these are a safe spot on the fire on the ice mechanic, which means in any possible combination of them happening, this this will always like not get hit. It's like a, a geometry thing, right? Like, like they'll just not get hit the way this thing this thing's set up. If you wanna if if you wanna know like what are the markers, it's very easy. It's just on the you see the pattern on the floor? That little light, you know what I'm circling right now. There's that pattern eight times, and the safe spot is always like the little tip there on each one. So that's it. Yeah, the coffin. The coffin. I like the coffin. I always say they're arrows, but you're right. It's more like a, a coffin, right? So. All right, so that was a guide. Uh, also happens to be my first warrior clear. You know, great uh, great way to get two birds, one stone. Uh, two stones? Two birds, one stone? I don't remember the saying, but you know what I mean. Uh, and we even get Onion Knight to walk with us to the end. As we've had on every run. So yes, that is that is my 7th clear. So I'm 7 out of uh, 19. Actors or even spawn there and no legit. By the way, once you clear, once you well, once you kill this bus, uh, time does not like stop or wait for you in any way. Once you kill the bus, you have around like from the moment you kill it, you have like maybe a minute thirty or so of running to do. So you should not, you should definitely not stay in the bus arena like I did and you know like look at things unless you have a lot of times, a, a lot of time, yeah. And uh, very simple, once you right click uh, the thing there, you're gonna get your title. Can you dismiss another demi clone? A demi clone with another demi clone? No, you cannot. So that, that can actually be a, a bad thing sometimes. Because if you get a bad demi clone and you kind of like use it, you cannot replace it if you find like, an onion knight after it. Yeah, we brought the onion knight every single time. Uh, well, I might as well finish off the guide uh, right there. So this guide is going to be on YouTube. Uh, in fact, you might have uh, you might be watching it on YouTube right now. This entire thing is going to be uploaded on YouTube. Uh, I, it's so everything is timestamped. Uh, the floors are going to be timestamped. The the bosses and the like pre floor explanations will also be timestamped. Uh, I highly recommend that if if you see something in the video that you think should like be stamped then put it in the comments right so if like if i had i don't know if at two hours 55 minutes i fought like a thunder beast and you're like you think this is something worth worthy of remembering because it was you know well explained or something you put it in the comments and if there's a lot of uh, if there's a lot of uh stamps like that then i'll put it in the you know like the actual video too 